I always call my Basically parents before I go live. Oh, I always call my parents before I go live. It's like, is that fine? I'm like, I guess. I don't even know what no, you're doing. No, Metal. Go to sleep. <laughs> you're like, but mom. Mom. <laughs> you know, it's crazy we were supposed to do the Atomic Heart EFAP today. It's like, that never would have worked. No. I mean, it would have for you, maybe. <laughs> but even then. I mean, yeah, I'm Are you, are I'm you done, done with it? Done completely? Yeah. I, I did all the test sites uh, during my playthrough. Have you, like, have you done it to the point where you don't need to play any more of that game? I, I don't think there's anything else to see. It's, it's only the test sites. It, it, it lets you boot up the game again. Like, it's like a return to uh, facility 3826 or whatever it was. Hmm. And you can close up your things, but there's, there's nothing new to see as far as I can tell. It just spawns you in the train station, and then you can just roam around. Because well. you can you can upgrade your weapons fully if you want to get everything, uh, but it's nothing else in the map you can see. Still, all the highlighted test sites, and I think that's it. I have to, there's nothing else. It's new new game plus nothing. Neato burrito, as they say. Well, they do say that. I've heard them say it. I'm pretty sure Fringy and Rags haven't even fucking hit the stop button on that game. So you are you are ahead. Uh, I guess your other body parts too, but you're ahead of me. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm doing a fortunate tomorrow, so good rack. <laughs> Fraud. Uh, are we live? We are. We live. are. All right. Okay. I'll go into streamer mode in my brain. Crispy oh, I'll critters. Here we go again. Yeah. Engage streamer oh, God, mode. Why? Streamer mode engaged. Inward blocker activated. <laughs> Inward blocker. Do references disabled. Everything <laughs> reference disabled. Okay, we don't. Want... Keep it. Only talk about like gray amorphous blobs wobbling around. That's the nicest thing we can say. Even yeah, that's a bit. To call them that anymore. A bit yeah. aggressive. Yeah. We should, sorry about that. What see. the fuck, Elon? Oh my! Yeah. God. <laughs> Elon tweets all kinds of crazy things. You never know. He does, doesn't He's he? He's a weird man. <laughs> a weird, weird. Man. Trying to maintain Twitter's viability, you know. Hey, hey. <laughs> Do you think he's just gonna wake up one day and be like, "What I the just... fuck did I do with Twitter?" That was such a God mistake. Twitter was a mistake. What have I done? No. Somehow Modoc no. returned. Yeah, check out our no. our no. sweet threads. Look at that. Yeah, check them God out. Damn. They're really really cool. They are gorge. That's French for gorgeous. If you didn't know that. That's... Gorge. Oh. A little bit of a little bit of culture from the old Mubshly. Yeah. Free of charge. Learn, learn Milo every day. pants through these, and mm. they're very, very, very good. I like them a lot. Uh, for I've those, gotten a couple bits of art. For those in chat who were like sitting there being like, I can't wait for that stream where they talk about, you know, Elvis and Tar and uh, Banshees of Inner Sharon. Well, you're out of luck. That's never going to happen on EFAP. Nope. It did happen you yesterday. <gasps> on a different stream. Elseworlds what? EFAP. Yeah. Uh, what's your stream you called? The 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 Fun House or something? What was it? What? The cum bun. The, the cum <laughs> Giving you a chance to invent the name of your stream on the spot. Oh. <laughs> the yes, it's the the triple the trifecta Neapolitan ice cream fun house of movies and other shenanigans. Yeah, he called it the Is good, the bad, and the ugly, and. Uh, you have to guess which of the three of the three there. We'll the see. good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Um, Banshees of Anishran was ugly. Oh. And it oh, was bad, no. and Elvis was good. <laughs> Why was Banshees oh. ugly? <laughs> because it was full of very movie. unattractive people. Oh. Colin <laughs> Farrell's not that unattractive. <laughs> He's the one exception. Or Carrie Caldwell. Like, almost, she's, she's unattractive. She's, all right, now. she's the second. There's two exceptions. They're like two of the main characters. <laughs> Well, <laughs> so not that many it's many full characters. of yeah, but there's a lot of unattractive people, and um, it's kind of graphic, you know, pretty graphic, um, and yeah, it's just generally a, a, a bit dirty. Warm beer, ugh, ugh, ugh. Well, they just that's that. so disgusting to me, especially like that dark stuff, and it's warm, oof, and people drink that voluntarily. Like they want to do it. No, well, it was Disgusting. a torture method, and then it just sort of, just sort of kicked in. You, you know, know actually, this ain't so bad. It. Huh? 
That's how most alcohol started. Was, ah, we're going to torture you. And then he's like, ah, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. Um, but yeah. I have bad taste, so there. Capital Opinions channel. That's where we discuss all of them. I was thinking that while people warm up in chat, we could maybe talk quickly about um, the one the one that we've... Well, everyone here has seen except Metal, but we haven't. I don't see a slot for it coming up in any way, shape, or form. Being the whale. I mainly wanted to let people know that it's kind of interesting that it is such a, 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 a film that had eyes on it specifically for Brandon Fraser. And it, and it makes sense. It wasn't, it wasn't like uh, uh, bullshit. It, it was like, he, it's because he actually tried his ass off in that movie. I don't know uh, how far and wide it's gotten or how many people have seen it, but I give it a big old recommendation. The main hurdle... I definitely would. The main hurdle you have in that movie is going to be that you're dealing with someone in a really big fat suit. And uh, that, that can... <laughs> Wait, you mean he didn't gain all that weight for the role? What? Uh, well, I mean, you know... I Why think... didn't he Christian Bale that shit? <laughs> I don't even think Christian Bale would go that far. <laughs> like, listen, I, I appreciate die for the, this role. Appreciate the oh, passion, no, but... Uh, killed Christian Bale. Yeah, once again. Or people from Hollywood would have to come in and force feed him... I've seen people fatter than in the whale. Yeah, just there's that show, right? My six hundred pound life. You get all kinds of people in there that they're like they're like melting into their beds, sort of thing, because they can't get out yeah. anymore. Where does the bed begin oh. and the human end? Mm -hmm. Um, such is life. It's nasty though. Uh, it's uh, but but it's not <laughs> it's not a fun film. Uh, it's no, a, no, it's not fun. It's it's tragic and emotional. No, I meant in real life. The six hundred pound life. That's real people. <laughs> they, they're, that's you know, <laughs> they're not like made up or special, put in suits on or whatever. <laughs> like, it's all special effects. <laughs> it the horrors of CGI. <laughs> yeah, like at the end of each season, they're like, "We'd like to remind viewers that none of this is real." <laughs> like, <it's... laughs> oh, okay. Uh. uh it is tragic though, yeah. Um, but it's 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 a film with uh, it's like all set in one. I was about to say one room. It's it's more than that, but mostly one room. And uh, close. It's based on a play. Yeah, you could. I, I I got that sense watching it. It's like yeah, this. If if it wasn't based on a play, you'd probably get adapted into a play. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's you got you got you got. I was about to say I don't know how much I want to say of this is uh, recommending it. It's like um. It's a rough film about a man who's lived a life uh, filled with different errors based on core mistakes and uh, something going wrong that didn't have to. And, and so he tries to make up for it in the last potential days of his life. It's, a, it's kind of like near the beginning of the film he gets the news that he's probably going to die very soon. Mm. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, Brendan Fraser, he's, he's, he's fucking brilliant in it. The point he's, where, he is uh, brilliant in it. He's extremely incredible. And what was Sadie strange about this really was that, uh, coincidentally, like, three days before, I had watched The Mummy again, where he does not... Let's say he plays a different character. Uh, so it was really cool to see that Brendan Fraser has this incredible talent in acting and in range and being able to get emotional. Yeah, you could say those two are different characters. I, I, I agree with that. Live different lives. Um, and yeah, if he gets the Oscar, that would be neat. If that Austin, would be neat. Austin Butler gets the Oscar, that would also be fine. That would also be neat, yeah. Um, but not Colin Farrell, right, Cap? I think that'd be neat, but you guys are wrong and bad people, so maybe <laughs> you wouldn't. I mean, he was that. fine. No, nah, he, he was, was really fine. good. You know, he, he did good, but um, that just didn't seem like a very, you know, Oscar-worthy performance. I think he was better in, in Bruges. That's he wasn't as good as Modoc. Ooh, <laughs> legendary Modoc. character performance that one. Modoc was really good. That's still, a powerful performance. Still want to know the actor's reaction when he read that script. Like so, so I'm I'm ahead with little little arms. And it's like it's from the comics. He's like, oh okay. And, you can, and, someone said you can skip talking about Ant Man today. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> I know everyone would prefer. Just call but... the stream that and never do it. Just a, a total. A total fake. I did not make notes about how horrible this film is for them notes to be disappeared into the void of memory holage, even though most of the movie has already reached that culturally. 
the, the yeah. did we get any official word on its uh, box office drop off like a definitive word wow well, you're I, just I, assuming I, that this film would have box office drop off <laughs> yeah <laughs> well we i checked like 70 like percent jeez yeah. which would be the worst um it would MCU. be yeah <clears throat> i think black widow was the worst with like 68 67 I think this is Suffer's record box office drop, is this article. Oof. Mm. Previously, Black Widow had the MCU's biggest box office drop at 67.8%, though it should be noted that the film also released on the same day as uh, on Disney+. Plus. Thor Love and Thunder was a close second <laughs> at 67.7. Quantumania's drop is even greater than Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice's 69% drop. And the 69.7% drop that Ang Lee's wow. Hulk suffered in 2003. Oof. Wow. So it was really good then, is what you're Just, saying. Well, what you're saying. <laughs> it's kind of weird, isn't it? Because it's like, why is it having such great opening weekends if they're so bad then? It's like, that's, that's what they've cultivated now? I guess so, yeah. Really yeah. fucking strange. Like, everyone really wants to see them when they come out, but that immediately doesn't give a shit anymore. <laughs> Like, it's going to be the best ever. It's going to be so amazing and incredible. And then they just don't give a shit. Everyone is like, no, no, it's actually not. Don't go watch it. Like, ah, oh, dang, we were wrong again. It certainly doesn't. Um... <laughs> Someone said we're going over this movie again. We, we, we only got halfway. <laughs> we got to finish. Again. We didn't get through the whole thing. I know it sounded like we might have. <laughs> we're not even close. Um. Well, you know what, on that note, we can just get on with it, because, my God, we've still got plenty of shit to go through. It's a, it's kind of an insane film. Uh, it's, it's, it's in the... If you could tear the worst of the MCU, it's, it's sitting there with M.O.M. and uh, Love and Thunder, I think. It's, um, mm. It feels like Probably. there's a gap between those three and the, and the sort of next stage of badness. They are very special, those three. Yeah, you know, good for them. They are a special kind of bad, yeah. A specialist is a way to put it. Yeah. 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 It didn't always used to be like this. I know it seems it is the new normal, but it, yeah. it legitimately. Now, I know we're going to sound like Grandpa sitting on a porch. Yep. You know, talking about the good old days, but the MCU wasn't always like this. No. It used to be that potentially, like, good films could exist. That good films would come out in the MCU and we'd be like, oh, that was pretty good or that was neat. Poor little metal over there recently rewatched Iron Man. That's, yes, it's not going to help. We watch it. No. <laughs> <laughs> After the first five minutes, I was like, "Fuck me! What happened? Like, what? What? What happened?" <laughs> it's just it's True, night never, and day. We are waiting for the day where they have like just a normal not shit scene, just one where you're like, "Oh man, I like how that person was characterized with something that was relatively yeah. subtle and in line with things we've known to be true previously." This wow. Just a scene. This, this That's all we want. It's just a scene. This character sounds like a real person, and the characters that are talking to each other are not talking at each other. They're reacting what, to what the other guy is saying. And oh, that like, was, man, yeah, it's like actually listening actual to dialogue in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Talk it like is, people. It is nuts in the uh, it, how much in modern dialogue for the MCU we're just they don't they don't listen to each other at all. They're just there to get some stuff out, or it's that they did originally, and the scene got chopped to hell. Yeah, you just don't even know what's just happening. the way they handle the the comedy in that one compared to what we get now. It's just like holy shit! Like this, I don't, I don't, man. It's like I forgot what comedy is and can do. This is Motion we... doesn't sell. Mild comedy at certain intervals sells. Yeah, because if you remember in Iron Man one, they do like basically the reverse. It's not like oh sad scene. Then they got ha huh, that happened. Lamau. It's like the scene when when he tells uh. Uh, Miss Potts, like, yeah, you're the only thing I have, you know. It's like, oh shit, I came out of nowhere almost because they were kind of joking around before that. And then it's like, oh, we just use that to lead into how they're feeling. It's like, that's good shit. Um, well, this stream was done this week. It's like, no, five hours is only Never half. Done. Only half. <laughs> Colin Farrell's not like good said, in anything. Damn. Whoa, uh, wow. Oh, yeah, well, he was yourself. good in real life when I met him. There you go. Yeah. And I think he's pretty good as Penguin. He's good in The Lobster. He's good in In Bruges. He's good in Banshees. He's good as Penguin in The Batman. There you go. Uh, yeah, don't forget, he was, he was a Penguin in that movie. Oh, <laughs> uh, what are you showing me? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's pretty great. Um, 
So yeah, you guys ready to kick back on with the events of this film and to vaguely Nar. gesture at the idea of any of it making any sense at all? Nope, let's cool. do it. All right. So we'll do our best. I'll I'll rewind us to him entering the uh, the probability storm. Oh. I know that everyone in chat knows exactly oh, what I'm fuck. talking about. This is where we stopped. You're no. all like, oh, I know what that is. Yeah. Well, uh, we stopped around there. <laughs> um, but you all would have forgotten. Point. Okay, so it's okay. Uh, the, the the it's funny how much I want to roll back. It's like the reason this is all happening is because in the in the area of the the quantum verse, the subatomica is where Janet and Kang happen to meet. Remember, he crash landed right next to a little house in the quantum world or whatever, because that's just something that happened. And then of course uh, she helps him repair his big evil ship that the people who wanted him captured and dead, left him with for some reason. And then uh, just when it was finished up, she attached four growers to it, those little, those little quantum growy thingies. And uh, on that too... What are the others are other ones called? Shrinkers? Showers? Yeah, shrinkers, I think. Alright. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, th that didn't, instead of making it really big, it made it really big and generates a field around it where if you stand in it, it'll generate clones of you. Uh who are the possibilities of the life you could take, I guess. I've, Mahler, yeah, you but, need to say only, that again. Uh, <laughs> only, <laughs> restate that for the audience, just so it sinks in. You know, I'll, I'll come back to it once we, once we recycle <laughs> around this whole thing. So, like, that, that whole disaster is there, and then, and then Janet in that scene just jumps off the edge of a cliff, and I guess ended up below the subatomica, into where the, the other, the, the, I don't know, the floor of the quantum realm is. Where all the civilizations get built, and people like Veb can feed their their ooze to people to make sure they can speak to each other. I know it you all remember like that. Sounds like a fever dream. Yeah, a little bit. It's like a <laughs> Mahler, what are you talking dream. about? Mahler, wait, wake up. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is is there a gas leak in your house? You need to get outside immediately <laughs> and call emergency services. <laughs> <laughs> you're not okay and so, if you think you are that's part of the problem so obviously <laughs> Kang captures Ant-Man he's like I'm gonna need you to go in there and shrink the thing back so I can then use it and it's like yeah okay that all makes sense and Modok is like better be careful the, ball, and, the way that you say that yeah that makes sense it does and, and <laughs> yeah, that all makes sense. I almost believed you and I've seen the movie people are lost People, we're on this roller coaster without any rails, and it's just zooming everywhere, up Ain't and down. No rails and everywhere. where we're going, no sir. Uh, so Modok's like, you know, better be careful. The more time you spend in there, the more it'll fuck with your brain. And nobody wants to know anything beyond Elaborate. that. Yeah, no. I wouldn't. Obviously, I'd be like, yeah, I know what you mean by that, hundred percent. Yeah, why so, would you be prepared and have a plan when we can be surprised and have a fun reveal? Who wants to be prepared for what a very what fun reveal. And, and so he jumps in, and you know what, it's worth mentioning now, I think, I don't know if it's come up before, but every time they jump through a, a thing where they're going smaller and smaller and flying over and stuff, they always manage to dodge, like, almost everything that looks mm -hmm. incredibly lethal in the, uh, yeah. in the, I don't even know what to call it, it's not the quantum verse realm, it's like a, the tunnel That's that the appears point. whenever they try to start going somewhere. Mm, yeah. They don't even have the kind of suits, you know, like the flying squirrel suits that would actually help you fly like that they yeah, don't have anything of that sort and somehow space. they can just kind of swim well, through the wasp air like is the only nothing. one that would have some level of control over it for some reason nobody else wants to have the fucking flying part of the suit well i guess janet has it but yeah. doesn't even the, use other the suit at any point in the film other than the prologue right no no they don't want wings they don't want those lasers for users no none of the blasty lasers yeah, would want those. they seem very good I, mm. I would want some of those i would too <sighs> um, so yeah, he, he arrives, and then uh, Scott is like, it's kind of weird if you think about it logistically, this is so hard to explain, I almost want to do a diagram, <laughs> but it's like, you have the big... I would like to see what that diagram would even look like. Do even, it. Well, I mean, it's, uh, I can't even, where would I even draw it? I need like a, I need like a notepad white... Notepad or paint? Oh yeah, notepad would be good enough, I don't want to blind people. Oh wait, my notepad is, it's got a dark background, I don't want to bright Wait, what about so. blind people? <laughs> What? Does your no does I your want, I, would, I said now? I wouldn't want to blind people. Oh, I just <laughs> only heard blind people. I was like, what? That's not you the right no screen, screen you silly bastard. Whoa. Oh, Inception. that's us lots of times. It's uh, the multiverse. No, it's coming for us. TVA is on its way. 
Oh, fuck it. Anyway, they make like a giant... Uh, it, 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 the, the thing becoming giant and generating that whole feel around it, he jumps toward it. Um, when when should this effect begin? Should it not be when he's within X amount of vicinity of the thing? And well, the I mean, that would... I mean, it's that's that might be something that happens later to somebody else. Well, yeah, that's, that's obviously what I'm getting at. <laughs> that's where I'm yeah. heading. Because it's like it's paused for dramatic effect. Yeah, even though it would have a shit ton of Ant Man's just start spawning all around it and falling and screaming and stuff. I imagine how disorienting that would be for good old regular Ant Man who wasn't told about any of this. Which is something you really need to tell him because uh, it's going to affect his well, ability to complete to the task it. quite and a bit. You, and you want him to complete it. Yes. I know that, like, you're a funny little troll, Mr. Modoc man, but, like, you do want him to succeed, right? Yeah, you would think. Thing. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, already the, getting, I'm already getting Army of the Dead vibes. What, in terms of just nothing making any sense? Or the fact that oh, you can't well, that, see anything? That, of course, but the element of, oh, do you not want this, th these, uh, this person slash these people to complete the task? Why are you, <laughs> why are you not helping them in doing yeah. that? Yeah, why like, are you actually getting in the way of like, doing that? I know he doesn't like Scott, but like, he does want him to succeed here because this is essential to Kang being able to right. escape the quantum realm. Also, I guess we have to assume they could have, they could, they, they were able to scan this whole area and figure out that this is like a probability storm, whatever the fuck that is, and that things happen down there. I guess they scanned that because they didn't go down there, of course. Maybe Unless they sent someone down there before and then they became cloned and then killed themselves or something. I don't even know. Yeah, but they don't don't have pin particles. I guess they. Well, yeah, but they they can't do the whole thing. They may have sent someone down and they just oh, died. Just heated them down. I, I, I don't know. There. See what happens. <laughs> it's it's all very They're... strange because Modok. The only reason I can come up with for why he spared Modok, we talked about this before, was we didn't really know why, was that he knows stuff about quantum flames and and that's what Kang needs. And it's like, and and what all he managed to do in totality was actually crack, shrinking them all and dragging them into the quantum realm. But he couldn't figure out anything else like shrinking down to be able to to get at and 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 uh, shrink down the the engine. Like oh well, I guess. No, I guess not. Very specific he things he manages to figure out for Kang, you know? Right. Not the... Uh, is specific enough to generate a very particular plot line, not, not anything else. Yeah. <sighs> um, this is what I mean. It's so hard to be specific about how all of this falls apart, because it falls apart several times over and over and over again. The fact that it's, they, they're explicit, for every choice you make, it'll generate, like, a, another person. And then well, it's they, like they say it's they it's say awfully specific. philosophical, Mahler. Yeah, they, they specifically say uh, every choice all at once. That's what they say. It's like so. Like, as long as as soon as you get in there, it's just going to be crowded with Ant Man's and you die. Well, yeah, I, I want to see. Like this was like Doctor Strange. Just, I want to see. It's worth emphasizing just how crowded it would be because it, it, this would include choices of like I'm going to place my foot like half an inch further yeah. to the right than like I was intending. Like maybe the, it the doesn't idea, count like the subconscious. Be, I don't see why it wouldn't. I don't either. I I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't one of them? What if one of them is it? Wouldn't one of them be like? What if you were like a psycho killer and you just wanted to kill everything because well, you went crazy yeah, or something? You, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. If one of them was that. murderous, which I mean, it's all possibilities. One of them could go nuts yeah. and think that the solution is to start killing. The copies yeah, start fighting each other and everything. Really yeah. possible, and yeah, it's going to be every possibility. Who's the original? Yeah, yeah that, it, it and it's so uh, it's, essential question. It's so stupid battle. because they could do all these things, and then they do one thing, and it completely breaks the rules they set up. <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't know if they do that. Well, they do that, that all the time is... in all of these what? movies. Oh, right, every right, right, right. single time. Because yeah. yeah, I Carry want on. them to be honest, no more cowardice, and you have him take one step forward, and it. And it does like explode into loads of legs and arms and feet, and then you just start you start hearing all them squelchy noises as blood and guts just start splattering <laughs> everywhere. Yes, and yeah. uh, you know, and then you cut to Modok going, "Well, that happened." Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> and then Scott's like, Wait, so "I'm okay. I'm okay." It's like why? It wouldn't be quite every every single possibility because it would only be every possibility from the point of the ant-man that we've been following jumping in there right yeah it's localized 
Yeah. It's so lost, I guess still one. If it's every possibility, there's the possibility that one of them goes nuts, as as Mala just said. This, this, this I, possibility, I guess so, yeah. As small as but it, it is, but when they say it's every possibility all at once, it's like, yeah, okay, <laughs> we can have that. So, so it's every yeah. So, but I guess the one thing that definitely broke me out of whatever that was supposed to be, as far as a set of rules, is the fact that there's Baskin Robbins Scott there. Yeah, which yeah, that's yeah, randomly a Baskin Robbins. That's, Scott that's the one there. I meant because he couldn't have become yeah. a Baskin Robbins guy while he was inside the Subatomica or wherever he is. Oh, he's yes, I think I think they're at the Subatomica. It will really make sense. I have a little map and so. Uh... Oh. I don't. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't. You weaselly little liar. Dude. Weaselly little liar. Weaselly um, little the fact liar, that dude. other Scots can generate Scots for me is is like this is fucked. Like the, you guys are all the fact that load that he should be able to make enough that uh, it would explode yeah. the whole room. But... Do you like how uh, they do the thing where all of the alternate Scots spawn with their helmet on, but yep. big old main man Scott has <laughs> his off? Seems yeah. kind of like why would mm. that even be? all how it works well, except for the oh i think i have a reason except for the ones with the most dialogues some of them have their masks off as well some of them mm -hmm. that's that's true you have to see the possibilities faces yes no it's it's like when they're running towards the thing all of the scots that spawn are, are wearing the helmet I think, i'm pretty sure basically all of them do except for your main one <laughs> yeah i'm tired trying to follow this is hard it's like yep <laughs> ain't gonna get Watching easier it is hard as well because, yeah, uh, uh, one of the Scots is then like, let's do it! And he, and he gets, he bigs himself up in order to get close enough to uh, throw, I guess, a minimizer or whatever, uh, a shrinker onto the... I don't even know what his plan is at uh, that I point. Thought that, I, th I figure that's the plan. <laughs> and then he shreds yeah. into spaghetti. You just, yeah, it's, it's quite gruesome, actually. Like, you just see well, yeah, the first one, I think down. it's not even spaghetti. It actually looks like the limbs are separated and there's just blood. Yeah. The second one that's is spaghetti, weird. though. Yeah, well, yeah, so, why? Why did that happen? I don't know, because it doesn't happen again, I so... I thought it would look cool for the trailer, and be, people would be like, wow, that's strange. All these Ant-Mans running around. I don't... Um, not Well, I'm talking specifically about the mechanics of why did oh, an no, Ant-Man go I big don't. and then die. I don't know. It's uh, it more or less than about uh, more pride. Well, he does say, look out for the little guy, so if you become a big guy, you've lost your way, you know? Oh, no. It's you should look out for the big guy, because he could fucking step on you. Yeah. A big guy later on. See, um, uh, and the, uh, the problem it generates immediately is like, wait, so in the vicinity of the engine, if you are a big man, you'll die? It's like, but that's precisely what he was when he was heading toward it, as in, like, he shrinks, and then shrinks, and then shrinks, and then shrinks, yeah. and it's just like, so he should have just been dead. When he was big, like, before he hit the final phase, he was already within the, the engine, so to speak. Point, actually, yeah. But I don't know, just, I just don't get it. It's, uh, and it's just like, well, because it's gonna generate, we're doing a payoff thing, and it's like, uh, oh, sorry. It's just oh, like, um... I guess if the payoff is good, it's good, we'll it's, see, maybe we can forgive it. This arbitrary, weird limitation, and it's gonna be overcome randomly. We won't know yeah. why. But yeah, I he can't love. go big. Yeah. Like, okay. Um... So, so like, like I said, you picture it. There's this room. It's filling with Scots, and there's a engine floating above it that he's got to get a shrinker onto, but he can't reach it really. That th those are the horrifying stakes of the situation. And I that think is horr horrifying is a good way to describe just like you know, this, how we got here, where yeah. we are, what's happening, our understanding of the stakes, the world building, and you know, um. And so uh, they all start, it, it becomes too much, and Scott is like almost drowning in Ant-Man's. And then it like cuts to Cassie, and she's like, Dad, come back, come back to me, don't leave me again, or, or something. And she's yeah. like, as if okay. anyone understands what the fuck is happening right now. <laughs> like, like they uh, say they do, they're lying. Like, Dad, you, you could make it, you could do it. It's like he's he's currently dealing with millions of other hymns. I don't, I don't even know which one is your dad anymore. But sure. Um... Because like a, they that, that was a question. Love her. Are they all receiving Modox messages at the same time? I don't see how but, they could be. Because then, if like, there's a, a is everything they say? Of them, then you, yeah, right. Well, but like, surely it should actually work that way. It's all completely copied. Yeah. And therefore, yeah. like, shouldn't Modok and Cassie ah. all be hearing fucking noise? 
Just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> they should yeah, probably. Yeah. I think they want us to believe it's only the one for some reason. That's Even not. It shouldn't be. Actually, <laughs> it shouldn't no, be. Yeah. Right. It should be yeah. All of them. Except maybe Baskin Robbins, Scott, because that. You I, know, guess, I guess. I guess. <laughs> don't know if he has the like, technology. Like there were <laughs> yeah. radio waves in the quantum realm. I guess. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be here in the first place, though. So. And so, yeah, like, you know, realistic scene. She's like, Dad, and you can just hear, like, ah, blah, 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 blah. They'd have to, like, also, tit it off. This was something I was thinking about as well. Uh, how come he, like, could shrink, like, four or five times to get in there? He's in the quantum room. How can he shrink? Why can he still Relative. shrink? He can, uh, yeah, I don't know Patrick when they unlocked it. Like five times. But he, yeah, he can now in shrink Ant infinitely and grow infinitely, yeah, seemingly. In Ant-Man... In the first film, he could only shrink down, and then if he wanted to go smaller, that meant fucking with his suit to the point that it would mm -hmm. yeah. shrink infinitely. None of that. solved that problem. Yeah, I guess they did off screen. Sweet. But, but how does it work? Does the quantum realm like scale down the pin particles appropriately to like have to function in, when the, he is, in the quantum realm? When he is at that point, as in, okay, so this is super fucked. It seems like <laughs> when you're in when you when you f first start shrinking beyond safety, you end up in the void, which is where he was, and which is where we thought uh, Janet was. And it's like mm -hmm. okay, uh, it, there's something and under the void. Janet, uh, an Ant Man and the Wasp. She is in the same place, like at first. Well, so I was going to say uh, we're we're not going to count Ant Man one and two mostly because I can't make sense of this <laughs> with this film alone, <laughs> let alone involving mm -hmm. those two. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, like, below the void is supposed to be the subatomica, and that's where she lived for a while, alone, until she met Kang. And then below that is the quantum realm where people like Bill Murray are. And it's like, oh, so where's the engine? It's like, that's in the subatomica too. So if we say, in real life, you're like, you know, one in terms of size, maybe I'll say ten in terms of size, and you go down to, like, five at the smallest, and then when you enter the void, you're like a one... And then the subatomica, you're like a tenth of that. And then the quantum realm, you're like a tenth of that, I guess. Uh, and, and it's so hard to understand because it can keep going bigger and smaller. And we're going to have to talk a lot more about this when we reach the uh, the third act because it gets, I don't know what's happening anymore in terms of the sizes. Uh, but yes, it's, it's very confusing. He's shrinking over and over again. But do you remember like he teleported from... The, the quantum realm, the Bill Murray place, to the subatomica through Kang's little portal, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a different place, or did he just go somewhere else in the quantum realm? Well, it has to be a different place, because it was generated where Janet and Kang met, and she said she was alone there. There was no, there's no civilization there. Yeah, so I was but confused. I'm... I thought that she was just in a remote part of the quantum yeah, realm. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. So I, yeah, I took it to mean a... that when she jumped off the edge, she fell like almost infinitely down. And then she hit the quantum realm, I guess, eventually. Yeah, that's she even worse. She hit the turtle shell, finally. Uh, that's the thing. I, so uh, the fact that she specifically mentions the void and the subatomica and then the quantum realm, I assume they threw those in as an attempt to make this somehow make sense. Because the subatomica's bullshit. What does that even mean? You think? <laughs> and then it's like, the void. Why is there the void? What, what, between <laughs> The void is between Earth and then the other Earth that's really small, kind of, or whatever. Why alien isn't planet? the void the bottom? Yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand any of it. And it's like, well, the thing is, we have a problem. You're like, what is it? It's like, well, there's a, there's a film called Ant-Man that said there was just the void. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so we, we, yeah. we, gotta, we gotta address that somehow. Well, it's because he couldn't look far enough. At least that's yeah. what she made up. So, mm. there you go. And, and like, I think it causes the them big problems to have Kang land with her while she's a part of this whole civilization. They would have to write the story very differently, I guess. So they wanted them to be alone together, and so they have to invent a place that's not the Void, not the Quantum Realm, not Earth, where those two can hang out. And so I think that's why they called it the Subatomica. It's just some bullshit. Mm -hmm. no. I thought it was just a, some remote area of the Quantum Realm, because it looks so much Technically like all it, the Void and the Subatomica are that. I think. But the other thing is she has like weird weaponry that she didn't have before, right? So she must have gotten those somewhere. Uh, you mean the guns? Yeah, she has the guns and stuff. Well, but the thing is she said she had nobody to talk to, so I assume that she built them. I okay. thought the movie is just confused. <laughs> the movie is very confused. Oh, well, the movie yeah, can no. fucking join the it gives club. Me, it gives us all these informations, but they all, none of them line up. It's like... Uh, 
I don't know. How come Team Pin is able to fly the ship there? That's a great question, because this is this is where it gets really confusing. You can't yeah, have people exactly. just go there. there. You can't have people go from the Subatomica to Quantum Realm if they're places that require different sizes. They can't just go to these places like they're on a map, but unless they are Wouldn't just that... on a map. Yeah, I, I think that lends some credence to the idea that it's just some remote area of the Quantum Realm, <clears throat> that it's just somewhere on the map. Well, she said that you couldn't see past the void and, and, and past it is like what what do, you, what do you think she's referring to when she says subatomica at that point hey i don't even know if we see the subatomica <laughs> one thing, yeah. <laughs> like your instinct is to consider them as layers like a sandwich where you get smaller yeah, yeah. and smaller yeah or maybe they're all equally small they're just on top of each other i don't know i don't know i don't no one knows <laughs> it's okay no it's one really knows any of really hard to figure out and uh we do what we can here okay I want to write. The writers don't know. If you were to ask them, if you were to sit them down and say, "The void, the subatomica. What's the difference between these two? Where are they in relationship to anything? Can you just go there? What? You just shrink down and go there? Do you have to fly upwards? Are there like floors? Is this like the the Nether in Minecraft? <laughs> what's going on? So back to what Fringy was saying about how in the previous movies there are limitations to how small he could get. It seems that. Even in the quantum realm, he can get smaller. I, I does the quantum realm have its own quantum realm? <laughs> it seems like it does, honestly, because he can he can shrink to the size of an ant relative to everything in the quantum realm. So could he not go even further? Sure, why not? <laughs> Based on how the movie operates, it seems like he could just go infinitely small forever with no restrictions at all. I. <laughs> God forbid I'd have to watch it again to really try and see if there's anything I can make sense of it, but <laughs> it's too difficult. It's like, it seems like they can now shrink indefinitely and be okay. Like, there's no worry. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's even worth looking into. You're not going to be rewarded with an interesting answer. No, and I think that if you said all this to the writer, they'd start laughing at you. They'd be like, it's about would be what matters is the characters, absolutely. not this yeah. Yeah. like silly stuff like that. And, be like, Fuck and then you, I guess my next major question setting. would be, are you, are you really thrilled with the work you did on these characters? <laughs> are you happy in your work? Are you happy? In your work? Oh, improved <laughs> top dog. Anyway, uh, he's, uh, he's getting lost in all the Ant-Mans. It's really sad, and the door's like, no, we can't have that. And then and then he starts, like, pressing the thing in his ear, kind of like he's done in the previous movies when trying to control ants. And he manages to unify all of the Scots to perform in a way that, that pushes just him. I thought you were talking about Braveheart for a second. <laughs> Scots? He unified all the Scots. And I was like, Wait, what? Oh, right, the Scots, because there's, yeah. He does get his freedom. Uh, they, they raise him to the oh top of all of them. They make a giant, like, ant uh, hill thing. And Modok's like, whoa, how are you even what? doing that? And it just made me think, like, did you think he would fail and didn't care? Like, you you, yeah. you remember, you're, you're hoping he can do this. This is something you want him to be able to do. It's so weird. It yeah. comes across as though he's just like, ha ha, you're losing. Odd. But yeah, uh, they, all, they all push him right to the top. And they're like, yeah, do it, it's gonna be great. Oh, and he fires the shrinky thing at it. But it sizzles and falls off. Yeah. I have no idea why. Uh, uh, reasons. Because eat shit, that's why. And why only fire one? And why is it only Scott that's firing? Can't all of them fire? No. Why? Because that's not allowed and the writers didn't think about that. The technology that they use to communicate has to work because that's the payoff. He unites them all with you using the technology. So it's like, so what? That communications work, but shrinky technology doesn't? Why? If they all just, they all fired, it would be the exact same uh, payoff. Wait, you someone said, I don't think they're real. They're definitely real. No, they're definitely real. He's, he's, he's walking on top of them. Yeah, like well, they're real in all the ways that matter. <laughs> Maybe they're like metaphors for confidence or something. Oh, okay. I have confidence <laughs> in me. I'm confident. Oh, I have bullshit. confidence in sunshine. <laughs> this should have oh, been a musical yeah. number. That would have helped. I have confidence in rain. I'm all hallucinating again. Maybe. And I just so make, I just I'd rather watch the sound of music. Oh honestly. yeah. Okay. I'd rather. I'd rather watch the more... old nuns pull the spark plug out of the Nazi car and everything. I just want to... That's a... 
Mola, let's oh. give up and look at memes. <laughs> so someone's <laughs> doing a fucking impromptu <laughs> meme episode, everybody. So, all as they're arriving, Hank, Janet, and uh, Hope. Hope's like, "Oh, I can hear Scott. I'm gonna go get him," and jumps out of the ship and just starts shrinking. Yeah, and it's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" J you talk to Janet. There. You don't even. Yeah, you have no clue what's happening. And then Janet's like, "Oh." You got little clones of you starting to spawn? Yeah, just don't look at them. It's fine. Just don't look at them. <laughs> How the fuck do you even know what is happening? How? How beautiful. How do you even know what's I going on? I guess she's she knows exactly what happens when you go down no, to a, a, a expanded engine no. multiversal thing. She just knows. It's, I think we uh, all do. It's absolutely insane. She says, don't look at them. They're just possibilities. They're not you. Yeah. It's like, I, also, well, yeah. I know they're not, but I'm me. Well, they could have been. <laughs> like, but the idea that <laughs> they're all real, right, Bob? And this is like, don't look at them. So they're real, <laughs> they're real people? They're real, like, they have feelings? And I'll be honest with you, man. The fact dreams? that she says, like, don't look at it, it comes across in the same way. It's like, just don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think, don't think like, about it. Don't think about it. Okay. I don't, yeah. So th that's something to have a conversation about, I guess. But. <sighs> um, yeah, also, her, also her clones start immediately as she starts Yeah, she's descending. not even gotten to where Scott is and her clones yeah. started up. Like, all right. So now you're thinking, because you're listening and you've understood everything I have said. I know that, uh, gentle mm -hmm. listener at home. So you're like, how are they going to solve this probability problem? All these clones everywhere. What, what are they going to do? And Scott is falling from, from his tower of Ant-Mans because the, his, little, his little shrinky got... His little shrinky dinker got, got brazzled. <laughs> Why never... didn't they just... Why didn't they just have somebody be a big one and then they they no because they die if they go big remember well they could be big but stay small right like 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 they could go big but they could like stay lower I thought it was, he went big and then he like reached up into the thing no it's just being big kills you that's what I was trying to talk about earlier was I don't understand mechanically why you can't be yeah. big there but you just can't oh I thought it was being big but you like reached up into the thing or you tried to get close to it I thought that's what triggered the spaghettification well, considering how close he and Hope get to it I uh, much closer than any of the big boys I would say it's just the getting mm -hmm. big there is what kills them but that doesn't make sense you know <laughs> maybe either it makes no <laughs> sense or it doesn't make any sense Ah, oh, that's a good choice. So, yeah, you can choose your flavor of nonsense so that it goes down easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Delicious nonsense. So before he can fall fully, you see, she grabs him, good old, good old wasp, and he's like, "Oh my god, Hope, are you real?" And she's like, "I'm real." And then it goes to a wide shot, and all of their possibilities <laughs> start going <laughs> into them and like yeah, erasing. I, uh, Why I don't know what <laughs> they made them? <laughs> it's the, they. So they make this probability storm. They introduce it like a, like a real thing, like a thing that happens in this universe. But because they are here now, and I don't know, because of the power of love, they made it stop. And they, the probabilities are not a factor anymore. Yep. The, 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 they they go. get all undone down to one Scott and one Wasp. And I legit have no clue what the writer wanted us to think was the reason why. But did, did, didn't it look cool, Mewbshly, how they just all, it's like, the big, the big uh, yeah. Well, someone just said all the divergent paths converge on we must save Cassie or some such. And it's like, so, for one thing, none of the wasps are saying that, or even know no. about that. And then they secondly, say anything, the Scots actually. unifying, in a sense of save Cassie, is the only reason that Scott has a chance to actually fire the uh, the shrinker at the thing. Like, they need to be there. Oh, they God. don't, they can't, like, you know, fall into him or whatever. That would prevent oh. him from being able to do it, yes? Mahler, this is the movie where the wasp is the least consequential, even though there's the most of her. Oh, yeah. There's a significantly mm -hmm. large amount That's... of wasps, even though she's their, of... their impact per wasp ratio is staggeringly <laughs> small. Yeah. Impact oh, per wasp ratio. Carry on, I'm going to get a drink and I, I have to poo, so you keep talking about the movie. <laughs> okay. So, they all shrink up. Uh, yeah, it's great, and then and then Scott and uh, Hope just fire away. Loser, loser, shrinky dinks at the at the engine. What looks to be like fifteen of them, and it's like, oh, you fucking idiots! She she yeah. expanded it by four, so if you shrink it by fifteen, it's now eleven times smaller than yep, it's supposed exactly. to be. It's way too many. Uh, but luckily, it shrinks to the exact size they need it to be, so it's all yeah. good. And also, they shrink back to the right size. Yep, those guys when, when... do too. Is for some reason they just I guess they did that while it was just, it was shrinking again. 
it's uh it, yeah. it, it, it look it all just worked out of course it did oh okay i'm very glad it did too it makes me happy that's pretty cool that i worked out oh that's that's, some, that's good um it makes me wonder well, as well, well that ends well that probability storm it's like could i could we, could we like if we jump down there with let's say the rarest thing ever made on earth and just start duplicating our possibilities could we then get him back out we just start yeah. duplicating materials down there Maybe. Does Thanos know about this? <laughs> <laughs> I just you know about the. Did they get Does James Cameron know about this? Everything. Does Thanos know that at the center of the universe, whatever that means, there's a thing that can grant a wish? Does he know about that? Uh, uh, don't worry about it. Yeah, the, the whole center of the universe. He'd probably yeah, like to know about that. Thing that. Yeah, that would have been probably a good about easier than getting all the stones. <sighs> This this uh this this universe is pretty uh pretty incoherent. Pretty good. What? So, oh, um, good. Yeah. They arrive and they clearly have no plan, nor do they even attempt to like formulate one. Other than Scott's like, I made a deal with Kang. I got to give him this, and then he'll give me the order back. And then Janice's like, Oh well, you know, you can't you can't be doing that though. You just trust me. And it's just like, I don't know why she doesn't say it immediately, but it's like it'll destroy the entire multiverse if you give him that. That's what yeah, you need to do. Yeah, the way she says it because it's like. No, you can't do that. We, we'll get here later. I promise. Yeah, because like, <laughs> like Kang tries oh. to offer him a choice again, and it's like he doesn't even know what the stakes are. Why aren't you like he doesn't know what he's doing? It's it's like such an obvious fuck up in the film that the two times Scott has like a choice to make, he doesn't know what he's dealing with. Except yeah. evil guy is saying, "Get me a thing, and I'll release your daughter." That's it. And it's like, well, I mean, with them as you've said them, I just that's okay. Yeah, fine. That seems almost normal, actually. Yeah. So it's just like, but when you explain, oh, no, the whole multiverse is at stake if you do it, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> now I understand. Um, yeah, she probably should have told them all. Probably. What? No. She uh, was sad. And then he has a really funny line, Kang. He says, I wouldn't trust her. Janet has a way of changing her mind. Like, what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Doesn't everybody change their minds on stuff? What do you mean? It just, it just happens. Like, Especially I, when they discover that you're evil. I just like the idea that the super obviously evil person who threatened to torture his daughter is like, I wouldn't trust her. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, bro, I'll listen to you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've always come across as so trustworthy, Kag. Uh, ugh. So, um, this is the point where you, you kind of wonder, like, with his super suit... Can they take him? And it's like, well, apparently not, right? Because he could use telekinesis and fuck with them however he wanted. Uh, two at the same time as well, right? Or or, or you can do as yeah, many easily. as he wants, as far as I know, yeah. He just needs a finger to do it. It's crazy. It's really well, that's, powerful. That's, what I was trying to highlight was that they'll probably lose a fight with him. But then it gets really bad because they decide to fight him. They both shrink really down, like down really small. Wasp and Ant-Man. They both go to punch him. And he literally flicks them with his finger and they're both yeah. knocked out. They're out. They're done. GG. I assume it's supposed to try and evoke the sense of like flicking a bug and being like, wow, look how powerful he is. But the problem is like he doesn't kill them, he just leaves them. Exactly. He doesn't even check on them at all. He just goes like, yeah, I got my shit now. Janet, come with me. We're, we're, we're going home. <laughs> it's well, like, okay. that's the thing, right? Uh, they, they try and cover their tracks with that in terms of writing, which I said, it does happen in this movie more so than the other two in our examples of everything going to shit as films. But he says, um, you left me here to die. Let's see how they do. Which is, again, more evidence, I think, for the idea that they're in the subatomica uh, rather than really? he said, the God, quantum realm. God, this movie is confused. <laughs> it really is. He's saying, like, it's hard to survive in the mm -hmm. subatomica. So I'm going to uh, ditch them here, okay. even though they have a ship. I guess he sent MODOK to destroy Hank's ship. That's the idea with that. I don't know. Which is happening, yeah, but... too, by the way. He's like... Holy oh, right. shit, Darren, what the hell happened to you? And then Yeah, Modok also is really wants him to see him instead of just destroying the ship immediately without being seen. Well, it's because he's a stupid ego driven little monster. That's like the whole uh -huh. character, I guess. And he's like, I am the ultimate weapon. That's the funny part. He should he should be able to do that and still win easily with makes, all the weaponry. It, yeah, but, it, you know. Honestly, it feels like he should have been able to just can wipe out Hank and the ship. Yeah, easily. He has like rocket pods and lasers, but he yeah. always used those off. shitty fucking yeah. uh saw oh, yeah. blades. It's like he what shoots, are you yeah. doing? What's up with that? You are especially his acronym is what? It, it's 
mechanized machine organism, mechanized design. organism design. Mm -hmm. You think you'd yeah. be really good at it. If you're going to specialize, you know, I feel like you should be good at the thing you specialize in. Now, uh, this is really creepy, cool thing happens cinematically where Janet goes to run after Hank, but she stopped in her tracks, and you discover, like, oh, Kang's using his telekinesis, oh, so scary, and then, like, forces her to come back with him to his evil lair. And I was just thinking to myself, like, okay, so you're Janet. You're standing there. You got Scott has got the engine. Hope is there. Uh, Kang grabs the engine off uh, Scott. Then they both get knocked out. And you see in the background Hank has crashed in the ship. You know that if Kang escapes with that engine, it's the end of the multiverse. So what do you do? And she starts running off to see if Hank's okay. Yeah. And like, eh. that ship crashed, like, pretty far away. Yeah, actually. like, it would take, like, an hour to run to him, at least. Yeah. <laughs> and I just remember thinking to myself, like, isn't there, like, I know, I hate to say it, but, like, Hank's dead if, either way, if <laughs> if, if you let him get away with right. that engine. But she, like, completely forgets about it, I guess. And you, you could argue, it's like, yeah, she really cares about Hank. And you're like, okay. Pretty smart seems, girl. Seems a little bit weird. <laughs> right, smart girl. Not enough to not cheat on him, but. <gasps> Oof. Oh, low hey, uh, blow. God damn. Jesus Christ. Calm down. True, so though. <laughs> horrifying. By the way, someone someone uh uh DM'd me that the way with the whole cheating stuff, it's kind of fucked up. Okay. Uh time wise, because apparently they've they've rewatched the movie. Uh but apparently Endgame fucks up the Ant Man series because of course it correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't check that. I just found it interesting if that's true. So according to End Endgame, five years is only five hours in the quantum realm. Uh, it so, depends on where you are in the quantum realm. Out. Yeah, it's they've changed their mind on a lot of these yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, okay. They've so. kind of opened the door to it being anything. They yeah. just don't even like know. They say in the movie it could I th be. I think Hank says the ads fell to a time dilation. That's all he says. Yeah. It's just they, like, oh, okay. they got their time. They got their time extended. Oh basically. right. So they, if you yeah. bring that up, she was to getting someone, dilated in a. Well, well, I think that you just <laughs> say it was incredibly lucky for all of these characters that they landed in a place where the time was right. basically running concurrently one to with one, that yeah. of the universe, yeah, like with Earth, because if not, could you imagine if they came back and it was like a million years later, that'd be, that'd be lame for them, wouldn't it? A little bit. Yeah, because apparently with, thought... with those rules, without those time dilations, she would have only be gone for like 30 hours or something. <laughs> That was already inconsistent with Ant-Man too, because Janet aged normally. Yeah, I, the thing is, yeah. Ant-Man, mm. uh, it's not the one you rely on for very consistent rules. It never has been. It, well, just they stuff rely happens. On the whole thing of quantum. We don't understand it so good. Therefore, we can do whatever the fuck we yeah, want. Yeah, we don't space. understand it. That's why it makes sense that all the most convenient things to us happen. Yeah, it's like, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you put the word quantum in front of it, most people would just be like, oh, I don't know what that is. So, so I guess in that know. case, that just emphasizes that nobody has a clue what actually happens when we're down I mean, there. I, they, they like to they say that they do. Convenient. Well, yeah, if you just some... make up time dilations and bullshit, it's like, yeah, Subatomica. fine. I can make shit up too. It's pretty easy. The void. The void. Subnautica. I went into a quantum realm that gave me unlimited power. That's why I won again, Kang. There we go. Nice. I am me, Disney. I can That's do it. That's fortunate. I want some millions wow. of those dollars. Ugh. Um, so yeah, think about this, right? Kang, he's got exactly what he wants now, and the only people that have even begun to annoy him and have the kind of technology that might be able to beat him are all there. And mm -hmm. and and uh He's, he's actually, like, if he was a man of his word, I guess you could judge that from this being that he's not giving the daughter back. He even has a line where he says, uh, she'll be fine without you, which is really strange. It's like, wait, are you saying you're going to keep her alive, but you're not going to let her come back to Scott? Why? You know what I mean? Um, like, if, no, yeah. I, don't know. if I think it would have been actually way more interesting if Kang had said, like, like opened a portal, dropped in Cassie and said, uh, you know, this was the deal. Now, we're done. You know, I'm uh, done. Stay out of done. my way. Yeah, We're stay done. out of yeah. my way. Yeah, that I actually would have been bought that way more because instead he's That'd like, I'm going to keep Cassie and not kill her. I'm going to knock out Hope and Scott. I'm going to make it so that Hank is probably dead and I'm going to kidnap Janet, but not kill her. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, 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 what does he want? <laughs> what, what, what is all this? I don't really. 
I don't know. Uh, uh, I've showed them how powerful I am. There's no way they're coming for me. Nobody would be that stupid. <laughs> yeah, like capture all of them, kill all of them, or leave them all in the... Like, why have you clunkily done all these different things to different people? It's so annoying, because if he had just killed uh, Hope and Scott right there, he wins. Yeah. But uh, no, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that. Uh, that would, it's such a... He doesn't want to win that badly. His character wouldn't want to win that badly. <laughs> it's yeah. funny how well Doctor Evil and Austin Powers and shit that ages with, uh, with Scott Evil being like, I have a gun in my room, we can kill them right now. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah. you don't understand, Scott? <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> And he's like, you know, I'm going to watch them, they might escape. And he's like, no, I'm going to assume it all went to plan. <laughs> <laughs> they still do it to this day. And it's not because it's a, it's a trope that everyone does. Because whatever. It's just like, no, it's just shitty writing. It's a shitty solution. They just can't to think a of a reason. They, yeah. they put these characters in these situations, and they're like, I don't know, did this evil monologue, they just trap, I don't know, it's fucking... Shut the fuck up, it's fine. <laughs> do, do you think they, uh, instead of... I don't know. So maybe... They could have decided at this point, like, oh, shit, he's way too powerful right now. We need a game plan. We need to regroup. We, we lost here. Maybe just let them run away and regroup instead of, you know, even getting them into the situation I, they're in right now. I might have had it so that they all fight him together. He doesn't kill them, but he says, like, you fucked up the deal now, Scott, but I'm going to let you live because of Janet or mm. something. He, like, call, he says, like, Janet, I still... Like, he calls the fact that it's like, you're the reason I'm able to... And you know what? Fucking have Kang contextualize it as he's saving the world. Stop making it yeah. seem like he's, like, I, Ooh, I like being evil, evil Lel. Yeah. I don't want to do this. Like, actually make it to where he doesn't want to do this. Yeah, and say Fuck, that they I'm going to spare with them Thanos. because he fucking cares about Janet. He cared about his story. Instead of whatever the hell they went with. Because, yeah, um... It's another editing thing. Uh, he he walks Janet into the portal with him, and then the next we see them, she is being walked from prison to him and his throne. Like, yeah. What? Again, one of these weird things where they do that. You so, know that there was a scene what? between those, or maybe fucking five, and they were all cut. <laughs> Didn't test well with audiences, those scenes. <laughs> So it works. They show them scene by scene, and they have to like press thumb up or thumb down. That'll decide whether or not they're cut from the fucking. Yeah, movie. it's like a coliseum, but for making movies. <laughs> um. So yeah, then they have a conversation, and this is another one of those ones that's clearly been chopped to hell. So he's like, "You never told me what you saw." You know, when she touched his neuro-linked ship, and she says, "I saw a monster who thinks he's a god," and his response to that. Is when you can see time the way I do, you don't get to close your eyes. Okay. I don't think I that answered your question at all. No, yeah. not at all. Like I get it. Like you can't ignore it, is what you mean. But that's yeah, it's not really, not really helping. Like Just, this is another instance where Kank was like, okay, listen, this is what actually is happening. Like shit is fucked, let me and I need to myself. do this to, to, to reach a balance. Never of does something. That. Especially if he has some kind of rapport with her, yeah. uh, if they've been together for a long time working on this thing together. Yeah. Yo, what if they had ended up having like semi romantic relationship? Like but that would be never, interesting. He never does. And you know what I think? What they're doing? They're gonna keep this a uh, quote unquote secret until Dynasty of Kang Avengers, and then they're like, "What? He was doing this thing, so everything doesn't fuck up." And then we're gonna make it this big deal, and it's it's, it's super obvious, but they think it's really smart. I think it might just be something like that, yeah. Um, because it, it continues. She says, in, so he, he says, when you can see the, the word time the way I do, you don't get to close your eyes. And then she says, you're the only one who sees. And again, right. it's just like, what? I don't know. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what any of it does. And then he says, I'm the only one that can see it's broken. You're like, oh, okay. Okay, so time is time's broken. Time's, yeah, time's broken, and I guess. she says, or, and like, who broke the it? the world is broken? <laughs> I don't broken? know. I don't know. MCU Jesus. I don't, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I don't know if it's just intrinsic to the way that this fucked up cosmos is at this point. It's such a... I hate I the know. conversation so much because I'm just sitting like, what the hell do any of you mean? <laughs> Who's responding to what? And then he says, I did. Every version of me. My variants across the multiverse. I saw how it ends. Chaos spreading across realities, universes colliding, endless incursions. I saw the multiverse, and it was dying. 
And again, I'm just seeing like, what? <laughs> how do universes collide? I don't know. The, the impression we got from Loki was just that a bunch of Kangs sort of took control and then all wanted to have ultimate control. But apparently, okay. like, multiversal yeah. wars happen, I guess. As they do. I, it's, I don't know if it's at this point in the movie, but there's some point where he shows this little diagram where somehow time is like a big <laughs> circle that's branching off, and oh, then there's like another one hologram, yeah. on top of it, and then they're crashing into each other. Like, see, look, they're too close <laughs> look. together. They're going to bump into each other. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is that? Look at my diorama. I have two cycles. <laughs> then I push them together. There's not and enough the room. The circle's touch equals bad. Yes. Yeah. Very straightforward. I wish Janet, Janet would have been would have gone like, "Oh, wh wh where's the quantum realm here? Is that in somewhere in between there, or is that?" He's like, "It's right there." Then she goes, "Subnautica." And he goes, uh, uh, "No, so that's the game." It's <laughs> <not really. laughs> the game, Janet. Cool. <laughs> it's better in other universes. I'll so yeah, I, I legit want just one. I want a character in the MCU that just starts asking all these questions, and I'm just like, "What? What do you mean? It's just right there." It's like, "No, no, well, it doesn't make sense because of that." He's like, "Uh." Tell you what, you can make them very likable very quick if you have them doing that. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Y'all complain about anything? Yeah. Yeah, because um, that's like, fuck. That's why. No, we oh, we complain about things that are stupid and shit. Anything that's stupid, we'll complain about it for sure. Yeah. We won't complain about anything, just anything stupid. Um. So then, then she says, "You mean you started a war and you want to wipe away any universe that's a threat to you? That's what monsters do." Now, there's so many ways you could respond to that, right? You Monsters could be like, famously do this. Yes. Yeah, you, you could be like, okay, well, you know, uh, yeah, I, I guess I valued my universe over another one that was attacking mine. Yeah, sure. And so I wiped them, I wiped them out before they could wipe us out or something like that. But he says, no, that's what conquerors do. They burn the broken world and make a new one. It's like... Oh, that is not what. Okay, yeah. listen. Five that's just like, oh, okay, so you evil. We're into Mountain of Skulls territory here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't believe the Mountain of Skulls. Oh, pit of work. Skulls, whatever. <laughs> I, I drowned him in Skulls, skulls and cool it didn't I work. I just don't understand. Skull I drowning. I reached up from the open grave to try and pull him in, and somehow he, he got scared by that. <laughs> When I told her I was going to burn away the current world in favor of a new one, she seemed to not, like, understand how good that is. I just... got women, am I right? They just don't get it. <laughs> I guess she's, she, she's anti-burning. I, yeah, I apparently. I misjudged her. I thought she would have been pro-burning. I thought they wanted a guy who's passionate. Um, and so then she uh, says, yeah. you don't care about saving anything or anyone. You only want revenge because they beat you, because you lost. And again, this is a moment for you to be like, well... Me losing means my whole universe dies. So yeah, I don't want to lose. Are you kidding me? You know, you could have her actually like address that, but instead he says, I have lost. You have no <laughs> idea what I've lost. And at this point, I feel like we just need the moderator to step in and be like, guys, guys, we're going way off topic here. <laughs> <laughs> guys, you, you're circling the conversation. Not much is being achieved. There's a couple fallacies in here I'm spotting. And <laughs> I swear that, that was a straw man bit earlier there from Janet. I'm just saying. Yeah. Changing his argument in the middle. You know, it's just a docking points for that. Yeah, just keep it, keep it Please. friendly, guys, okay? Just, Can uh, have a discussion like some adults here, oh. you know? Put you in timeout for 30 minutes otherwise, okay? So. Time. If you see timeout as I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. You're going in. <laughs> so, uh, he says, I will burn them out of time for what they've done to me. And then she says, you'll be wiping out entire timelines, murdering trillions of people. Very strange that she would go with trillions, but it's just like, just infinite at that point, that, right? Infinite universes. Yeah, it would be, I mean, it I, would be, I guess uh, if you're just like a lot, and it's fine. You don't want to go too high. It's like in Austin Powers 3, where he says, Vermillion, Fafillion, Gajillion, Bajillion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the problem is if people listen to that and go, wow, that's that's a lot. And then it's like, guys, the universe is you, you, it's like, big. <laughs> it's really big. Um, there so are anyway, trillion stars in the universe. Her yed, yeah, yeds. It was saying yed. <laughs> and, uh, in any case, uh, she, she, she's like, she, he says all that. Sorry, well, she says all the whole murdering trillions of people thing. And again, he could try and move the conversation in any direction that the sort of focuses on the whole like it needs to be done to prevent a greater bad, or that these people uh, are going to destroy her will just as well as his. It's the same will, or something, you know, something. But instead, he says, "I wish that mattered, Janet." <laughs> 
I was like, really? That's that's oh for fuck's sake. There's no tact. <laughs> it's so trillions of lives ending. I wish that matted Janet. <laughs> okay. Oh, what was the point of this conversation? I don't know. She basically I, the whole I, I thing is know. her being like, you're evil, that he's like, Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right then. I wish that mattered, Janet. <laughs> 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 you always wanted to be. I wish that mattered, Janet. <laughs> yeah, Janet. <laughs> She's like, why does no one call me call me the Wasp? It's my cool name. It's like, oh, it's very no, sorry, Karen name. It is, yeah. <sighs> so that's the end of that scene. Uh, Hooray! We gained a lot from finally it. some good news. <laughs> well, it's just unfortunately that means a different scene's going to start up. Ah, uh, god damn it! Yeah. So you see Cassie, who is currently under under. You know, she she's captured by those robo soldiers who I guess would have taken her from where she was when she was watching Scott in the probability storm. Now she's being dragged back to prison. And of course she has all of her technology. Like why wouldn't she? Well, naturally. It makes sense mm -hmm. that they'd let her keep all of it. Yeah, need it for the movie, yeah. Now um it's really bad this scene. I, I, I just wanted you guys to strap in for oh. this one. You see Strapping about in. four soldiers, I want to say eh, five meters behind where she and these two are, who are just standing there. And they are still there when she throws a shrinker and a grower on, on both of these, well, one each for the dudes. One of them gets so big, he crashes through the ceiling, and the other one gets so small, she can kick him and he's knocked out, I guess. One of them becomes ultra-powerful and the other one is dealt with. And so, <laughs> no rags. It's fine because the one that got big, he just he doesn't move at all. He literally. Yeah. Oh, he, not only he's does he not move, ceiling. he becomes imperceptible. Yes, he's he's uh, he does actually disappear. Um, not only seemingly in the edit, like you'd think he would have shown up where where he was, but several more guards walk onto the onto the area, and she goes small, and so the film's like, ha, ah, they can't see her because she's small. Like, yeah, but there's a big ass guy. Right there. <laughs> There's a massive pair of legs sticking and, uh, through yeah. the ceiling in the middle of the hallway, and they just don't notice. Yep. I guess, you no, know, no I guess he's standing so incredibly still. So, um, that's, yeah, just really solid scene. Real great. Excellent. Good job, guys. I loved it. Um, and then, and then we find out the big twist, and we can finally talk properly about it. Hank is okay, as is Scott, as is Hope, and their ship is repaired. How, you mm. ask? Well, because mm. the ants from the opening in their little high-tech farm, where they were doing everything themselves, as Hank said, just evolving and designing technology all on their own, they fell into a time dilation field that pushed them tens of thousands <laughs> of years forward to be that more... They're, they're a, what did he say? Type 2 technocratic society or something? Yes, yes. Which, which is basically... They, they have mastered the, uh, the ability to harvest energy from their own star. <laughs> yeah, type 2 is better than us. <laughs> it's, it's really, really advanced. You know, Thunder yeah. just posted three question marks. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what part of this doesn't make sense? <laughs> And he's he's just like, oh wow, my ads have just during all of this have become the biggest like Deus Ex Antenna that you could ever imagine. Antenna. Gonna hap it's gonna save the whole storyline. It's gonna be great. Yeah. No idea literally. why the hell any of that happened, but it did. It's not I'm an exaggeration, much... guys. It's literally the ants come and save the day out of nowhere because they and no one else who went down to the quantum realm fell through a time dilation field. Nope. Of of what tens of thousands of years. That's what they said. Yeah, because they I... need a lot of time to advance to yeah, that level. A lot. I mean, I know they're pretty smart ants, but it's still going to take them a long time. How how, uh, how much are we betting that they forget about these and they will never come up again, even though they're extremely powerful allies? They might come up once or twice for a joke a later. Joke, yeah. Uh, yeah okay. But that'll be it. They won't actually impact the story. The fact that you have this hyper advanced mega civilization of like selfless ants, um, is not going to be a thing. Man, Which is a even... shame because I think that I don't know. I I like the ants. There's some about them. I was like, oh, look at them go! All those little ants working yeah. hard, and they got their little their the little god person who made them this way, and they never forgot about them. And they probably got like statues of him back home <laughs> in Antropolis, and you know they're just they're doing their best, and they're really well. 
So, I don't know. Silenced. Mm. Which I guess is also lucky that they didn't just move on from him. Oh, yeah, someone just, just highlighted these... the big problem that... I don't know if you, you were sort of highlighting that as part of what you were saying, Metal, but... Mm -hmm. Can I just take the ants back to Earth and solve everything, ever? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, nah. <laughs> they stay in the quantum realm, it's fine. Oh, ants, what kind of technology you got? Just feel like you got some good technology to use. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe. To be honest with you, with how they described, they probably should have had the kind of technology to just, the flick of a switch, win the day, you know, set and yeah, right. whatever, but... In any case, he says, we're going to be doing this, and it's all great, and he's describing how it all worked, and they fixed the thing, and they're about to get ready to take on the take on the bad guy, and he says, I mean, I know socialism is a charged word, but we could all learn a lot from these. And and he's cut off with hope, saying, Dad. Um, yeah, don't be cringe. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember, like, I th is the joke supposed to be like, uh-oh, Hank's off on one of his socialism rants again? <laughs> Which is just like, like something what? he does? No, I was just like, <laughs> this is big cringe. Yeah, huge cringe. I don't just like so. First of all, it wasn't funny, but then you're like, wait, were you trying to make a point? And then it's like the technocratic class two ant species civilization is evidence we of the value of socialism. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? I thought that seems like a complete backfire if any point was trying to be made. But if it's just supposed to be funny, um, I don't think anybody laughed with it. You know? No. No. Bit of a weird one. Uh, <laughs> there's so many jokes that have been made about it. That, that Hanky are... Sanders. <laughs> Hanky. <laughs> but also, like, ants have queens. Yeah. So yeah. they're monarchies. And, like, no individuality. Well, and, and let's just say, judging from the other ant, ant movies... I like how it's just like, let's get real movie. Ants are not socialists, all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, actually, be... they're actually constitutional monarchies. I don't understand why <laughs> Hank would say it. He's like the I one think it's that... hereditary monarchy. He loves the fact that... No, I, I'm making a meme. Nobody gets access to his property. Like, he gets... It, his, you know? It's like, what he creates is his. I just want to see Ant Parliament. I want to see what Ant Parliament looks like. You know, you got the room, you got the House of Representatives, and then you got all of the all of the ants in there, like, here, here. Or I guess if they're ants, maybe it's like, whatever sounds ants make, whatever they can communicate with, like, smells or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah like except you don't vote because, because you do what the queen says. <laughs> to be <laughs> yeah, slightly exactly. fair to the movie, uh, I think obviously <laughs> these technologically advanced ants have like de developed into a socialist society. I guess have I they? Think they're I saying. Think, have well, I think they? the implication is that he's not saying that ants were already socialists, or else he would have been saying we could learn a lot from ants. I I guess I'm curious about. I just want to know more about these ants. I just want to know what their world looks like, what yeah. their society, how it's organized. Do they have, like, a really good social health care, like, public health care system? <laughs> Do they have, like, um... Well, it's funny, because that actually then opens up... About these ads. That opens up a whole light of questions that I'm very curious about. What is their investment in all of this? What did they have to say about it? About it's not even whether or not... Just I, I, I'm happy to believe they do care, but I want to know, you know... That this to what is... end? How many, uh, how many people are they willing to lose to fight a war that's not theirs, you know? Like, yeah. um, do they know what Kang's intentions are? Is that why they're invested? And if this, if so, how? And Or is it just Hank needs our help somehow, and we have well, to and, help and whatever Hank wants to do, we'll do? Which seems to be the case. Does, like does that make sense, God. though, when they're... It, but why, when there's been tens of thousands of years? Yeah, they, they never seem forgot. to have no will of their own at the end, except that they're, they're just here to help and throw as many bodies on the war machine as necessary to help whatever Hank wants to do. Yeah, war machine. Oh yeah, I don't know. It's a bit, a bit much, it's a bit weird. But okay. What a world. On we go! Um... Sorry, really quick, before we move on, I'm still hung up on the fact that how lucky they are that only <laughs> the ants went through the time dilation yours, field, yours or any time dilation field. You can only say it once, like, as a thing that happens, and then you just have to keep repeating it, because there's nothing else, like, it's just so shocking that someone would write yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you haven't highlighted any new problems. You're like, no, I know. It's so amazing that, that they would write only that. Hope, what if only Hope went through a time dilation field yeah. of 70 years? Yeah, just fucking died alone as an old yeah. lady. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. God, okay. Damn. Uh, nope. Time works... Perfectly well for everyone but the ants in in the place outside of space and time. Sure. So. So. Uh. I 
think they try to construct a plan, and uh, uh, Scott is like, I don't care who this Kang guy is. I, I don't care what he can do. I'm getting Cassie. And then they're like, well, how do we even the odds? And, and Hank's like, well, as a great writer once said, there's always room to grow. And Scott's like, you read my book? There's every goddamn word. Now, come on, let's go to work. I feel like that's a payoff from a completely different movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'd be inclined to agree with you, yeah, because that's, that's quite a huge deal. Uh, yeah. If you remember... I feel quite like the delivery of him as well. Uh, in the beginning, when he does the stupid thing with a pizza and says, I saved $8, we talked about it. We don't need to talk about it again. Uh, <laughs> uh, Scott says something, he looks at him and he says, like, you're so inspiring or, like, you're so incredible. He says something, like, really complimentary to him. And then later on, uh, he says back to Scott in the room about Cassie, I can't help if people are inspired by me. It's like a sort of play on it. And I think that that's supposed to be playing in here. That it's like there's an equal level of respect to some degree. That that he's 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 read his book and he even found him inspirational. He just described him as a great writer. Mm -hmm. Fucking Hank, who's like an asshole to him most of the time or a lot of the time. And it's just like, man, that's there's, there's a lot there, and you're just not gonna no. do anything else with that. Not gonna spend like don't even let it breathe. Okay. Bye. Well, apparently, that book it actually exists in real life now. You can buy the. Didn't I mention that Scott last Lang week? Bug. You did. You did, yeah. Oh, okay. Mel doesn't like you. I'm sorry. Yeah, Metal. That's right. So, I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not a liar. So. Hey, <laughs> oh. <I'm there. laughs> Hot words, but all right. German words. Uh, so Cassie manages to free the tryhard lady, and she does it because she slams a robot's face into the lock, because that that obviously would do it. That just, that works that way. And it gets even funnier because she does that to break her out, and then Tryhard breaks everyone else out by actually, like, typing in the codes. And I was Remind just like, me who Tryhard Lady is? Just leader of the resistance. It's like a warrior the rebellion leader with lady. The, uh, oh, head markings right. on her. The yeah. Tryhard, you know? Yeah, I'm that sure is, she that's has a good name, name for her. But I don't right. remember it. Ooh, I wonder what her name is. I'll need to Google that in a second. She's apparently from the comics, but... Lisa. <laughs> Lisa? No, that's Simpsons. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> is a All names hard. can only be used once. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, they're like the 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 robo gods who all have guns. Like fucking sprint toward Cassie and don't fire until like she shrank right next to them, and then they just fuck standard terrible choreography as you always get with these. Movies. We we get? we have another another thing <gasps> where we do the whole oh those are goons they're not threatening at all they yeah. just die. That, Dude, we, we don't even know if they're they never, human or if they have any kind of soul or yeah. any, they just seem like robots. They just sort of like, yeah, the way they die, they just like poof away. Yeah, know. they melt away. So You're right. Some of them fall over, but some of them like actually evaporate. And you're like, what? Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's like this black and blue sort of poof. Like it's, I don't even know. So lazy. I, don't, it, I mean, it's certainly far more um, easy to deal with than having their bodies just pile up everywhere. Well, you know that every single time they make any of these films, they want it to be that way every time. So they're just like, just do your little fight thing, throw a stick around, we'll throw, we'll throw it all in later, all of them. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, dude, did, did anyone else catch this part? Really, really cringe. I think, um, uh, I saw it because I've seen Gary's video on Ant-Man, I think he caught it, um. So fucking strange. She 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 sees her get out of the prison cell, the tryhard lady, and Cassie's like, "Wow!" Like when when she looks at her, she just does that. And you're like, "Okay." And then it cuts to tryhard lady. She kicks one of the robots. That's all she does. She just kicks him, and he falls over. Yeah. And then it cuts back to Cassie, and she goes, "Damn, you are cool." Yeah, I call that. Uh, so it's, cringe. It's like, so oh, dumb. what are you doing? She didn't do anything amazing. Power. You are way more Nothing amazing rider. than her. What do you mean? <laughs> like, the writer is just, it's like, yeah, they're pretty cool, aren't they? It's the writer declaring their own characters cool. Yeah. Uh, Which, uh, it's pretty pretty lame, like, basically all the time. <laughs> Don't do <stop> that. Stop <laughs> being cringe. <laughs> so, uh, then, then we will we enter the third act, and Kang is giving his speech to all of his evilmans. Time to to ascend to the 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 overworld. He's like the underminer in Incredibles. He's tired <laughs> of all this shit. bullshit. And so he <laughs> says, "Today we ascend from this fortress. I will take my revenge on those who banished me. Today we conquer eternity." And I was thinking to it's myself, like, like, wasn't that what the center of the universe was called, eternity? 
Yeah. In Thor. Oh, really? Maybe that's where he's <laughs> yeah, going. He wants to go get a wish. Universe. Yeah. And then but he maybe... goes there and he's like, wait, the wish is done. What was it? And it's like, some guy, he wished that his daughter was okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, kind of want that. That's another thing I kind of want to happen where some evil man wants to use that thing and then there's someone else already did it and it's gone. It's like, what is it used for? It's like, yeah, this dumb shit. Well, it's like, oh. His whole movie is getting there and then right at the end he realizes, like, maybe the wish wasn't that important. Maybe it was truly the friends he made <laughs> along the way. <laughs> that, that would probably make for a way better movie, but, you know. Mm. Just hypothetically. <sighs> hypothetically. Where are we here? So many things that happen all at once. He's, that speech it's, gets interrupted. Uh, it does get interrupted. Sorry, that's what I was thinking about. Was um, yeah, he's talking to all of his foot soldiers about how they're going to be like taking over and stuff. But how do you envision that would even work? I was starting to think about like all those flashes of him like shooting and having like fights and stuff. And it's like, why is any of that happening? I thought the nature of him erasing timelines was like dropping those grenades or. You know, you know what I mean? Like, why, why, why would he need an army of robots? What do they do? Where do they go? The Conqueror needs an army. Are they That's... robots or are they people? I don't okay, know. Whatever. <laughs> like <laughs> the soldiers. Uh -huh. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I, I don't understand because I'm trying to think. You know, like Kang at his prime, he had full control of the timelines in the form of the TVA? Question mark. I think. Well, because I guess we're going to find out in Loki, right? Like, oh, maybe God. there's another Kang. Guess so. I guess there will be, right? We know that there's a lot of them. I just mean, like, what? What? where do the robots factor in? What What fights do they uh, go and have? I don't know. Does he pour them all why into the they, TVA the building or something? Yeah, where'd they come from? Why do they listen to them? Are they on board? Who knows who they are? They're people to kill. <sighs> okay, yeah, so his speech gets interrupted, and Cassie gives an incredibly uh, good speech that it was very encouraging and super suitable, and nobody at all in the cinema or in the audience were wondering why the fuck is she speaking. I mean, happen. she was wondering why she's even speaking. Yeah. Because she goes to the rebellion and says, like, wait, wait, I thought you got to do the speech. It's like, no, you do it. It's like, no, that's a horrible idea. She says, <laughs> he's not invincible. I know it might feel like it's too late. Like, all we do is lose, but the family I've lost taught me to keep fighting, and if they were here, they would too. We need to look out for the little guy. My dad taught me that. What? And everyone said, who are you? Yeah, what? What, what is, is happening? Yeah. Who's that weird big lady? And the implication is, like, us? this is a world, you know, ravaged by this fascist government formed by Kang, and all these cool, innocent little alien people are, like, living in... Nasty times, and she's just she's going to unite them with this speech and get them all to overthrow this this horrifying government. I, I just was just like, who the fuck are you? Exactly. They'd be like, well, my family taught me that we should fight. It's like, oh, I don't care. This who might the be a fuck are they? Like, Leave me alone. <laughs> it's like we need to look out for the little guy. Who? You guys don't know this, but there's an overworld, and they're all bigger than you, so you're the little guy. <laughs> you're actually the little... Is that you're what she means? Like, guy. we all need to look out for each other? And if I so, mean, obviously, is... Kang is the, the you know, the, the big tyrant, guy. and they're all the little guy. Oh. But... she mean, When she says look out for the little guy, she really means look out for yourself, kind of. Look out for numero uno. <laughs> then they start pelting her with micro tomatoes, right? No. No. <laughs> that would be amazing. They get encouraged by her and start a revolution. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I have no idea why. Uh, it even looks yeah. like she dies on that recording. It does. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. I'll tell you, I guess all these uh, holograms, that there's like multiple machines all over the quantum realm. You know what I mean? No, Yeah, not. to project. To project. Cause to project the her, because we, we, we see place. it in different places and... First, I thought, oh, he's just that big, so you can see him from afar. But we see them approaching the Everyone's base with got the TVs, ship and it's you know? somewhere else. I mean, yeah. <laughs> right. Broadcasted on Channel One or whatever. <laughs> All made sense. Everyone was watching. Showed a bunch of characters we met throughout. It was great. I guess. 
would have been nice yeah. to have known what Bill Murray would have thought, and maybe he would have been joining them in the revolution or something. Because maybe, maybe yeah. he said, "Yeah, if you can save my, you know, daughter or whatever." But nobody cared to find out. They just had him get thrown away by an alien. You had his camp cameo. Let's go away. He True. got paid. He yeah, got paid for yeah. his two minutes of the film. He's an old man. He's tired now. He picked up his paycheck. He he's tired. gone. And she says, yeah, because uh, uh, there's that whole thing where he's like, yeah, he can be very persuasive. And we just said, then go and anywhere. Then go I don't know. Fucking know what's happening. Who knows? Because uh, when people needed help, he didn't look the other way, and neither do we. Come to the tower. Fight back. I know you've been waiting. Now is the time. He can't take all of us. I'm telling you, man, it's not an encouraging speech. No. <laughs> he can't take all of us. Yeah. You sure? He, he has might, vaporizing honestly. lasers. Some of you may die. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> all of you. Who knows? All of you may die. So, yeah, Cassie, uh, she does all that, and then, and then Kang is like, wow, she fucking interrupted my speech. What a bitch. Modoc, yeah, go he's kill very, her. He's very angry. He's nice and upset about that And one. it's like, why is she alive anyway? Mm-hmm. Why? What, what was the purpose? And it's like, well, now I'm gonna kill her. You're like, okay... <laughs> I guess. And um, then uh, Modok turns up and he's like, it's time to die, Cassie. And then she's like, oh yeah, and goes small and they start having their fight. And it's like, wow, why didn't you do that when you first met him? Instead of just giving up. What was that about? It's their first day. Ugh. Well, I mean, the whole movie <laughs> doesn't really happen if they oh, fall back. Oh, we keep nice. running into that problem. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh yeah, did you remember as well, he's chasing her and uh, and... He's like cornered her, sort of, and she said, uh, uh, "He says your dad's not here, Cassie." But I guess that's not a big surprise. Like, but, damn, okay. dude. Okay. Were you rude? <laughs> just Dude. it just seems really unnecessary. It's like are you, you referencing the fact that he went to jail, and that's why he missed a lot of his life in the first film, and then, and then he, he, he went to the quantum verse, and he was out of his life for five years. But again, these aren't. It's just it's just like a weird low blow. <laughs> like this is yeah. okay. <laughs> But it's like, well, he's a dick, so it's in character. You're like, okay. And then Ant Man arrives. He arrives. He's really big. Save the day. And he he shouts. He, he says, Kang. Kang. Yeah. We had a it's deal. Such, it's such a movie trope, isn't it, to scream the bad guy's name? <laughs> yeah. At this point. And he goes, You took Kang! my daughter. You lied to me. Our word is our bond. Without that, we're nothing. <laughs> Very, it feels like a speech that doesn't belong in this movie. No, <laughs> like was, yeah. So I guess we made a big deal out of their, their deal, even though that was the course of like 10 you know, minutes of the movie. Yeah, it was barely even a deal at all. It was a big deal to Scott, okay? Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I didn't find. Uh... Paul Rudd's angry no, face it sounds funny. performance. Yeah, it didn't really work. I can't for me. imagine him angry. <laughs> no, he's just too chill and nice. He tried it with the whole like never like don't touch my daughter again. And it's just like yeah, I'm gonna uh, have to do a few more takes. There. Yeah, um, I think a good a good director could probably get him there, but I this one so, did yeah. not. So mutually, uh, yes. next surely Kang just approaches. Oh, we got someone else to right? talk about first. Someone else. To oh, okay. Just a bit. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just a little bit. Just... Thought uh, I had a good segue here. But... Jets at Kang, you conspire against me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Certainly it feels. Dude, it's, it's it's really funny when people scream somebody's name because yeah. everybody's obviously doing the comp, the one. God, like ah. it's it's funny. So, uh, Dang. apparently, and you can spot this in trailers, and I think it's a really strong theory, the original vision of this film was probably going to be much more about a big choice that, that Scott was going to have to make, and it was to, Kang was going to offer him the time back with his daughter, uh, in exchange, I presume, for the engine, and probably a promise of, I'm not going to destroy the fucking multiverse, okay, that'd be crazy. And, um, and then Scott would have to, you know, put aside how much he wants to be there for his daughter to protect the world from this this guy. Which uh, like, feels like a more meaningful choice in line with who he is. It feels like, oh, that's that sounds like a story. That's an idea. Yeah. yeah. Where, where'd that go? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, what well, did happen? It got chopped out of the fucking movie, apparently. I don't know. Because uh, the choice came down to, I will kill your daughter unless you fetch me a quest item. No. No, you will, though. Yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah, it. I will vote. 
It's, uh, it, it makes me think like, oh, I kind of want to see the original, like all the raw uh, footage for the whole film, you know, how much. And why did that get changed? Did Kevin see that and go? Oh, yeah, someone said, bit. oh, that's shit. I don't sure, know yeah. Anyway, uh, what were you saying, Mel? The first thing you'd think of? Or are you muted now? You little shit. Idiot. Loser. Come on, get all your metal insults out while he's not here. Germany. Wow. Oh, I damn it, he's back. I just, oh, my food arrived. What do you want? Uh, you were saying, I, I, I have completed my thing that I want oh. to say, so now it's your turn, I guess. Oh, I, I, I said, so surely Kang now just leaves his, his little pod, goes to Scott and kills him immediately, right? Because Oh, yeah, powerful. vaporization laser. He could probably even yeah, snipe yeah. him from the tower. Be like, oh, yeah, he probably doesn't need to go there. He just goes like, blah, 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 and then he wins, Smash. right? Yeah, That's considering happened. that we're told he, like, destroys entire timelines. Like, yeah. geez, how powerful must you be if you can destroy entire timelines? Yeah, Bear in mind that Spider Man and Iron Man and, and War Machine took down Ant Man. Like, it, they took him down. It, it was kind of hard, but, like, you know. Well, yeah. Like I would say it's hard because the they didn't want to use lethal. They wanted to. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. is, if they were allowed were to just... immediately fucking annihilate him, they probably would have sent the lasers after him, right? Mm. The big choppy laser from Iron Man 2. Yeah. Stupid choppy. The, so, just for reference, though, everybody, Kang, like, has a laser that just, like, disintegrates, it's like War of the Worlds, like, with the, the tripods, like, it's, it just disintegrates them. Yep. Yeah, it's really good. It's really um, powerful. It's really it's, strong, it's yeah. It's very effective, um, selectively. I might even say it's, like, his best weapon, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. he uses it, uh, he uses it for maybe Yeah, he just he uses it for several thing. characters we do not know the names of. Yeah, mm -hmm. all this, if you don't have a name... Oh, you're, you're getting, getting lazy. You don't have a name. Oh, well, yeah, it's, it's, that's how it works in a Marvel movie. If you don't have a name, good luck. If you don't have a face, you're done. You're you're finished. So <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, oh, that's why they keep taking the helmets off. That's yes, right. so you can stay alive. Right. I do have a face. You can't you know, touch me. Yes, I'm famous. Okay, it's like ah, you are famous. So it's I okay. am famous. Uh, the, the, there's, a, there's a moment around here, I think it's when they see uh, Scott arrive, Modoc and Cassie are like distracted, and then she notices he's distracted, so she hits the shrink on her, on her suit when her, her fucking helmet is still not on. And I, I, just, I just saw it and I was like, ugh. Like, I thought that... I thought it was a requirement, but I guess not. Whatever. We just, we just shrink and grow, no matter what, in any scenario. Like, the Ant-Man tech is just... Is just <laughs> Whatever. If she turned into it's girl cool. Modoc, that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> she shrinks everything <laughs> except the head, just like whoa, whoa dragging it. She's trying to run <laughs> with her tiny body. Like. <laughs> it just spins around in circles. <sighs> like Gandalf on the floor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um uh, this is kind of what I was talking we were talking about earlier, but we can sort of seal it off here. What does it mean for Abad to be big here? I don't know, because he's very small. You know when he goes big in our articles. universe relative to his normal size, he's like much slower. Uh the mass is all extended and so it's like controlling this this unyieldy thing. Meanwhile, when he's a slow, uh you can assume maybe that things are running quicker and fast. It's like it's like something that they imply as a sort of rule, I guess. You've that got less inertia. So, like, so you could move around quicker when you're smaller, but when you're big, you yeah. gotta move around all that extra mass is, you know, got more energy to it. And he has that same big person inertia when he's, like, smaller than oxygen particles. Yeah. Why? They treat it as though this payoff is he's gone bigger than ever. It's like, but no. he's actually incredibly small. He yeah. some of the smallest he's ever been. So I don't understand. <laughs> is it just relative to where he is? I, you know, is that I all that matters that's here? all we have to assume. Well, that's clearly yeah, what really they... That, that's what I'm saying, though, is that from what we've seen before, that's not how it works. Fair. Don't, don't think about it. Because uh, big him in our world versus big him in small world is mightily different in terms of his like POV and bio biology, and yet he's moving as slowly in both. I don't understand. Relative to gravity? Relative to gravity, but gravity would be the same, wouldn't it? I don't even... I, I, sometimes would, I don't, I don't even want to try and understand this. Yeah, I don't think gravity would be any different in the quantum realm, right? Unless the way that... I, I don't know. I, I would assume so. The way it's shown, it's exactly the same. You know, in the way pe human beings run around, it's it's all the exact same. No. 
Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, uh, he. The, the, so, so like yeah he's there and Kang is like alright send the things after him and it's like they launch a whole bunch of like ships like just, just flying ones that shoot stuff and for some reason as it always seems to work they shoot stuff at him and he just like holds up his arm or, or whatever and like it just doesn't do anything like his suit is like John Wick armor or whatever it's uh, like why yeah, now he, he can just uh, he can soak that up now because he's bigger which yeah it's just like what it's like, and why would it normal Kang size? is losing like weird future tech they yeah. established that he has like crazy established powers. Did you say centuries like, ahead of ours? Centuries ahead or something, yeah. Which, but his, a his lot, suit, by is the way. Up. Oh, he gets fucking blasted. Centuries. Yeah. That's like going from the Game Boy to the Switch. Whoa. Whoa. Centuries in between them. Hard to believe I can remember them both. Yeah, I know. It's insane. Whoa. That Game oh. Boy SP. Mm -hmm. Space Age. So those, those, all, those, all the ships coming, because we're in like a fun action scene, he's like, oh, okay, here we go, and, and Wasp is on his shoulder, as normal size, and she's like, keep going, Scott, I got him. And then she like, fires her thing at one of them and says, yeah, come on! It's like, oh, wow, look at this action scene, yeah. Literally, right? I was using the word correct, literally 15 literally. seconds later, oh, she wow. then says, Scott, I can't hold the... That's right, yeah. It's pretty fucking very, funny, not gonna lie. He's very overconfident. <laughs> I just, it's such a stupid action movie trope thing. It's like, I got him. And she's like, I don't got him, oh god. And it's like, oh, that's a comedy <laughs> beat. But it's just, it's played seriously in this. Because what actually happened probably was they had a big action scene. Or had a big they sent like scene. two or three after him and she took them out. And then they sent a whole bunch more and she couldn't handle those. That Something like that. But, yeah, something changed and yeah. Because it, as it is, it just seems weird. Oh, it, it's it's really weird. It, it feels like it's all just chopped together. Um, yeah, or and I don't like understand. This... They had it's like they meant to have a joke there or something, but there was no joke. Like I said, if you I play it correctly in another, like a more of a parody movie, it could be a pretty good joke. I think you'll find jokes like that even in stuff like Star Wars. I'm trying to think of a reference where it's like, I got him, and it's like, I don't got him. Like that sort oh, of thing. I mean, the joke in Endgame, you remember when Spider Man's fighting the space dogs and he's got the gauntlet? He's like, Yeah, I got, I got this. I got this. I don't got this. Like, yeah, it's just immediately apparent that he, he can't do it. But in this, like I said, if you watch it, it's, it's like two different action scenes chopped together and they didn't realize that she had said those two different things in those two scenes. Mm -hmm. That was an Indiana Jones joke, right? Where he runs out with a sword, and then there's a whole bunch of them, and then he runs back. Oh, well, that's a that's, Temple of Doom that's at the end of it, right? that's a more subtle one, yeah. though. That's a more subtle one. Not quite what we're going for. The Spider-Man one is pretty much uh, what I was thinking about. I don't exactly. know if there's ever been well, another one like that in the MCU before. Um, oh, is there a bit like that in The Mummy? Rags, you've seen that recently. I did see The Mummy recently, and... Uh... Yeah, I saw that recently. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Um. Uh, all right, where are we? So yeah, uh, there's like fifty of those ships, and they're all shooting at Scott, and it's not doing anything to him. No. Why? He Why big. He, that's a lot of. That's a lot, though. You know, it's a lot. You know. It's a big. Lot. But if you considered that he big. Well, in any case, he's fine, because the army of living buildings and random creatures from the quantum realm all arrive right now, at this very moment, all together. They all just came together exactly at the same time. That's just, that's how that works. You know, they didn't have any problem getting together and getting the ships together in their respective areas of the world where all of them were mm -hmm. under, like, robot control, if you remember. There's, like, all robot sentries everywhere, and... It's fine. They've broken through all of those and they all arrive. I love if someone said living buildings. What? It's like, that's what I mean. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> last week, the living buildings. We have to re explain everything. It's so horrible. Uh, so they just arrive and they start winning. It's great. It's so great. But then, drama. They can only get so far because a bridge has been taken away. It, it, it's like rolled back. And I immediately was like, didn't you? When, you're you're on just, ships. I mean, Dude. ships, right? Fly. Fly what, what's over. with the bridge yeah. thing? What's happening? And it's like, it, well, because they got off their ships, and then they there was a bridge that got taken away. And it's like, oh, get get back on your ships. There you go. Instead of just standing there and getting shot, like get get on get on the ships. Uh, but luckily for them, on the other side, Tryhard is there, and she kills a bunch of the droids, and she's like, "Tell me the bridge code." And he's like, "I'll die before I tell you that." 
And then the mind read is right next to her, and he goes, oh, the bridge code is like 1-8, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, ha-ha, and, he, and the robot's like, damn it. It's very funny. Yeah. Why he is the mind jumped... reader man there? I guess he, he, he has been captured as well in the first scene, and they got, got them out of prison. Did they? Did they? Did they I show mean, this? I mean, they're... They didn't show this, but they said, they said it's like, oh, we need to get to the comms and also get everyone out of the prisons that can fight. And yeah, I, guess that just happened I know that, because we definitely saw them releasing people. I'm willing to believe there was more than that. But I thought he got out in the, uh, in the opening battle. I didn't realize he got captured. Well, see, I thought the, 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 the Flare person got captured, but he comes on the ship. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He's the there, and, just, they did. He's there. and someone just said, wait, you read, read a robot's mind? It's like... I don't know, man. Guess it's not a robot. <laughs> Is it not a robot? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> also, rebellion lady jumps into frame from like, like from the top, but when you see the white shot, there's not nothing remotely close. She Someone could just jump said, off, off without dying. Why wouldn't Kang have conscripted and captured Telepath Man? That's like the most powerful thing ever. And it's like, oh. That's yeah. That's get yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> true. Also, you'd probably that's want to control point. the only source of communication ooze. That that seems like something you'd want. I can assume only assume that there are entire concentration camps and that are <laughs> just full of mining the communication ooze and From that vebs, the civilization loads of vebs. I can, I can only assume, right? That's what makes sense, right? <sighs> right? Right? Uh. So anyway. Anyway. They, um, the bridge is opened back up, and they all run across it, and it's so exciting. It's like, can they truly defeat Kang? Yay! I certainly hope win? so. Will they're the shouting, like, win? burn it down and stuff. It's kind of funny. It's, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's all just, it, everything, there's so many questions about how any of this would ever work, but it just, it's all just like, this is what's happening now, so shut up, and you're like, Okay. Yeah, you never really, I don't feel like you really ever get the impression that these are people fighting back against some sort of a tyrannical government or anything like that, which is what I guess they're going for. Yeah. They're just like, I don't know, there's some people and they were in a war with Kang, I guess, and they lost or he's trying to, I don't know. Like, why does he even care so much to fight against these people if all he needs is the, 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 the engine thingy? Like, why not? Like, why bother? Because with this infinitesimally small little teensy weensy civilization as compared to the entirety of the timeline you're trying to erase or whatever why do you care know. i don't know i don't know ridiculous and uh fun we got a patented very much marvel tm joke uh in this moment we get a uh, 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 goopy web man runs and he gets shot loads of times and then he's like i have holes now and, and, and they all turn into one big hole and he sucks up all the the droid men and they all disappear into his mouth and then yeah. the rest of the people are like, yeah! Oh, well, sorry, just before that, this this is the Marvel joke. It, like, zooms right into Telepath Man, and he says, I didn't know he could do that. Yeah. It's really it's, funny, guys. It's that, it's that, that's, like, crystallized for me. That's, like, the mm -hmm. number one representation of modern Marvel humor, that, that moment. Mm -hmm. It's such a, like, you don't have a joke to tell. You just, you just want to be like, ain't that funny? His thing was holes, and now he has holes. That, I think, is funnier. <laughs> like, without him being like, I didn't know he could do that. Yeah, it's yeah. very much a that just happened kind of joke. It's, the, it's exactly really? that. And it's funny, because I don't think there's an example of that just happened in the MCU as a joke, right? I don't think that's an actual quote. But this is the closest we've gotten to it. And it's years after everyone's been saying, that just happened, as the example of a bad MCU joke. That's such a that's poisoned phrase now. It's it's so like just don't put it in anything now. It needs time. It's time away. <laughs> it needs, time it needs to, to be put into the vault for a while before we bust it back out. I think that it's it's evidence of uh, desperation almost when you're just like you've told your joke. And you're like, do you think do you think people know that do they know to laugh? Do they know that that's funny? I mean, maybe we should have a character point it out. I don't know. That's the that's the mark of good comedy is the feeling the need to have characters pointed out for the sake of the audience, you know? I think that's what makes good comedy. There's so much bad comedy in this movie. Uh yeah, I think yeah, the two times I think no, I think there were three things, not where I laughed before we get there were three parts where I was like, heh. 
And one of the hints was at it was the old guy calling him Spider Man, and I think that was just because of like his mm-hmm. accent was just it just was like hey. um something charming other, about that joke. Yeah, uh, the other one was when the ooze man uh, asked, "Did you drink my ooze or something?" That was just weird, and I was like hey, at that, mm-hmm. and of course the him thinking about how many holes he had, and that and that was it. Yeah. But, this is an, an incredibly funny, incredibly f- uh, unfunny movie that was trying to be funny. Um, I mean, it's kind of like Thor: Love and Thunder. I think is still the king of trying to be funny uh, but not being or, funny at all. Probably because I that one was trying to do it so consistently. This one was doing is... it pretty consistently, but like, what is the ratio of of, of um you know like hit and miss? Like, how how many misses can you have as a ratio before? You're in really bad territory as a comedy. What do you reckon? Maybe it's maybe it's not necessarily. Is it is it hit and miss based on the amount of jokes, or do you think that the time is going to be a big factor in that? Like if you tell uh, two hmm. jo- if, if you tell two jokes a minute, and every fourth joke hits, you know you're making people laugh about every. You know, I I think the problem is that like people generally have an awareness of like jokes, so when they notice that jokes are happening and they're not laughing, I feel like people sort of sort of clock that. Like if I were to think about if if we were talking like really high up in terms of ratio of like of uh you know swings and then hits, we're we're talking like classic Simpsons, like Monty Python, like Hot Fuzz, where you've got like ten jokes a minute. And like nine or ten of them are hits. Or at the very least, even if you don't laugh, you appreciate it for like how intelligent it was as a Mm -hmm. joke. And then that's like on the higher end. And on the lower end, you've got stuff like Thor Love and Thunder, where it's like, yeah, they're trying to make like ten jokes a minute. And often it's like none of them hit, maybe one of them hits. Yeah. I I guess I'm just trying to figure out where the line is where it's Yeah, I think if you have bad if you have two movies that both have like a like a 25% hit ratio but one is taking way more swings that one would be way more obnoxious you know because you're just spending more time not laughing at something that's supposed to be funny regardless of the yeah. ratio yeah ex- that's that's what i'm thinking i uh i can't think I'm of an example to, think- to see how i would feel about that well, um, like what? Yeah, like a film because because the extremes are easy. It's it's the middle part where it starts to get more complicated. Like if you think about a a pretty regular. Do you guys ever see the other guys? Have you you heard of that yeah. movie? Yeah, I've seen mm-hmm. it, but it was so long ago I can't remember much about yeah, it. Yeah, I I really like that movie, but that I movie like it feels too. like it's closer to the uh to like the middle. That would be sort of in the middle area of trying to figure out how many jokes you go for, how many are hits and misses, and then figuring out what you think about it. And I guess there's also, you know, how how funny is any individual joke is like a relevant part too. Like if you have a if you have a show that's like, you know, it's mostly hits, but it's like, uh-huh, as opposed to, you know, like I'm thinking about a lot of people are pointing it out from that film, Aim for the Bushes. That's like a really funny joke. Yeah. <laughs> that's a really, really good joke. Because that film is is swinging a lot, and it it has some misses for sure. But then it's got a couple of really really funny jokes like that one. How much is one really good joke worth? Can um, one really good joke excuse like six or seven misses? <laughs> I feel like it does. I think it does too. Yeah, especially I think, I think if does. they're even just like decently spread apart in terms of time, in terms of laughs per minute. I think that a really good hit makes up for a lot of mez and misses. I guess I... Isn't it interesting to think about... Um, one of the problems that I have with... Uh, you, you take something like uh, like Big Bang Theory, right? Where like every second or third line is a joke. You often don't get any time at all to have like a scene where it's just people talking and it's advancing character strictly. Like, it's, it's almost as if the shows are pretty insecure. They need to have, like, a joke every third or fourth line. Otherwise, you're not, like, a funny show. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, I look at Faulty Towers, which is kind of similar. Like, most of the time, people are saying things that are really funny. And it's like, well, what's the difference then? And I guess it is just as simple as the writing is better in Faulty Towers. Like, you're actually laughing because people are saying something funny every three to four lines compared to... You know, like, a, I guess you could say more like generic American sitcom. And when Bingo. it comes to... Go ahead. Mm. 
Oh, no, I just, just said Bazinga. I just said Bazinga. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so when I think about a, um, a show that is consistently amusing, but, ne but rarely makes me laugh out loud, I think of Mystery Science Theater 3000, where... I'm constantly paying attention because I'm I'm very often amused by a lot of the jokes, but it's it's a it's about more consistent. It's a, the average is decently high, but it never really gets to the like laugh out loud. Oh, so always, like, it's it always, is the always smiling. This is funny, but not ha ha funny. It's yeah, it's like I'm always yeah. smiling. Uh, oftentimes, I you know sensible chuckle, but it, but it's I good guess, uh... it's consistent. I'm a, I'm I uh I can certainly value I I really like laughing though like uh yeah. <laughs> when when something can get me to laugh that's that's like really really yeah. great. Well, I was just thinking about yeah. how it's almost like there's a combo meter for a comedy. But if you can keep us laughing, so. we're going to come away with such a good feeling. Cuz you guys are well, saying yeah, like one good joke. How far can that go and it's like it's almost like a really big hit. But I guess if it's surrounded by several good jokes as well, it'll hit even harder. Well, yeah, you think about you think about The Simpsons and, and how many good jokes you can have in, like, the span of one scene. And usually there's, like, one joke that stands out as particularly funny. Um, I'm just trying to think about, like, a sequence that was, uh... You, you remember the, the, the town meeting for the, uh, for the, the meteor? <laughs> like, to stop the comet yeah. that's gonna destroy? And then, like, like, you had several jokes there. You had the quit stalling what's the plan guy just quit getting up and stalling. screaming. What's the plan? And, and then, and then you have the joke of, of every time, like, the, the little presentation where it's, like, showing what's gonna happen with the comet. It's, like, flying a little crude drawing of Springfield, flies towards it, hits it, and it singles out Moe's bar at the center <laughs> of the explosion with an arrow pointing to it. Yeah, which, by the like... way, is a joke on its own. But the thing is, all of it, normal people would see that and just be like, huh, that's a coincidence, it's kind of funny. But Mo takes it super seriously. <laughs> of course. And then you have the next part where they have like they have a little uh set that they made. This is where you talk about the layers of a joke. They have a set to demonstrate what they're gonna do to like stop the comet. And it's like as the comet is hurtling towards the city, our rocket will intercept it and blow it to smithereens. Why? It blows up, and then the flame specifically flies over to Mo's bar. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, dear God, no. Exact same like, reaction. What are the layers of the joke there? It's like, first of all, it's the same reaction, which is funny. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's the fact that it hits Mo's bar again. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> the fact that there is a little prop in there that is signaled as Mo's bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah isn't it like there's a load of blank like, buildings around it? And then it just says Mo's. And then it's like the fact that the flame basically like flew out of its way to hit the bar. <laughs> and then no matter what happens, Moe's bar is doomed. <laughs> it's like, it's five jokes in one. And that's really, really, like they had to have worked really hard for that one. There's no way that that was something that they came up with the first time around. Yeah, and the, and the even, art of revising. Just like with drama, these are a lot of first draft jokes that are in the scripts. And, uh... Some of them are like insecure, like I said, I, I think that's what the, the I didn't know he could do that thing is. That's just the right of being like, I better make sure I signal that that was funny, or that the characters right, are with you on that one, you know? Haha, <laughs> we're all, yeah, we're all having, having fun. having a level of confidence. Yeah. Because uh, it, it's, it's one that will keep coming back to, but the joke in Black Adder goes forth where it's like, if we if we if we uh happen to trip on a landmine, what do we do? And it takes like the audience a second to like realize that a joke has just happened. Yeah. It's like there's a moment of silence, and then everybody is like, "Holy shit! Like what? The like what has he just said? That's hilarious." Yes. And it's like having a level of confidence that your your audience is going to figure it out. And even if they don't figure it out, well, it's tough, right? If the joke is good, then if, even if everybody doesn't get it, that's fine. It's almost like and double dipping this, too. This particular joke doesn't actually make a lot of sense to me either. He gets shot a bunch and he's surprised or uh, he's not expecting to, it's like, oh my God, I'm full of holes. And then he has this power. It's like, did he know that he had that power? It's, I'm so confused by that joke. He didn't, nobody it. knew that was a thing. It just happened and it's so funny because it's absurd. It's very, again, I would say that that feels like it has Rick and Morty DNA, that joke. Yeah. A lot yeah, of the it's a Rick and Morty reject kind of joke. Yeah, the whole film is very uh, sort of what everyone hates about Rick and Morty. I think a lot of it, the mm -hmm. delving into the lol so random uh, humor. 
Penguin of Doom, mm. am I right, guys? Okay. A anyone? Anyone? Penguin of Doom? I don't remember that. Ringy? Penguin of Doom? I don't, actually. Apple opinions? Penguin of Doom? <laughs> anyone, What's please that? save me. All right, chat, help me out. Penguin of Doom, you know the reference. I swear to God, I feel like the oldest person here most of the time. It's an older meme, sir, but it checks out. Yeah. Penguin of Doom is, it holds up Spork. Yep, that's the one. It's like this post online from, I think it was like a girl who was trying to be like, looking for friends, but the problem is that I gotta find people who are as, as random as me holds up Spork. <laughs> and then her account name was oh. Penguin of Doom. Uh, she was she was so random, you know? She would just, in the middle of sentences, be like, hi, I'm holding up my Spork now. And it's like, oh, that's so... Yeah, oh. LOL, XD. Yes. So random. So random. Old man Mooper. <laughs> well, so anyway, I guess we could uh, we could carry on with the the wonderful story of the Ant Man well. in in the Quantum Verse. It was nice to reminisce about those things that made us laugh. <laughs> now let's talk about <laughs> whatever this uh, is. <laughs> Quantumania, yeah. So uh, uh, Kang turns on the shields in his little capital town center city center place. I don't, I don't know, and uh, they show Janet like noticing how it all works in there, and it just reminds me, it's like, why is she still alive? What are you doing? It's just chilling, leave it alone. She's gonna cause problems, but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, Mahler, it's fine. And the guns turn on, and they start firing at Ant-Man, and of course, he takes a few hits and does nothing, and then he just picks up, like, a building and uses it as a shield. It's like, okay. Like Captain America, whoo! Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> him. That's neat. Oh. <laughs> uh. <sighs> um... So, oh, that's that's when the big Modoc scene comes up. So, with everything we've told you guys, you must be thinking like it's so cool to see all the pieces come together. You know, you know where Modoc's arc's heading. In the same way that you can kind of see the pieces <laughs> coming together about Thor in Thor. Uh, 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 I was supposed to say Kratos Ragnarok, uh, God of War <laughs> Ragnarok. <laughs> You, you can kind of right see what kind of payoffs we're heading to. Like, with MODOK, with everything we've told you, you're, of course, expecting the big moment where he has to make his choice, you know? Right? Like, he's gonna yeah, be fighting Cassie, he... and, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna get you, and then, you know... And so so the obvious happens. He he blows up a bridge that she was running toward, and he's like, I've got you now, nothing you can do. And he opts to activate his big old purple sores, and he's gonna... Mm you know, drive right into her and chop her up. And then she's like, oh god, I hope this works. And puts a growy thing in her, I guess, suit, wrist part of this suit, and she grows real big and punches him in the face. It's kind of weird, because it's like, you could have just shrunk. You'd be fine. But okay. He also just could have yeah. shot her a billion times before this. He also could have shot he her, doesn't. yeah. But, but, like, she escapes him many times just by shrinking. It's like, why can't you just do that again? And then she's like, uh, saying, I hope this big. works. So was there a chance that that was just going to tear you limb from limb? <laughs> I, I thought they cracked movie. it by now. Why is it that her yeah. suit, uh, like later generation, doesn't have it built in? Why does it have to be an experiment for that too? They want it to be like, oh, this is her first time doing it. So like, it's risky, but it's not risky. There's no reason. <laughs> it's risky, but it's her. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and she just beats him. She just punches him, and then he, he he's like, I still got you, and fires one of his things at her, and she just grabs it and throws him around until he's he's like covered in blood and beaten and just, just on the ground being like, uh. And she's like, okay, bye. And it's just like, what? Okay, then. That's that. But then he's like, hey. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where do you think you're going? Let's go. You think this is over? Come on. Let's, let's go. And then she just like walks back. She's like, Darren, stop. Just, just stop trying to be whatever this is. It's like, wait, what is happening now? And then he's like, what are we doing here? The camera just fixes on him, and he's like, I don't know what to be. Tell me what to be. <laughs> Tell me what to be. It's like, what? And then she What's says, it? I don't know, just don't be a dick. And he says, it's too late, look at me, I'm such a dick. And then she says, it's never too late to stop being a dick. Uh huh. And that's the scene. And then she walks away. Yeah. And so I was like, I was like what? Modoc fans, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it, I don't even like. I, I think everyone all over the world is like, "What is happening? What, what, what are we doing?" Um. The, the Darren Redemption arc. <laughs> apparently. If you had that on your bingo card for 2023, I'm, yeah, I'm you, really, you got to cash out. That you got to cash gamble. Out. Even, like, what? Some people in my theater laughed at that joke, and it made me want to die. <laughs> I, 
I wouldn't be able to laugh because I'm too lost on the character. I just don't know what's happening yeah. anymore. What, what was he doing? not cartoonishly what evil? Did was all that was going to change him? Someone saying you don't have to do what you're doing. Really? That was it. So I guess yep. he didn't really want to do any of this. He didn't want to stop the multiverse. I guess he didn't collapse really want to disintegrate Scott when he said, "I'm going to disintegrate you." That was just, <laughs> he, was, he was just memeing. He was just, just memeing. <laughs> Just well, all those times he almost killed so many. Well, he did kill so many people in this movie too. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't understand. I don't get it. It's all really weird. Um, but also like it. It. I felt really weird when he said, "I don't know what to be. Tell me what to be." Specifically because I think I had like, I I had you know like in Doctor Strange where they dream and they they are their multiversal selves. I like had a a a, a blink to my multiversal self watching a good vision of this film where Modok. <laughs> That is like the end of his arc is 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 basically realizing that like he's only a monster because he is you know been treated that way, brought up that way as a result of the experimentation, and that ultimately he never knew what else to do. He never knew how else to be, and that everyone treated him like you know shit, and that you know some kind of characterization that way, and that um no one's ever even tried to speak to him, no one's ever tried to do anything with him, and that a lot of the stuff that he does is pretty neutral or something, and so he's just like look at me. Like, I don't even know what I am. What should I be? Because he's like a horrifying experiment gone wrong sort of thing. Like, what is, he, what is his he place in the world? He horrifying experiment gone wrong. And, that's, and, and I just, for a split, like, like nano, a, a quantum second, I was like... Oh, that's tiny. I was like, man, this is tragic. And then I was like, wait, no, these lines are supposed to be funny. Mm-hmm. And that, oh, yeah. I fucking hate them so much for this kind of writing. They never take anything yeah. seriously. And it's funny because we haven't even gotten to the part about Modoc that people feel uh, this way about. We're not there yet. Uh, yeah, there's yeah, that scene. We're not, we're not quite there. God, I hate that scene so much. Yeah, it makes me kind of angry. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah, I guess he's a, you know, I was about to jump the gun a bit, but, like, the idea with that scene is that he's actually, Cassie's convinced him now to rethink his position in this story. Uh, yeah, which, by saying you yeah. don't have to be a dick. That's what she did. It's that simple. People have compared this with Jensen's line in I'm a One, saying like, you yeah. know, make sure you do something with your life. Uh, sure. It's just like what happened? <laughs> what the what fuck happened? happened? Uh, no standards have dropped so cataclysmically low. <laughs> just don't be a dick. Like, okay. <laughs> uh, Darren doesn't have a character. He's just a fucking joke. It's a little douche. We'll find out more about that soon enough. Um, so Ant-Man goes really small and is picked up by Hope, who then throws him, and he goes really big, and I guess the momentum's maintained through all of that, which makes him smash through the shield. Obviously. I don't I don't really know what to do with that. I don't know how that would work. I guess it would work. Would it work? I don't know. I don't know. He just kind of crashed into it, and then it, everything breaks. I was just thinking to myself, like, surely... Artillery would be much more much more effective than a, a guy running into it. And I know he's big, but I, I don't know. Whatever. That that's the thing that breaks the shield. Fine, we did it. Um, and and then I think Janet is like, "It's over." And then Cag goes, "It's never over." Or something. I think he says like, "That's the one thing you don't understand." And it's just like, "Gosh, it's so generic. <laughs> it's not fair. You could have been something." Um, you could have tried. It actually makes me wonder, though, how are they going to be able to get rid of Kang once this arc is over? These phases are over? How do you erase him know. from the story when his whole thing is that he always turns up, you know? Hmm. And there are infinite Kangs who are all a threat, apparently. Don't forget the council. Yep. <sighs> so, Kang's mad. Very mad that all this has happened, as you would obviously be. His, his whole, everything's falling apart. For what seemed well, like insane nonsense reasons. Well, and, maybe uh, don't just sit there, you fucking moron. Well, okay, fine. You know what? He gets mad. He jumps down there and he starts vaporizing <laughs> everybody. It's like, okay, this makes well, a little more sense. We should probably go for the people that matter, though, instead of the Randys. <laughs> we're just, we're just killing people now, Randys. It's like, okay. While screaming, he's like, this is one really okay. funny part that just made me chuckle because the way he did it, there's like this one part where he just kind of sidesteps. And does like a pew 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 and kills like four yeah, people. Yeah, I, like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I don't know why he did that. It just looks so weird. He goes like da 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 da. <laughs> it's like cool. He was channeling a special move. So anyway, 
Janet is being moved by some gods, so obviously she escapes, just like everyone else does in this movie whenever that's happening. Constantly, the guards are so useless, especially <laughs> so when they're transferring They're there to prisoners. die. They're there to die. Yep, that's the only reason they exist. Uh, and and then uh, uh, Tryhard's friend, Laserface, he gets killed. It's very sad. Um, oh, no, not Laserface. That guy died. He, he, he got his laser redirected back into his face, and it killed him. I guess I can't handle that. Poor loser. Isn't oh. he the only one who dies? Well, Pretty there's one of the character who dies, of course. Uh, he's not oh. quite dead yet. Wouldn't want to spoil yes. it for chat who that character no, is, you know? It's, it's, it's a tragic one. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, you got the... the he's, he's, he's vaporizing, and then everyone's running away. Try Hard Lady has to get pulled away, like, hold me back style. She's like, Bruh, I'm gonna get you, can't. And then like, other people are like, no, we can't do it. And I was just sitting there, just like, just laser it. Laser it. Laser it. Laser it. Laser it. So easy, just laser Oh, anyway, everyone runs off except the three ant people being Ant-Man, Girl Ant-Man, and Girl Ant-Man with wings. Um, they go, the, those three are teaming up, and they're gonna, gonna fuck up Kang. And it's like, well, how would they do that? He beat them last time by flicking his finger. Uh, he can't do that this time. No, he it's a <laughs> cool down. Yeah, and, and he can't use his laser. Once a day. Vapor laser, he can't use that either. Yep. It's like, oh, Once a day. okay. I don't know why. And he has like an actual fight with them with, you know, they they punch him and then he punches them and then they tackle him and he tackles them and then she fires like lasers at him and he fires lasers at her and they don't they don't really hurt. They're just like standard action scene where nothing is accomplished. Um though I, I do kind of yeah, get it funny. Uh big Cassie grabs him and he hits her off and she goes small. Big Ant Man is trying to punch him and he hits him and he goes small. It's like are these Mario rules where if you're tagged in any way for damage, <laughs> you go do do do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> seems kind of dumb. But like, fine. Uh, um, and then he has a little, little, little rant. He's like, "You think this is new to me? Do you know how many rebellions I've put down? How many Avengers I've killed? You, you talk to ads." <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> okay, <laughs> the ants are really powerful. It's uh, yeah, not only that, but like, you know, I mean he goes small and he could go big and, and that like it may seem like a, a meme, but it's really, really good powers. Like they're really useful. They can do all kinds of things. Oh yeah. I guess, you know, you as Mr. I control everything everywhere and, st and stuff, he's like, Yeah, I guess I guess you're cooler, but man. It's just you can have him say anything you want, and you make him choose like this petty shit where he's just like, You're so insignificant compared to me. Okay. <laughs> Alright, buddy. Um, also, he just won't kill him, either. He keeps talking about how fucking great he is compared to them, but he won't kill him. Why? Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, there's a socialist uprising, and they destroy the uh, <laughs> fascist government. <laughs> the ants arrive! It's so wonderful. Here they come, oh my god, they, 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 they run over all the buildings, they kill everybody, and it's great, and everyone's really happy. The ants did it. Hooray! We yeah. won! It's kind of like the, the ghost the army in, in Lord of the Rings, where it's like... And we should have just had you. We should have just you, just over everything. Um, and then it makes you wonder, timing-wise, which Lord of the Rings actually addresses. This doesn't, though. Why didn't the ants just do their thing? Why? Why the whole time? Yeah. Why, I, why? I think it it had me thinking that the whole it, it's all tied to Hank. They like sensed Hank was in danger or something, or were looking for him, or he's their god or something, and they, they were constantly <laughs> trying to find... I don't know. That's the only way that I could try and you even think, begin to rationalize it. You think they'd, you stay, think they'd in, stay in contact with him throughout the tens of thousands of years? They couldn't. They didn't develop the technology to do that. So you're saying it was right when they developed the technology that they were also at the third act of the movie? No, they'd had that <laughs> technology for a long, long, long time. They just now were able to find him. Oh, so that's the same thing, just they were only now able... The fact they could find him at all seems really... Well, but does that even make sense? They were contacting him really early on in the movie. Remember that's he, right, he said were. he was detecting the, the yeah, uh, noise right, yeah. interference? Yeah. So they were sending out a signal to him constantly, I guess? And then they found him when he crashed his spaceship because of MODOK. Maybe they didn't Modoc. know how it... I don't know. Maybe they couldn't speak human. You don't know? How they do you not know? The ooze. <laughs> it's if so they clear. had the ooze, they could have done it. But they didn't. They didn't drink the ooze. It's kind of like Lord of the Rings. What has this movie done to you, Morlet? Look, it, 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 there's actors in Lord of the Rings. That's another similarity. So there you go. 
They drink water in the Lord of the Rings world, probably. They do that here, maybe. It's just nano water or something. Nano water. Uh, yeah. <sighs> so, the, the, well, so funny, that, that only addresses one half of the question I was kind of asking there, Rags. The other half was what took them so long since they made the plan. Yeah, it's one of why they don't just all approach at once. Ooh, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> no. <laughs> the ant, the the ways of the ants are a mystery to me. They no. are Go far my beyond. Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania Encyclopedia, right? So if you my don't know... ant lore master and the lore master for the ants, the cyborg ants or whatever they are now. Wait, you cool. don't know? I don't think anyone does. I certain the writers shame. certainly don't. The writers were like, wouldn't it be funny if the ants showed back up? I can because you know <laughs> ants. I Anthony hear a man. noise. One moment, I shall return. I just want to inspect oh, okay. I think it bears yeah. repeating that the ants literally saved the day. And that they yeah, would have all effect. died if it weren't for these yeah. plot device ants. Yep. It's insane. It's absolutely you know, insane. And the only reason that that happened is because of the time dilation, because I fell in the right direction. It's <laughs> just, the yeah. right they just it's happened. insane luck. It's just insane luck. Oh, uh, it's incredible. It's it's. I think it's the thing that as you're watching the film and it's all happening, you can just sort of gloss by it and go, "Yeah, I mean that's probably silly or whatever," or oh, you know, eh, maybe. And then it's yeah. like, no, this, this saves down. the day. This saves the well, the multiverse. They would have lost. Like, uh, they would have uh, lost. I think, I think it's safe to say they would have lost. Probably the end saved the day. So oh, it, it, very, it seemed almost very, certain very that they would have lost. Yeah. I mean, yeah. with their level of technology, yeah, I. <sighs> But I guess we also have to accept would... that the uh, the ants' technology is so much better than Kang's now, as well. I guess. I guess, I guess that's what they're doing. Because the thing is, we haven't even. I don't think we addressed that. But Kang just goes into defense mode immediately. He doesn't even try to fight back. He just no, puts he, up his yeah, shield. He immediately, he immediately. Can he not fly? Does he just have to walk? Can he? Can I Kang mean, he can fly? At least... It can at least make these little little uh, little platforms he can stand on. He floated around on those a little bit earlier in the movie. True. I guess it's just like surely he can fly, right? He's got his super duper suit. Does it let him fly around the place? I don't know. Wait a second. How did how did Hank know that they were a type two technocratic civilization? How could ants like if they're so tiny? Then what does it even mean to harness the power of a sun at that point? How could you know? do that if you're that tiny? Oh, I get you. Like, on what basis is he using <laughs> the, to assess? Because yeah, type two, as I understand it, is you've harnessed the power of your solar system. Yeah. Basically, would it even could be possible be, for a civilization that is there microscopic even a sun to do down that? Here? Yeah, uh, where's all the light coming from? Maybe he'd be able to figure out, uh, maybe he'd, maybe, I don't know, maybe he's super smart, so he probably figured out a way to try and adapt that system, um, like, he's adapt speaking it figuratively. to the quantum realm. Harness the energy of a light bulb or something. Because, yeah, it's, uh, I'm just, the Wikipedia, yeah, it's, yeah, Type 2 is a civilization capable of harnessing the energy radiated by its own large star. So it, it it would be like if the ants had built the equivalent of a Dyson sphere. Yeah. <laughs> but around what? Maybe oh, one like of those how? floating sun looking and you'd thingies. Figure as well, if they were a type 2 civilization, like the, maybe they would have been able to figure out how to get out of the quantum realm, right? Yeah, prob like if probably. You had the well, let's put it this way. Because Cassie did, and Cassie figured out 19... how to get down here. Well, it's just... Uh... The thing is, though, Earth humans in, like, what, the 60s or 70s with Hank created, like, the Pym Particle in the mm -hmm. 70s with 70s technology, which even in the MCU is kind of, like, advanced, but still, they created the means to grow and shrink and basically potentially travel to the quantum realm unwittingly. Meanwhile, 50 years later, and then these ants get to go in, and they already had cool technology, and then thousands of years to develop their new civilization develop no means of leaving the quantum realm presumably is that just like the one barrier that's impossible to get <laughs> past because if so how did uh modok shrink them down to get everybody down there in the first place feels like that bears repeating you can shrink people down into the quantum realm but you can't get out yeah apparently so <laughs> this, this movie is really stupid guys it's very stupid even though at the end they just teleport out because now that's I, wait, the thing you no, can do. Hold on, you're, you're, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> You're getting ahead yet. of yourself, too. Yeah. I think I think we mentioned that already in the last stream, pretty sure. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, and I'm going to repeat it one more time because I, I, I'm i stuck on it. Uh, the entire multiverse would have been destroyed if it weren't for ants happening to go through a time dilation field and turning and into then a showing type. up just in time. Yes, yeah, showing yeah, up even, just in time to that. overpower Kang. <laughs> uh, this kind of writing, I don't even know what it looks like when you're in the writer's room figuring this out. Like, what is this process? How long do you think that they spent working on the script for this film? Not long uh, enough. <laughs> well, during production of the movie, they were probably constantly mm. rewriting it because that's how they make movies. I mean, so, it yeah, probably I mean, was like we ha we have our beats. And you know, they do here, they do this. There's a battle scene or whatever. They meet Kang. That's that. And then mm -hmm. once they have that all lined up, they just start making the movie. And then I feel like the actual words and stuff that are involved. Yeah, we'll just fill those in the conversations, whatever. We, we know what we're gonna accomplish, so we'll just fill it in later. Don't forget. Well, they well, definitely we change it. Accomplish. Yeah, they definitely Dang dramatically right. change it as they go too. Yeah. Of course. I think. Uh, what is it? The the new Captain America movie that's gonna come out. Uh, they're already in production now. They're already in production, right. and they just fired the old writers, and the new <laughs> really? writers haven't haven't given their new script yet. But they're they've already started filming. Nah, come on, no. No, way. I'm serious. I, really? I I know I know people that are working on that movie. Dude, that's I think... <laughs> you can't make movies like this. <laughs> <laughs> Watch them, bring Watch them. I've yeah, been watching them, but I hate it. They're like, trying to the stop. The only records they can set now are the dr box office drop off ones. They're like, watch us. We're going to get the way, best yeah. records on that one. Yeah. Because I think like... the original writers were the people who did Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And then now they've got know. new writers, but they've, they're, they're either starting filming shortly or they already have, and they don't have a new script yet. No, apparently, according to Wikipedia, the the writers are the same people who did Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, Captain, yeah, like that's the same writers. Oh, uh, not according to the people I know working on it, but okay. Oh well, then yeah, who knows? Well, it, it, I mean, IMDb and Wikipedia are often behind the uh, yeah the true, realities. True. Fucking thing with like Tess, Tess is the the actress for Tess. How many episodes she appears in has changed so many times on IMDb. It's kind of funny. The last of us show. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, the the ants start just winning. They're just they're just dominating, man. They're just taking out everything. Oh, yeah. Nothing can do anything, and all of the the good guys, so to speak, are like, yeah, ants, woohoo! And you know, you're talking about the insane contrivance, but it's like I think they really did want to have an ant payoff, though. They, they they have to in the Ant Man movie, right? Like otherwise, like, and I think that's enough to make people forget about what why this happened. It's absolute yeah. insanity, but it's like, yeah, but it's ants. Ant Man. Ants. Ant Man. And it was set up because he said, You just talk to ants. Like, see, see, set up. Which, by the way, if you were going to make fun of, like, reduce Ant Man's power down to a gimmicky thing, you'd be like, You you go small. That's probably what you'd say. You wouldn't say you talk to ants. It's like, rarely does that even come up for the heroes or the villains that he does that. That's in, like, the first mm -hmm. movie, <sighs> briefly. But compared mm -hmm. to him going small and big, which is something he does all the time. So, mate, uh, yeah, it's not the, not the best insult. Maybe yeah. he was just like <laughs> on his feet; he couldn't think of anything better. Because, like, uh, when you reduce cap, you're like you fucking frisbee throw, throw the shield, shield throw. People don't. I mean, I guess you could say Iron Man kind of reduced him down to the uh, the super soldier serum, but Iron Man's a bit more smarter, more familiar with him, and wants to re reduce him down meaningfully instead of just making fun of him, like Kang, I guess, would. But it would be, I don't know, it just comes across as weird. Like, um, like if you, I don't know, it's, it's like fucking Wolverine, Mr. Oh, Mr. Health Regen. <laughs> like, I guess so. Mr. <laughs> like, Mr. Swords for Fingers. You could also say that. Um, yeah, so the, the ants all swarm over him, and as Metal mentioned, he, he pulls up a shield, and, uh, I guess we never see him do any kind of flight, so yeah, I, I guess, I guess he can't. Yeah, the only thing I've seen him do, you can open portals him do in the movie is he has portals, yeah, but and he has like he can apparently make like little little floaty platforms. 
I think he floats well, that, around. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that too. But yeah, the portal thing is just that's that's it. You just open a portal, jump in, close it, and if two or three ants come through, you just laser them. Yeah. Done. And then you open a portal back and enter in a safer area, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Instead of just shielding yourself, and then he starts like killing them. Um, but unfortunately for him, something else happens. Oh, uh, that's a shame. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what? that's that's that. It's about time, I guess. So yeah, we time. see Modok is on his way, and he says, "My name is Darren, and I am not, not a dick." A dick. <laughs> and he slams Darn. into the shield, wraps his arms around it, and detonates it. I guess, which removes it, and Kan gets swarmed by ants. Yeah. So yeah, it's, Modok switch teams. I've seen the thing, and it's just like, why did he switch Very teams? Cool. It's like, well, Cassie said, you just be need a to dick. be a dick. Yeah. So it makes you wonder why was Modok doing any of this stuff? What does he think about this situation with the multiverse and timelines? And what does he have to say about all the people he's killed? Yeah, does he have anything to like? Ant, to, like what even you know? Like, you know, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. And before we'll get back to Kang and his situation with him, we'll just uh, we'll do the, 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 the what he just did. Modok is going to kill him. That just cost him big time. Exploded, hurt him, oh, hurt him so much he's going to die. Shield. Yep. you get for trying to destroy a shield with your face? Yes. We, so I suppose when you're eighty six percent face, it's <laughs> more understandable that you've done that. I guess. So uh, he says, "You were right about me, Cassie." And then, and then he's like, he's just throwing up blood, and Scott's like, are you okay? And he's like, probably not. It's like, alright, one joke already, okay. And then you have Darren, and he's like, hi Hope, you changed your hair. And then she's like, what happened? And Scott's like, yeah, it's, it's a big thing, it's a whole thing, I'll, t I'll tell you, I'll tell you later. Uh, that, that. It's like, oh, see, this, that's another joke. And he's mm -hmm. like, wow, I don't know what to say. And he goes, thanks, Scott. You were always a brother to me. And it shows, like, every character looking confused and weirded out. And then he goes, I was? And then he touches his face with his like goompy small yeah. hand, and then he's like, "I was." I was like, Another joke, all right. Then he coughs up a load more blood, and everyone's like, "Ugh." Yeah, like grows out. And it's like, what, what? What? What is happening? And then he says, "At least I died an Avenger." And again, they all look around like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And then you go, "Yeah." And then like, yeah, yeah, you totally, do. yeah, yeah, you're in. You're, you're definitely in. And then he yeah. dies. And, it, and then they just move on. It's so fucking weird. Um, this uh, isn't how it would work in real life, just FYI. If someone's dying in front of you because they just saved the multiverse, um, probably gonna be quiet. Yeah. And uh, I feel like that bears repeating. Um, Modok saved the multiverse. Yeah. And you just watch it, be... it's so fucking awkward. Because they're all just like, look, like at this, look at this loser character. dying. I know he's a clown, but like, he saved the multiverse. Decision matters, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty big sacrifice he just made there. So, uh, yeah, maybe have some respect. And it's, um, uh, it's hard enough to treat any death like a joke. It's kind of weird in a, in a storyline yeah. that treats death seriously a lot of the time. But it's really weird to do it to a character who just had a big redemption to save the, the universe, the multiverse. Like, mm hmm Really, it's really also... fucking weird. <clears throat> this imagine is if Lu... <laughs> Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just no, gonna go say, ahead. imagine if Luke was like clowning on Darth Vader <laughs> as he was dying. No. Yeah. Also, this probably probably uh, bears remembering. Uh, this is probably the first time Cassie sees someone die up close, at least. Probably. Maybe even the first time di well, seeing someone die in general. Darren means something to Hope too, and uh, and Hank. He's not some random person. Yeah, the mentor, ment it was his mentor, right? Mentee, I guess you'd say. I don't know. <laughs> Student. <laughs> but also, like, well, yeah. he was a friend to Hope before he went insane. It, 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 whether or not they have X Men, they have feelings for this person, is what I'm saying. They right. care about the fact that he's going to be alive or dead. And the fact that he just saved them all. It means something. But uh, it's yeah. funny, funny, funny. And um, <clears throat> yeah, just really awkward as an experience and just exactly expected in these films. They keep doing this. Uh, they don't know. They don't know how to deal with tone. And it's weird how consistent that is when they have different writers and directors. Mm -hmm. And you like this they consistently screw it up. Yeah, the Marvel blender they all get put into, and then they end up with all the same problems. 
and they just basically move on with a well that just happens kind pretty of much dealio. yeah yeah because <laughs> you're, you're right he says a lot has happened today a lot has happened today and then it just goes yeah like, Which again it was really awkward when it's like Modok save the multiverse and he's there coughing up blood, to, you know, like Which he's is dying gross, in front by the way. Here. How gross. And then it's just like, uh, yeah, buddy, like, yeah, you really did it. It's like he did more than you. Like he saved the multiverse right now. Like, yeah. I don't know what to do, dude. It's so weird because there's just as uh, some people have made uh suggestions and it's just like, yeah, you could have had the scene that it's um they're all like immediately dealing with Kang or something, and it's maybe just Hank walks over to him and says, we're not going to forget what you've done today. You understand? It's like, well, it'd be I, meaningful I, if those two had a moment because of their yeah. history. And yeah, and then he says, like, I'm sorry. I only ever wanted like, for I us know to that work he's together. You know, that sort of thing. I know that, I know that Modok is a clown, but that doesn't mean that you have to, like, forego opportunities to maybe do something with the character, especially if you have him save the multiverse. I'm just going to keep repeating that, because that's what he did. Like, I know he's yeah. a stupid clown character, but that's what happened. And Darren was a person. He you was know. a person, yeah. Yeah, he was a clown person too, but still. Uh, so I guess we'll it's move on. It's awful. Um, <laughs> Janet just says to them, "Like I could give us one shot back to the surface world." It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> like whatever. I don't know what's going on anymore. I don't you know. What so. She's just like, "Yep, open it up a portal, and we can get back." You're like, fine, whatever, sure. <laughs> you even have like. They're all like thanking try hard, and then Hank's like, "Come on, let's go!" And it feels like he's just shot alone on some stage. Told mm -hmm. like they just chop that scene into it. The, the, who knows how much dialogue there was before and the end of that? Whatever. Everything feels awkward. Just waiting for the fucking thing to end. Portal opens, and before you even like, they're jumping through it, and you're just like, "I'm sorry, you're going from like micro, 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 micro size to massive by comparison instantly." Yeah, what's that? Do to you don't even body, wear your what? fucking suits. You're just doing it. Yeah. Nobody cares anymore. Nope. <laughs> Nothing matters anymore. Um, mm -hmm. It gets even weirder because uh, you everyone goes in except for Cassie and Scott, and then Scott see, like notices something and pushes her in, and he gets hit by a blast of energy, and you're like, oh my goodness. And I almost want to like we're gonna deal with something uh, in the room that Scott is in, but for the next like ten fucking minutes. You know, Cassie, Hope, Janet, and Hank are all just staring at the portal, not doing anything, I guess, on the other <laughs> yeah, side. Guys, are you coming? They, he was right like, behind that me. Was, that was weird. Oh. He was right behind me. Yeah, it's like, you could just go back through. Why? Yeah. You, clearly something's wrong. <laughs> like, do something. And it's worse than just the fact that they seem to not recognize they could do something. There are characters in there that would go back immediately. Cassie's one of them. Hope's definitely one of them. Janet would probably be 50-50. I don't know. She maybe considered some stuff or whatever. But to be honest with you, it probably would have been a neat payoff for Hank to go back in and get him. Um, yeah. Everyone was hoping they'd give Hank a chance to suit up in this, but no. Everyone else gets to I was know. so surprised that didn't happen. Just, like, they didn't give they didn't give us the, the, the quadruple ants, or Ant-Man and Wasp. Thingy. That's what I was saying. Ant, you know what I mean. Ant-Man and Girl, and Girl with yeah. wings, and Michael Douglas. That's the team. Yeah, kind of that was the that was the movie you wanted to do. probably can do it in. I don't think we're gonna get another chance. Well, he said if they bring him back, he's hoping to die. So maybe they'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> he's got Han Solo syndrome, That's right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want kind me, of want undermines. Me just make sure I'll die. <laughs> kind Dude, of that's undermines. insane. If if he does die, just real quick, if he does die in the next Ant Man movie, he'll have been in as many fucking MCU movies as uh, Harrison Ford was in Star Wars movies. <laughs> Almost. Oh, that's, that's funny. <laughs> no, no, wait, no, it would be the same because he popped up in Endgame as a cameo. So yeah, it would be the same. I was just gonna say that this them not going back through the portal kind of undermines the initial scene when they go in to help each other. You know, when they're getting sucked in and they all let go. So You're right. Go. Yeah. And mm. this, we're just like, ah, we're not doing that. It's like they just think he's tying his shoe, and that's what's taking him so long. <laughs> yeah, nothing to worry about, guys. I'm sure it's fine. It's like, yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Maybe he had to Nothing sneeze. Drug. I don't know. Looking for a tissue. <laughs> he just couldn't walk and sneeze at the same time. I was like, oh. Uh, uh, anyway, uh. <laughs> back over to Scott's end of things. He was shot by Kang, a laser yeah. blast. And I, I know, he... I know, chat. You understand this so well that you're asking yourselves, <laughs> wait, wasn't he eaten to death by ants? No. No, he wasn't. Shut up, chat. 
No, he wasn't for some Stupid reason. Chat. What the what the ants actually did was strip him of all of his technology except for one more blast from his shoulder cannon and then yeah. left him alone. That's what they did. Yeah, they just went like, we did it, but pack it up, boys. We go home. They didn't tell anybody about this. Like, they didn't go, oh, by the way, Hank, Kang is crawling around where you guys are. Just, just FYI, our god, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't just kill him, eat him, tear him apart. But no. No. Just, He's fine. And it's no. funny, because when he shoots Ant-Man, it, it, like, they have this shot where he looks at his, like, little wrist blaster, and it's, like, going... And he's like, no, it broke. And it's like, oh, only one shot. Is it because if it was working, <laughs> you'd easily beat Ant-Man? Yes. Well, but the thing <laughs> is, you remove him of his powers, and Ant-Man easily wins, right? Because Ant-Man's way better than, like, a neutral person. He got the power to shrink and grow. He's gonna fuck you up. Yeah. So how can they even this fight? I don't know. Is it possible? Well... Wait, sorry, really quick. Was Kang just a guy? He was. He was just a guy. Oh, God. Yeah, that makes it even <laughs> fucking worse, eh? So, um, uh, he starts running for the portal. Good old Kang. He's like, I'm gonna get there, here I go. And he's about to jump in, but then Ant-Man tackles him out of the way. And he's like, no, I will not look the other way. Or some shit like that uh, to try and pretend like this film has a point. <laughs> Shut up and sit down. So, uh, Kang punches him in the face and he falls over, then he kicks him in the face, kicks him in the face, and it breaks the helmet so that he can't shrink. And it's like... First they of all, all, shrink and grow without the helmet. Yeah, you could have before. shrunk this whole fucking time, by the way, my dude. But yeah. secondly, like, yeah, you've been shrinking the whole movie without the need of the fucking mask. Screw you. Ugh. Lame. So now it's just guy versus guy is the point of that. Like, look at that. Both reduced down to their basic stats. And the thing about it is, is you know, Kang's pretty strong, but Scott is strong spirited. Okay? Yeah. He's strong willed. <laughs> Um, so they fight and fight and fight, and Scott's clearly losing. But then the I was about wasp... to say fight is a fight is a strong word. Scott getting his ass kicked. Pretty <laughs> he's much, getting, yeah. He's getting battered. Um, and, and then the wasp shoots a bunch of lasers at Kang because she decides to finally fucking come through the portal. Yeah, after like seven minutes. So or stupid. <laughs> it takes and it's so like, long. Man, those are useful. I wish I had them on my suit. Yeah. But oh well. I guess I'm not good enough to have them. Fucking lame. So, yeah, um, she shoots him so much and then he gets punched in the face and he falls onto the the engine thing and then he starts screaming and it explodes and he gets sucked into it. Yeah, because Scott earlier was like, ah, we, I don't have to win, we just both have to lose. Oh, I he, hate that line quite a bit, actually. It yeah, doesn't make any sense he, at all. Yeah, and then he puts like... Uh, a combination of growth and shrink uh, discs on there. Right, then, yeah. Well, okay, uh, just before that, though, I think they fucked the line. When he says, because uh, Kang is like, well, haha, you're, you're going to lose now, bitch. And then he says, I don't <laughs> have to win. We both just have to lose. It's like, oh, you who wrote that shit, man? What you're <laughs> supposed to say is, I don't have to win as long as you lose. Yeah. That's the line. Yeah, way better. You gobbled it mm -hmm. and said, we both just have to lose. It's like, you don't have to, Scott. What do you if mean? You're, if you're, Scott, if you're willing to sacrifice yourself to save the day, wouldn't that be a win? Exactly. You? Phrasing it like a loss is bad. This is not good writing. Well, then I think the, it, it was probably better suited to the original plot line being that he like gives up his chance to see the, get those years back with his daughter, maybe his daughter as a whole. And uh, Kang has to give up the chance to, or not give up, but lose the chance to, like he said, uh, that would be how he's contextualizing his loss. But the thing is, because they've changed it, it's just, it just comes across as really weird. It's like, I don't have to win, we both just have to lose. Like, oh, fuck, that needed redrafts. I don't know what was happening with it. Um, I think if they both lost, Kang wouldn't be able to get out, but the multiverse gets destroyed anyway. <laughs> I don't know how, but that, I think that would be both of them losing. Uh... So, yeah, as Mel was saying, he, he attaches, like, the shrinky, growy whatevers into the engine, and Wasp poops him onto it, and he explodes and gets sucked into it, and that's the end of Kang. But not really. Apparently, nah, there's not any reason probably. to think he's coming back because the MCU sucks, but um, apparently the writer of this movie has recently come out a quote saying the reason they wanted him 
to lose that badly in that film is because you'll feel like in favor of him when we next see him. Ah, uh, no. Yeah. That's <laughs> a bit of a non sequitur, isn't it? <laughs> like, I think he said something like, you always feel like uh, bad for an underdog. You always want to like, so it's like, what? <laughs> like, it wasn't an underdog so though. Can... He just wrote him. Sure made him so we can, we should talk about this. Cause it's probably Ant Kang should have killed Ant-Man. That's probably exactly. what should have happened here. Because yeah. then that makes him like a threatening villain if he just kills mm -hmm. one, the main hero in his own movie and they don't beat him. Well, like and, that, and how, that seems like how much the better right could it decision. be too that they have the chance to escape? They can't like like Scott loses his chance to escape and loses his life to stop Kang from getting to them. So that it's back to quote unquote square one. They know seems Kang is down there. To go. He wants to yeah. kill yeah. them. He did kill Scott, but he's currently contained in the in the quantum realm. They know this and they can now tell the Avengers. You know that would be. That's actually building something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. You've established him as a significant threat that the characters are aware of and need to prepare for, and especially make him, especially since when they first introduce Thanos, what do they have him do in Infinity War? They have him pretty effortlessly beat the shit out of Hulk and then kill Heimdall and Loki. Yeah. Like, effortlessly, more or less. It's like, oh shit. Like, he's yeah. a. He's, he's a big deal, whereas here, Kang got beaten by Ant-Man. Yeah. Like, like, uh, if you, know you were going to be specific, like, he got beaten by Wasp's little wrist blasters. That's right. Like, yeah. The, yeah. You think, like, you think Thanos would have been defeated <laughs> by Wasp's little wrist blasters? No. Not even close. And it does But they stuff. didn't want to do that, because it would have been too sad, I guess. It does stuff to audience It would have been a little bit too emotional for the audience, so... Probably, nah. yeah. That oh. might, well, yeah, that probably was a product of because it's pretty apparent that the ending was a reshoot. Like it's very obvious. Your portal just opens back up, and yeah. Oh, I know. It's more so just that everybody looks different in the reshoots. Like oh uh, yeah, I like in the end, that. yeah. Paul Rudd looked yeah. a little bit skinnier. Um, Evangeline Lilly has a completely different haircut and like color. Um, <laughs> oh, it's just yeah. Imagine everybody looks totally different. Imagine they would have, but they well, said, like, we like didn't know it. how we could generate any sort of levity from it, so we decided not to. And it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the actual reason, yeah. I could believe it. So, that was a fail. Uh, he's gone now. And then, uh, you think for a moment, well, we're watching the actual, uh, one of the final cuts before they fi made the big final change. Well, the idea I, being yeah. that Hope came back to save Scott, and it cost them both being able to go back to the main <laughs> world. Probably, but they decided, probably, yeah. I think it's all but confirmed, uh, like, as in, I, I think it actually may have been confirmed now by one of the writers that was an original. But um, it's okay, because it cuts to Cassie pressing buttons, and then it cuts over to Hope and, and, and Ant-Man, they're just like, let's go home. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> what? Like, open. like, oh, cool. When Kang exploded on the engine that was hit with the micro and multi thing... That was what I assumed was able to open up the portal in the first place. So, how can you open it up now? And it's like, oh, well, you see Cassie's fucking micro-telescope thing. I guess that could do it. Yes, because a micro-telescope was designed to interact with a multiversal, like, engine machine, like, with technology that she never even knew existed, I guess. And just like that, like, in a, in a few minutes. Not even oh. an afternoon. Pretty smart girl. Pretty smart girl. That's true, Fringy. I think you forgot. Achieve. That's true. They set that it up. True. They did. Yeah. That's a setup. Is, they set that up later by saying it earlier in the film. What yes. Chekhov's smart girl? Yes, very good. Chekhov's, very good. Chekhov's if you daughter. say that a girl is smart in the first act, she's got to do something smart in the third act. Chekhov's daughter. And so after all that, right? Just think of everything we've told you, precious, precious chat. After everything that's been said <laughs> and gone Wonderful over, people. you then see Paul Rudd walking down the street, and quote, he says, "My life doesn't make much sense." <laughs> yeah, I'm no, it does not. No, uh, not even a little. <laughs> it used to. Yeah, there was a time. It kind of used to. A time where things were easier to understand. There was there was a time where the weirdness was just sort of like the physics of the Ant Man power, but they were kind of like so okay, like it, like that was the weirdest thing. And now it's just like multiple universes and mm -hmm. millions of alternative variable U's and multi. <laughs> I haven't listened to a word you've said. I'm totally lost. Can you repeat all that? Uh, <laughs> just hit that old rewind no. button. You'll get it. Here's the thing. Sure. Having it explained thing. to you won't help. Um, It'll make it worse, if anything. 
But hey, you might be thinking like, oh, so is there a lesson that's coming here at the end of the movie? It's like, yes, there is. And so going on, he says, you know, <laughs> my life doesn't make much sense. And I used to ask a lot of questions. But you know what? Who said life has to make sense? <laughs> there you go. Cope. <laughs> cope. <laughs> this is the writing cope. Well, the is, writing projection sneaking in. That's, a, that's almost like just cope in general. I don't yeah. know. It feels like it's worthwhile to try and make a little bit of sense of life. Imagine yeah. going up to Socrates and going like, my dude, have you ever just thought about like, shut the fuck up? <laughs> like, why are you here trying to like, figure out what people think and why, and try to make sense of the universe? And then... Just, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's chill. That's then we cool. get one of, I think, two of the last big frustrations of this whole movie. First quote. Ah! Yep. There's, I used I to wonder mean. if this chapter of my life is over, and he's talking about hero work, by the way, but as Cassie reminded me, there's always someone you can help. Okay, so that's statement one. What is statement was, two? No, wait, we're not doing two yet. We're, we're focused that on implies, one. Oh, that implies yeah, that at one that... point he believed that there was not people to help? Yes. It, yeah, impl it, impl like it's, it's, <laughs> it is exactly what we were worried about in terms of what they were actually trying to say in the fucking beginning, which is he stopped helping people because he's just too busy enjoying like fame and fortune, I guess. He's not even involved in his daughter's life, which is what he said he was doing in the book. He I don't get it. He regressed completely. He, yeah, completely he, he like lost his character. interest in helping people for some reason, and then like fucking even, Cassie got it, him back on board? Like, oh, okay. It's, 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 it's almost like a regress doesn't describe it properly. It's like, in between films, he changed completely. Like, he was just starts off as a totally different person with different values. Well, still then, being part of the Avengers officially, by the way. Well, I don't this, think they hmm? exist anymore. I have no idea. Where are they? No, yeah, I, don't, I almost feel like they reference it as a meme now to the audience. Like, remember the Avengers? Yeah, the yeah. Avengers. I don't think the <laughs> Avengers even exist, right? Because Tony was the one who was paying for all that, and he didn't even pay for people's pensions. So, because he's a huh. talk, <laughs> yeah. apparently. Okay, How does that so... work with, like, does Ant Man, he considers himself an Avenger, and, I mean, rightfully so. So when he. I, mean, I don't know, is there some element of before I go into the quantum realm, I need to, like, do I need to tell, like, no, the Avengers? The, the, or? No, the, uh, the Accords don't even exist. Why would he tell the Avengers anything? In case, I like, don't even in, he needs help, or, or... Like, who would he call? Does he call Captain Marvel? Does he have her phone yeah, number? Just he... like, hey, Carol, I'm just going into quantum stuff. Like, if there's any problems, <laughs> can you this... come back to Earth and help me out? How's in this post-shield... on the road. Post, like, sword? But think about, are they... Uh, I, I, I don't think Sword, I don't even know, because remember, we talked about this, I'm pretty sure we talked about it last stream, that like, a huge apparatus of the United States government just disappeared with no replacement. <laughs> like, when, <laughs> they all must have exchanged mobile numbers at Tony's funeral, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Please tell I mean, me they I did. Don't know, they? Dude, where is everybody though at this point? Right? I don't it, it know. Seems like Doctor Strange is probably off in different universes. Captain, I'm Marvel's sure all these are happening exactly Marvel. right next to each other, like one to one. Like he Fuck. calls Strange yeah. and he's in the multiverse with America, being like, "Is he, bro? Sorry." Dude, who's available to, like, actually help with stuff on Earth at this point? Well, I, I don't believe- it would be out of character for Fury not to give them all a, a means by which they yeah, can contact it, each other. Yeah, but he- he's- he's- he's out in space, right? Yeah, so he, he would have given space? them a means in which to contact each other. Yeah, he is Remember, they space, call him right? from Earth to space in, uh, Far That's from right. Home. Which- don't even think about that shit. Just nope. get the fucking phone out and call. I'm sure they're using unobtainium technology or something, and that's why it works. Well, yeah, because <laughs> it's a it's a, a thing that you got to deal with in science fiction. Is you know, communications <laughs> they have a cap at the speed at which they can travel. But don't don't worry. So don't anyway, worry. that was the uh, first of the two lines. Second one, yeah, no, line number two is uh, oh, yeah, two. <laughs> camera camera tightens up on Scott. He says, "Wait." We did beat Kang, right? I mean, that's that's what happened, I think. But he did also say something bad was coming, and that everyone would die if he didn't get out. Is is everyone gonna die b because of me? Oh, oh God, what what have I done? What did I do? And then it's like, uh, and then the music cuts out, and he's like, you know, it's like I said, life doesn't make any sense. Stop overthinking it. Yeah, fuck it. Man, you know what? <laughs> that seems like the actual opposite of the lesson that you were supposed to learn in this film, which is don't yeah. turn. <laughs> There's always people to save, like all of us. Yeah. It literally destroys kind of the like, whole film. It literally, it's like 
It's like the theme was okay. It was just about to make it out, and then the last line fucking chopped yeah, its head it off. off. It's like and now we're, we're right like, like, way, snuck into we, the we writer's room, yeah. wrote an extra line. <laughs> well, now we're left in a position where it's like, so Kang Dynasty is getting written by this guy, and right. Michael Waldron getting Waldron. written by Michael Waldron. Yeah. <laughs> Both of you emerged from Rick and Morty. Jeff Loveness, the guy who wrote this one, wrote Vat of Acid, and I don't know what I'm meant to even make of that anymore. I don't know what I'm meant to do with that information. You know, it doesn't just fuck the theme. One of my favorite episodes of Rick and Morty. It doesn't just fuck the theme. It fucks him as a character too. Be the first yeah, thing he would do um, is tell all the most powerful people oh, he dude, knows remember. about this. Because when we first talked about this movie, I think we both were essentially like, yeah, Scott's got some problems, but like, once the movie gets going, he's all right. It's like, nah, this is what happens with these fucking movies, guys. Like, the more that you keep looking into it, it just <laughs> continues to unravel. Yeah. It's not like in a good movie, but many of which we've watched lately and lead up to the Academy Awards, where it's like, you can kind of, um see how everything's being built up in, in, in service of, like, some core theme or um, in, in service of a central character, and how, like, the little details feed into other little details in a way that's really coherent and impressive. Here, it's, like, the opposite. Like, as soon as you start thinking about it a little bit, it begins to crumble. This movie is really bad, guys. Well, okay, th th <laughs> like, this... <laughs> Someone just has to, like, I'll tell if that's an actual quote if you're, like, being pranked. It's like, no, it, it's pretty much one for one says, I'm pretty sure the whole world's about to be destroyed based on what he said, but oh well, the world doesn't make much sense. Yeah. yeah. Just don't worry like, about it. Cool, yeah. bro. Okay. That's, that's <sighs> that, you know? I bet we'll find out in future movies that he basically pulled a Michelle Pfeiffer or a Janet and just didn't tell anyone about this. Mm. Yeah, and well, then, like it comes up in the middle of to talk to each other. comes up in the middle of an action scene or something where they're like, "It's Kang," and then he goes, "Kang, we fought Kang." And he'd be like, uh, "You did," and he'd be like, "In the quantum what? realm." Why didn't you tell anybody? You he's like, that... "Been a little busy." While he shoots someone with a ray gun. Whoa, that just that, happened. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know he could do that. Stem... Whoa, I... they fly now. Do you think that this problem stems from the fact that the writers don't get to talk to each other, and so, like, they can't even really start to think about where to position their characters going forward? Start to wonder on you. To the is it that they or don't talk to each other, like, or is it they're literally not allowed to? Like, not allowed to. <laughs> it's against yeah. the rules. I just, maybe it's just this element of there's just some, some understood culture of writing when it comes to these movies, that it just doesn't fucking matter. Well, because you get in, you get yours, you maybe get to write another Marvel movie, and then that's probably going to be it. No one, none of this stuff feels to me like it was anyone's baby. No. None of this feels like any no. of the writers or the people who created it have any actual investment in any of this. It's just, a, it's just a job for them, and then they move on, and it doesn't matter. Which is fascinating. You'd think that especially if you're going to get to write, like, an Avengers movie, that that would be so fucking cool. That that would be, like, a really exciting opportunity. Not just from a career standpoint, but in terms of, um... That's like some wish fulfillment right there, getting to write like yeah. a movie with all of these comic book characters that you remember as a kid that you loved, and having them clash. And, you know, like a level of, oh man, look at all of the work that the writers did before me that they've now handed to me that I can move forward with. But you're right, yeah, but it seems this like is it their is just thing, a not job. Mine. Mm, this is yeah. just what I'm doing to pay the bills until I could maybe get a oh, project that I actually bills. care about, you know? <laughs> yeah. Probably getting paid a lot of money for this. It doesn't, no, no, there's no care in this there's no like maybe it's rendered or artistry you know? i think ant-man and the lost quantum mania has kind of highlighted it maybe like the method that marvel you we've been saying this for a while at this point but like the method marvel uses to make movies seems pretty incompatible with just consistently delivering good stories mm -hmm. it's um it, it it doesn't as long as people seem to it makes it, it it's guaranteed to make a lot of money or enough money and it's not even supposed like it's not even supposed to be really good, so it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be great. No one really cares if it's great anymore. It's fine. It's the fast food of movies. It's just a paycheck and a job. These characters are just like they're, they're just basic stuff. We don't have to do anything special or care about it, and it'll be fine. And I'll get paid, and I'll move on to my project because the MCU is the fast food of movies now. And... This is very much the fast food of movies. Like, I would, f I would imagine that you would have a better shot of like making something that would be cool if you went over to fucking DC, like, than you would here. Oh yeah, yeah. Because at the very least, mm -hmm. they'd like give you a little bit more. I, I can't remember what stream it was on that we were talking about it. That someone brought it up that um apparently Tim Burton is never going to work with like uh, Disney ever again after Dumbo. Oh yeah, we talked about that on your uh, stream with the Deep Lore. Yeah. 
That's right. Yeah. Um, where he talked afterward about how the pr it was like a really shitty experience because it was so micromanaged. Like it was barely the it was barely as if he was making his own film there. Mm. And I was on like the Disney remakes, which aren't working on as condensed timelines and schedules and and like needing to come out at, at specific times. Obviously, they need to come out at specific times to make, you know, money, like, depending on which month they're in. But, like, not to the same extent as Marvel needs to be tightly coordinated. I can imagine that, like, whatever experience he had making that would be a hell of a lot harder, like, in Marvel. And, and more stifling. Like, where is the... Like, how, how does one actually meaningfully distinguish between, like, any of the films that we've had in Phase 4 and this being the continuation of Phase 4? Like, what would you be pointing to immediately as, like... Man, this is what, like, Shang-Chi had that Ant-Man didn't, or vice versa. I'm curious if they only get away with it, things like Shang-Chi, Black Widow, and, um, uh, I was about to say, Eternals is the one that I'd be curious about, because I have to see it before I can figure out which one it falls into, but the idea that, and some people already highlighted, that our top three, well, bottom three of the MCU are a Thor film, a Doctor Strange film, and an Ant-Man film, when you look at it, it's like Doctor Strange is all about crazy nonsense magic, or it's like crazy nonsense as Guardian Space, like it's it's all up in the air as to exactly how anything works, and, and that that's all about a wish being granted, which is funny considering my favorite one of my favorite movies anyway of 2022 was all about a wish being granted. But um, true. and then you have uh, Ant Man, which is like quantum, 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 and it's like, well, I guess these films, you know, they they didn't have a good start in terms of making sense. And it's Black just like, Widow, though? well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, surely Black Widow and Shang Chi films are about like grounded uh, people who just like are really good at fighting. And it's like, no, those two still scratched at that tier. Like I said, it's a special tier, the 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 one that belongs to those three. But like right underneath that tier, Black Widow is a part of it with Captain Marvel yeah. and some others. Where it's like, the only reason they haven't joined them is because the universe doesn't crack into tiny, tiny pieces as much. Because, you know, it's like, well, how could they do that in Black Widow? And it's like, yeah, they can't really. The most, the most damage they can do is to the world of Earth, is what I mean. It's like, they couldn't get much past the planet. It's like, oh, well, that's good. <laughs> but, Lucky. but Lucky of course, the yeah, world. Doctor Strange, uh, Thor, and, and Ant-Man are all, like, catastrophic in terms of world building. And then they have all the same problems with um, character building, plot lines, all the same shit, all the tone. Jesus Christ, Love and Thunder takes the cake for tone, probably, though, doesn't it? Oh, that yeah. is probably the most tonally Ooh. incoherent film I've ever seen in my life. Yes, I think you're right. I'm trying it to think be. of what would give it like a run for its money. Well, because balancing comedy and drama is really hard, but when you do it well, I recently for the first time watched In Bruges. I was like, damn, that right. film is like a really interesting and great blend of comedy and drama. Mm. And it's, it's like a walking class. a tightrope. But when it, yeah, it, it is one of the best examples. Uh, so was Seven Psychopaths had drama as well. That was like another one that I found really cool JoJo in terms was... of tone. Well, I mean, that's what's well, so weird it's... about both JoJo about... and Thor Love and Thunder. Thor. It was directed by the same guy. Yep. But one of them was a project that he was probably passionate about. Yeah, one is, and the, one is like one of the best balances of tone, and the other was probably the worst. And he did both of them. But the thing is, is that how can you meaningfully balance tone when you don't even know what your story is? And when you probably yeah, have mandates care. about needing to get laughs, I wouldn't be surprised if there are, like, mandates about you need to have a joke every two minutes. Because these films, like, don't give you the extremes that, that storytelling can provide you of extreme highs and lows emotionally. It's all very flat. It's, um, it's never going to be too sad for too long. No. Definitely. Never going to be too anything for too long, typically speaking. Yeah. And then you end up with this sludge, a very sludgy experience that nobody will remember. No, yeah. I mean, like, who's going to be... Who, who in, like, a year is going to go, man, I really want to re-watch Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania in the same way that people will just occasionally go, I want to watch Iron Man, or, like, I want to watch Avengers, or I want to yeah. watch Guardians. Yep. I think people Speaking will of... remember Quantumania as being part of fucking Phase 4. It'll be like, oh, well, that was phase uh, five. Like, we're, still yeah. in, we're still in phase well, I four. Ask. I had phase to ask. Phase four yeah, like, is continuing. When we watched it, I asked, "Is this phase five? And I was so, like, "Yeah, it was." It's like, I because I, I didn't know what was the line. It's arbitrary. They just because nothing's changed about the way that they make their fucking movies, yeah. and nothing will change. Like things seem to be slowing down now. But when are we going to see the results of that? In twenty twenty five, maybe. Like at the oh, earliest. Yeah. 
And I think it's safe to say, like, as much as this isn't entirely accurate, it's close enough that each of the phases were marked by Avengers movies. It felt like the mm -hmm. borderline, at least, is highlighted in that way. But this time it was like, Wakanda forever to Ant-Man. You're like, okay. All right, <laughs> was there even enough. an element that was unified between those two movies at all? Did it, was it any? Could you watch those two movies without knowing what the MCU is and think that they're in the same universe? Well, no, why, does really. why does Black Panther seem like, ah, yes, this is a logical conclusion to all of the plot threads that have been established in Phase 4. It's like, it kind of has nothing to do with anything else that happened in Phase 4. No, and I guess they'd be no, like, no. well, Ant-Man was about Kang. It's like, I guess, but like, I don't know. It just seems... I mean, I'm somebody pointed out in chat, but we talked about it before, this was going to be part of Phase 4. All of the movies, like these ones were, they changed yeah. their mind, though, because Phase 4 had a bad reception, and they fucking they just know needed it. needed a rebrand, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not working. Like the beginning of no. this one is the worst received one, like critically, I think. Uh, I seventy think so, percent yeah. box office drop. Because what is the word of mouth on this movie? Who's going to be like, man, you got to see Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania? <laughs> no one, absolutely no one. And related the to visuals. that, so this Go is the it. first. Uh, this is the first MCU movie I had seen in the theater since I believe Endgame. So. So okay. when I was watching the movie and, you know, felt dead inside and the audience <laughs> felt pretty dead inside and then, you know, the credits roll and no one gets up to leave. I'm like, oh, right. I forgot. That's a thing that we do in these <laughs> movies. We sit here. Everyone sits there. Everyone pulls out their phones. And then as soon as the post credit scene starts, I swear to God, there was more energy and hype in the theater than at any point in the movie itself. And I just wanted to die. I was like, oh, my God. They were just they like as soon as I think it's maybe the second post credit scene that Loki shows up and the guy next to me went, yes! And I hadn't heard him make a single sound <laughs> during the entire movie. And I was like, Jesus Christ. And then, of course, because we sat through the entire credits, now everybody's leaving and it's just dead silent. And it's so surreal. I just, uh, it was one of the no more genuinely depressing theater experiences I've had in a while. You've highlighted what is pretty a pretty fundamental problem with Marvel and the way that audiences perceive Marvel movies. Nobody really cares about the story that they're going to watch. It's always about what's next. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. always about what it's setting up, where it could be going, that... what new character will show up in the post credit scene and yeah. maybe show up in another movie. I felt that more viscerally than I had ever before. Mm. <laughs> Not fun. I'm, I'm on this, um, I'm, as of five hours ago, there was this Hollywood Reporter article by Pamela McClintock in Aaron Couch, and it says here that Marvel Studios' Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is facing stormy times of the weekend box office where it could tumble 71.6% yeah, to 30 million earlier. yeah to 30 million plus in its sophomore outing and it says here you'd have mentioned Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is the closest to uh superhero films that dropped at 69.1% um but it also says here that um it's looking like uh Cocaine Bear is definitely going to be stealing a lot of money from it, uh, <laughs> particularly from uh, young adults. Uh, so it, it's just hard to think that the the big MCU movie on its uh, it, it's going to be losing a lot of money potentially to a cocaine bear movie. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it says the poor word of mouth is clearly hurting the film and. Oh, yeah, that's the that's always hit Marvel course. movies now because there's nothing to spread. Why would anyone go see these? What do you say? This. Point. Like Top Gun Maverick and uh, Puss in Boots had some of the best word of mouth in recent years. Yes, and I think did. in my theater, they still have Puss in Boots. Like it's, has I think legs. it's still running. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's still going. Avatar's it still on. Yeah. Well, Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's maybe a slightly different case. But yeah. The. I'm just uh, you look up the you look up each of these movies in Google and you check like the stories and stuff the top stories on them and it's just like two different clearly just two different entire vibes that you get. Um, we haven't finished the film by the way. <laughs> oh, wait, we right. didn't. No, oh, I thought we, we didn't. Did. <laughs> no, we got. Uh, we still got the. Well, they have the stuff, little right? cake, and then the final joke of the movie is that the cake is gross. He eats the cake, and he's like, ew, gross cake. And yeah. then we get our first after credit scene, and it's incredible. The incomparable Jonathan Majors comes out as a billion different characters, and he starts putting on little funny voices for each of them, and it was, it was funny. Uh, I think it was supposed to be serious, though. 
Yeah, but then but they had this one guy in the foreground go like. <laughs> well, that was really weird. It was <laughs> weird. Um, they were all kind of weird to me. I think. I think. Yeah. Like, I, I, I need to see the scene again. But you had. Um, uh, I, I know Gary was saying one of them. They're from the comics. They're all references. They're all like different versions of him. I think he said that one of them is Rama Tut, who went like back in time to rule Egypt. I think that's supposed right. to be who that one is. I can't. I'm paraphrasing or para quoting whatever. By like hell, yeah. I don't even know. It just. It was just all silly to me. And the obvious comparison that everyone makes is this is written by someone from Rick and Morty. And in Rick and Morty, there's a funny joke about how there's a council of Ricks and they all have stupid haircuts. That's like right. what makes them different. And it just is so impossible to not be like, this is just the council of Ricks. <laughs> <laughs> now it's the council of Kangs. And they're all like, it's like a big stadium of like a council of all of them. But it's just like, oh, uh, I don't know, I man. That's... And they're all tiny and wacky. Yes. Kang shows up, he gets beaten. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? And apparently they're the ones that did the banishing, and they're upset now yeah, because... Yeah, so literally, it is Rick and Morty. The Kang that we saw in this movie was the, the Rickest Rick. Yeah. He was the, the Kangest Kang. <laughs> the Kangest Kang. <laughs> oh, man. And, and you know, they're, like, outraged that someone killed a Kang. And it's like, it's easy to kill a Kang. The yeah, fucking weird-ass creatures that they spawned next to that he... You know, crash landed next to could have killed him if he didn't have a gun. He's a regular guy. He needs he's a suit. just a regular Otherwise, guy. Otherwise, he's a regular dude. And what if that little creature had split into two and eaten him? Would they have been like, "Wow, that little creature ate him. It's time for us to make a move. Like, yeah. <laughs> we need to do something. To make a move on the on the little quantum realm <laughs> splitting creature." Yeah, they said like an army of cags to go get that one creature, and they <laughs> like, all. Pop out of the portals going, ha ha, yeah, woo! Yeah. And, <laughs> with, with, and it's like a British one, and a German one, and an American one, an Australian one. It'll be great. That's the Council of Modocs you, you got mixed up. Yeah, and that's, by the way, that, you know, it's, it feels weird to, like, by the time we acknowledge, it's like, that's it for Modoc. He's out. That's it for yeah. Yeah. all of yeah. Modoc's content is done. And I oh, doubt you're going to get... pull the MODOK from a different multiverse or something. I suppose that's true, but uh, the primary iteration of Mo the, this MCU's MODOK, that was that. The MODOKist MODOK. Amazing. That's, um, that's it, yeah. And then one last scene to address, and it is set in somewhere like the 1800s-ish or something, and uh, Mobius and Loki are watching a guy... Who looks just like Kang. Morbius? No, no, Mobius. No, Mobius. <laughs> what? Owen Wilson. Yep. Yep. It's Owen, Mobin time. Owen Mobius. Oh, and, wow. And they're they're wow. watching a guy who looks like Kang explain some device that he's made. And then Owen Wilson's like, you made Kang seem all scary. Like, this guy seems pretty normal. And then, like, the camera, like, tightens up and look. And he's like, no. This man is scary. Or something like that. And then it hits the yeah. credits again. <laughs> The other guy is called Victor Timely. I think that's like a what the Victor fuck Timely. Ever. Well, well <laughs> no, either way, watch, yeah. Make sure to watch Loki, Loki season two. Season two on Disney Plus. Yeah, continue. because nothing will be of any consequence from anything that you watch. But fuck it, whatever. It's all just. But next time, for real, uh, it will be consequential. I, it's I, all of the promise. It's, it's all of the bad i'm trying to think of how i'm uh, how this analogy works it's all of the bad results of hedonism without any of the satisfaction of the moment <laughs> that's a good way of thinking I'd... about it if they're so angry can, about kang dying maybe next time they shouldn't have banished him to the floom realm i agree <laughs> that's what we said last week is like why if he was such a big fucking deal then just shoot him in the head and be done with it or yeah. if you don't, don't want him to him die to realms in then... a spaceship yeah, but like they're angry that he's dead. It's like, so why'd you send him to the fucking quantum realm? What was the, <laughs> what's the idea? Put him in a box. Put him in a concrete box and take away his suit, and then just like keep him around, or put him in suspended animation or some space sci-fi bullshit. Oh, it's mm. so dumb. It hurts. Um, but that's it. That is actually it. There's no more. That's Yay! It. Incredible. That's amazing. At least there's no more for now. Uh, that is, as as much as they wanted to annoy us for I'm now. So numb. I think we'll be fine for more Marvel stuff for a little bit, because next is Guardians, right? Or is it uh, Yes. 
Uh, as far uh, as I know, I think it's either Guardians or Secret Invasion. I think. It's well, Guardians has the best chance of being with Wild guys. Okay. Being yeah, movie. Pretty, oh yeah. So. Oh. Yeah, there's that. But unfortunately, oh. Star Wars has reared its ugly ass head. It's uh, back. Thank goodness. Thank, thank goodness Mando we'll have more of the Mandalorian. Oh, God, that's a few days away. Yep, we got Mando <laughs> on the way, everybody. Excitement. <laughs> oh, no. We're going to see it's all gonna be, the cameos. It's gonna Baby be Yoda really is back. It's going to be really weird seeing Pedro Pascal at the same time in The Last of Us and then Mando. That's yep. going to be a cultural clash, I guess. Lack of a better word. Boba's confirmed for Mando season three. Okay. Yay! Get them all in. Get them all. Oh, get do Luke you hear in them there. teased? Do you hear them? Get, get every character you could ever get in there. We've got to get them all. Get Rancor. Get him. Baby get Rancor. Mr. Rancor. They're really, really complex creatures. They are emotional. <sighs> hmm. hmm. Make it end. Um, job security. <laughs> for us I mean I, I I don't mind covering all kinds of older shit but uh, I do yeah. have an interest in keeping track of because this has gotten very interesting in terms of them actually losing engagement and money now and That's like the true, box yeah. office drop offs getting bigger and bigger because we're watching it at one of the biggest train wrecks in slow motion in history <laughs> it's a good, it's a good it's analogy yeah. this is no joke like it takes this I long remember. to explain how horrifically awful all of the writing is. This is rare, and it keeps happening. You can't do this with every film. People say that all the time. Like, oh, you can do this with every film. I like, can't. I can't fucking do this to Tar. You can't do it. No, you can't. <laughs> can't come up with this many contradictions in Tar. <laughs> like, it's impossible. It's DCU, it's gonna happen. Ugh. Cocaine beer probably doesn't have anywhere near these kinds of problems. Oh, I'm looking forward probably to watching that. Fun. That's probably going to be fun. Want to yeah. go actually see Cocaine Bear? Well, I mean, it's on streaming. Support, it's pretty good right? premise. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure it's on streaming. If it keeps and happening, it's not that rare. No, making... this is still rare as far as I'm concerned. To get this kind of writing is insanely hard. You have to be such yeah, a yeah. You only ever get a couple of these. Screw up. Yeah, it's just consistently Cause... in this venue. Yeah. Yeah, just because it happened. Three times in the last few years doesn't mean it's common yet. <laughs> like, <laughs> we have to consider all of time, okay? Or at I least all the, of time more, where movies are being written. The more concerning thing, because there's always, you know, you've always got more like um, small scale dramas and comedies and stuff like that all over the place. I guess it would be more so that if you're looking at like your big summer blockbuster movies, the quality of the writing, because Marvel is dominant in that sphere and plus other, like, big franchises has been deteriorating a bit. Uh, just a tad. Yeah, and I think that at Ooh, one point we probably will get a movie in the MCU that's just fine, and we'll be like, holy fuck. It'll be, Whoa. it'll be inevitable, right? Like, it's just, it's, you know. It'll it's, be like, uh, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. It's like, oh my god, that was actually pretty okay. Like, that was, mm. wow. You know, compared to everything else in the DCEU, it was certainly a breath of fresh air. Still waiting for a time where we get like a scene in one of these modern MCU movies that does a thing where I just go like, "Oh, that's character," and it wasn't said. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we had like what or maybe two examples in all of the Ant Man movie. It's like that's so bad when that's like the primary thing I love about film, just uh, absorbing so much storytelling without just some guy telling me all of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a memory store Ugh. or a. Uh, or a neural fucking link. Or a memory link. machine. Yeah. yeah a memory, uh, <laughs> memory spaceship. There's this one, one uh, comment in the chat. I thought Hawkeye wasn't catastrophic. <laughs> no, didn't watch it, it reminds yeah. me of the I like gruel from uh, Pocahontas. <laughs> <laughs> that is the oh, greatest man. compliment you can pay to anything in the uh, phase four. It wasn't catastrophic. That wasn't, that wasn't catastrophic. <laughs> You know, statistically, it probably add was layer of universes. That's pretty good. So I don't know if you can it. add more at this point. Oh, don't tempt them. I guess we were constantly thinking about um, like going bigger and bigger and bigger with multiverses and all that sort of thing, and we never considered. Oh yeah, that's right. I can just go smaller, smaller, smaller with the quantum verse <laughs> and everything. Which is oh. ironic because they go smaller, but then they go also bigger at the same time. Hell yeah. Really? 
And they have this portals everywhere, a... and his machine is a multiversal traveling machine. Just like, you don't even... English isn't has a point, does it? It's just all words. Oh, that's good writing. Uh, reject MCU, celebrate Elden Ring's birthday. Aw, happy birthday, Elden <laughs> Ring. Who's a good boy? So, uh, if, if everyone's all right with it, we can start uh, dealing with the super chats that came in from uh, as early as our first stream on this, and we'll just go chronologically. God, right. fine. Probably go for a, up to a five-hour stream, I would say, and then we'll catch the rest on a catch-up. So, um, sure. mad. if everyone can make it, sweet. <clears throat> the first one says, Modoc cast, which is still applicable, actually. True. Um, Very true. Now, how am I supposed to know who is who? Yeah, that was a problem in the previous one. You have to go by the <laughs> rings, I guess. The rings were the only Funny, way. Though. I loved when Modoc said, it's Modoc in time, and modoc all over the unfinished CGI. Truly an Ant-Man of all time. It, yes, it sure was. Actually, yes. It's one of the Ant-Men of all time. Uh, no way I was going to watch this movie. Thank goodness for EFAP. Also, hi, Rags. Hello! We were promised Modoc's ass. Um, <laughs> listen, if 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 one of the guys here posts it in the uh, in the chat, I'll I'll put it on screen for you. Okay, I'm gonna go hunting for ass. Really on you. Uh, no way. Oh wait, yeah. Um, also, calling it now, the box office will drop more than seventy percent next weekend. I don't see it making more hey. than Last Ant Man. Oh, look at you. Good job, man. Ooh, well, Mister Taco, about it. Good job. You can. You get some EFAP points. No pooch you can points. Spend in the Discord. Well, I think it's it's bigger than me. You know, All this right. time it's really. Oh no! Stop. Did both of you? <laughs> both I won. of you. I got there first. Oh no! I'm gonna choose Why? metals. Why? <clears throat> How could you? No doc, everybody. So me. Cruel. Wait, hang on while I get his ass ready. In theory, <clears throat> he's got long on the other side of there. Everyone in the chat, get your asses ready. Here comes. Here comes no. the modic. Uh, it, that's what I want. There we go. This is a moment in the movie. I'm just gonna let this sit for a little bit. Maybe a moment of silence for Modoc. <laughs> the bootay. Rip. Haha, <laughs> what a joke, even though he saved the universe. The multiverse. Sorry. Didn't mean to undersell it. Look at it. I want you to look at it. <laughs> uh, I mean, you could say this represents the state of Marvel, I guess. <laughs> you could. You could say that. Those poor uh. VFX artists. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, because I think that was something that was um, that was in an article that came out after the last stream that... um. Apparently, um, Black Panther Wakanda Forever was prioritized um, in the visual effects pipeline. And so with Ant-Man, they had less resources, less people, and less time to get it done. I think. Uh, look at how that turned out. Oh Ooh. yeah, it turned out f***ing brilliantly. Laziest post credit scene ever. I'm assuming they're referring to the... Um... Oh yeah, post credit would be the, the Loki one. Yeah, that's just that's probably just a snippet of a scene from a scene season two. from the actual, yeah. <laughs> Why are you using Mr. Electric as your PSP, uh, PFP? You thought you were breaking down Ant-Man. Yeah, there are a lot of comparisons to the villain of Shark Boy and Lava Girl have been made. Seems fair. Um, but no, we, we had all Modocs. Could you believe it? And we still have all Modocs. Modoc. All Modocs all the time. Can't believe you haven't read Amazing Fantasy 50. I know that meme. I'm familiar with that meme. And uh, Of course, being a true nerd, I have read it. Uh, totally, 100%. Yes. Definitely. Uh, the power of Modoc was too right. strong. If that just means us, he, he Modoc'd all over us, and we are Modoc in response, yeah. Modoc. Modoc is reborn. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a new take on Modoc. Hopefully it'll become everyone's favorites. Ah, oh, man. Another, yet another comic book character that was just shat all over. I mean, I don't give a, I don't, I don't care myself. But you think about all those fans of the comics and everything, and this is what they they do. <laughs> the thing about it is, I guess, is the they shouldn't be surprised that someone like Modok gets completely shot on when they'll shit on, you know, Captain Marvel got obliterated. 
uh, into a brand new mm. sort of thing that they wanted to do. In the same vein that what I'm trying to say is like even main heroes get it, so of course side villains will get it. Um, <laughs> who's your favorite between Cassie, Riri, and America? Oh. Oh, god damn it. Probably, it, could, it might actually be America, I think, out of the three of those. Because Riri does that insane thing where she nearly kills all those police uh, in that sequence. Oh, because I, I was sitting there and I'm like, Riri wasn't like, oh yeah, and then. And then, and then Cassie's right. an she asshole. Police are here to rescue you. But America, I mean, she's just kind of like annoying. She doesn't, she's not that bad. Uh, well, she's pretty hapless, I guess. Yeah. It's just sort of getting thrust from one scenario to another. Oh, I guess America, but... Um, WTF, yo. I think this was just them dealing with our EFPs at the time. <laughs> yo. Um, so, like I was saying, I definitely wasn't planning to watch Ant-Man 3, so thank goodness for EFAP. Hi, Rags. Well, Hello! What these have turned into is the... Like, we start with, like, you won't believe this, and then... We just tell you what happened in the movie. That's it. Because it's just insane. Always. Fucking insane. It is. We're just in that uh, we're just in that realm of absurdity right now. We're just uh, nothing means anything. Nothing yeah. means anything. Oh, and that's true from uh, James said America's willing to let herself be killed at the end to stop Wanda. Like, yeah. That, you know, that's that's a slight boon to a character, I guess. Yeah, that's something. Um they make a forget her parents are reachable randomly though. So I don't know. <laughs> uh hello all. We can learn a lot from ants. Yes, yeah. yeah. Especially stage two technocratic society ants, okay. <laughs> Lord Longbong uh, of Mewlington Abbey. Is there any good okay. chance for Kong Fab of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'd be a movie fab for the ages. PS how well Ragsies scritches for the good boy. Oh, thanks much. Actually, that is a good that idea. In... The long con that is a pretty neat concept. idea. Yeah, that's a neat idea. I actually haven't idea. heard that in a long time. I feel nostalgic. Oh well, <laughs> I I don't believe for a second that the long conga won't happen. It'll definitely happen. My curiosity at this point will be once it's released, what will this poor person do? What will they? What will they? How will they move on in life? They must have another Kong of long of some sort to to want. Another Kong of long? I is that even possible? This is all uh, they need in their life, and then they can just retire. Yeah. Go live on a farm, raise sheep. Where were you raising sheep? On a farm. Oh, Where no. else? Oh, God, he's coming back. He's coming back, boys. <laughs> coming back. <laughs> it'll be less. It'll probably be less cringe though. So it won't be as funny. And people will think that it's all the same, and it'll be like, nope, he was not cringe here. But he was cringe before. Yeah. Yeah. I think after all this time, the actor is like, wait, again? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll take the paycheck. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Oh, dude, but... he, he's like Michael Shannon. Would be the kind of person who'd be like, "What the fuck's even happening?" And it's like, <laughs> "No idea." But you're back now, and he's like, "Cool, cool." And then he talks yeah. to the guy who plays fucking Modok, and he's like, "Yeah, I don't know, man. I I was in one of the <laughs> the older Ant Man ones, and I'm back too." <laughs> <laughs> but I had a but I had a big face or something. I don't. And he's like, "Oh, are you in this new Flash thing?" He's like, "No, no, no, the Marvel one." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, the Marvel one." He's like, "No, you <laughs> wait. <laughs> which one is which were you in?" And he's like, "The one with the small guy that goes big and stuff." And he's like, "Oh, I got the fast guy one." He's like, "Oh, the fast guy one." Yeah, God, fast guy. I love fast guy. Fast guy's cool. <laughs> uh, kick J. Oh, cool. Well, J was kicked. There you go. Works out perfectly. Laziest post credit scene ever. Oh, I guess two people felt that way. Uh, this one just says Mo Cuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, start with basic lines, then see other players' interpretations. This could be fun. Everyone. <laughs> EFAP quotes out of context have returned, even though this technically wasn't on EFAP. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I, I always yeah, like Wasn't that on one of my quotes. drunk streams? Possibly, yes. Pretty yeah, sure it sounds like a gothic phone thing, yeah. It is It is a gothic phone thing. It's when that game was new, and then we oh. memed it to hell. It was pretty funny. Good times. Uh, hello, Muldock, Ragdock, Fringdock, Jdoc, Capital Modoc, and J. Much love to all here. Wow, J got two hellos. What's that about? Yeah, what and I got none. Mm. I see how it is. Oh, I'll say hi, though. Hello. Hello to oh, you. Oh, hey, huh? what's up? Moby Doc. Moby Doc. 
Um, how did you guys learn critical thinking? I find myself only repeating the opinions of people I respect, and I'd like to be able to form my own opinions that go deeper than the surface level. Um, so... I am sure that there are many, many books and resources that will, like, run through the process of critical thinking, I would imagine, right? But where did you learn it, Fringy? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I usually I end up saying I had a whole bunch of influences kind of... that would have helped me out. Uh, primarily, at one point, that moved me from, like, younger teenage years to older teenage years, and really, I don't know, that seems to be where I started getting much better at it. From my point of view, it would have been listening to loads of debates. I loved listening to all kinds of debates, and uh, specifically Christopher Hitchens' ones. Those were very impactful. And um, yeah. I don't know, it, like it's it's kind of hard to say exactly what any individual should do because I would probably recommend books, and it's like, what well, ones did you read? And I'd be like, uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. And then it's I don't even know what I mean, a class looks like to teach is a pretty it. Good meme. Like, that's a pretty good one. If you just, like, read about the Socratic method, that'll probably help out a bunch. Mm. Good questions seems to be the fundamental. If you can ask good questions, you're in a, you're in a good place. Yeah, yeah, always asking yourself, why do you believe the things that you believe? Can you back you up? You ask yourself that a lot, yeah. Can you, if, if, can you, like, back up anything that you believe? Can you explain that to somebody else in a way that's coherent, in a way that they could understand and apply themselves? Yeah. If you How good are then... you people that what you think is correct i met mauler like and then he showed me how bad everything is <laughs> oh i guess you'd want to be trying to apply it more broadly <laughs> to uh to life right in general not yeah, just, yeah. Not just <laughs> find someone that shows you how bad everything is there you go no, um I think it was at some point just started looking at things and was like i think this makes a lot of sense and then just like oh Maybe just start thinking about it. Make your own, do your own research. Like, don't take everything for word, you know? Just yeah, and keep maybe... thinking about, I guess, the foundations for what everything comes from, and then the foundations yeah. of those yeah. things, and then so on. And uh... Yeah, like, the more that you can boil it down to some fundamentals, because I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, Socrates' whole perspective was people will say something, and then if you ask them why, they can't give you an answer. Or maybe they can give you one answer, and then you ask them again, and then that's the end. <laughs> like that's the end of the, the uh, the the like conversation tree. Yeah, yeah. Also, you, you, be careful with online stuff. I guess. I mean, it's on on one hand, it's like it's like really good. You can look everything up, but on the, the other hand, you probably need to look twice, or maybe maybe three times, to see if it's actually true what's been said. I don't know, man. I just apply that to all of life. I mean, yeah, I mean, just like when you, when you want to check things out, it's like, hey, I want to know more about this. But then just don't take one source, but maybe cross-reference and, and stuff like that and see if that's, there's any, mm. any truth to that, if it makes sense. Or maybe just take the one source and start asking questions like, hey, what about what, what, what if this happens? Will that apply? And then maybe just go from there. Yeah, someone in chat said, get those first principle juices flowing. Yeah. Right. Uh, green I mean, tools, I'm always correct. I guess the, the extra addition would be, I don't know, I guess if you think about stuff for long enough, you probably get better at thinking about stuff. Yeah. 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 That's, a, that's another one. <clears throat> Greetings, your longness. King Mauler of EFAP. I'm here to humbly demand an unbridled slash critique of the Iron Giant. Also, kick Frongold. Oof. Ooh. Damn. Dang. Damn wow. it. Damn them, damn, Humbly damn, demand. damn. I, uh, I, I mean, maybe, maybe someday I could see myself making something for Iron Giant. Don't know when. Don't know exactly what it would be. Maybe someday. I think Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will give a bigger bump to the Marvel movie afterwards, but if they don't significantly improve, I don't see it having much impact. Um, it's going to be a weird one. I I'm very curious to see what happens with it. I'm curious to see what it's going to be, and I'm curious to see what the reaction is overall. Imagine it like has a significantly stronger, and by that I mean lesser drop off at the at the box office, as if and and Marvel is just not going to be able to figure that out. Why? Why is this happening? And be like, because movies suck, man. <laughs> Pretty simple. Uh, welcome back, Jay. Also, hi, Fringy. Jay. Hey. Jay would say hi. 
I did not care for Ant Movie. It insists upon itself. Um, I don't know if it insists <laughs> upon itself, actually. Um, I mean, Are maybe a little. On itself? Well, with the whole like th th that that opening's pretty insistent that Ant Man has lost his way and he needs to start helping people again. He needs to stop looking the other way, and it's like, where the fuck is this coming from? Why are you insisting that this is the the reality of the situation when it totally isn't at all. Right, I, I gotcha. And then, like, mm. they repeat that message a couple of times and at the end of the film, he's just like, so I did the look the other way. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, a, whatever, yeah. It's goof. The goof. In the end, I learned, just don't worry about it. It's like, no. <laughs> I learned to stop caring. Uh, epic seeing Jay on. Well, uh, you're gonna end up seeing a little more of of Star Wars pain to come, and you might just see Jay popping on them as well. Big Star Wars fan. Oh yes, as are we all. Every as are year. we all. Love it. Just watch the Twitch Trinity of BCHS. BCHS? BC, I, mm, bitches, no. I guess? Oh, Trinity of Bitches, of course. The famous oh. quote. The Trinity of Bitches. It nearly killed me. In better news, my wife gave me a pass to show her any movie, so tonight we're watching Fellowship. Hey. Remember to, uh... to teach her how to feel about it, too. <laughs> yes. You cannot allow her to not like that. <laughs> you, like, you, I, you cannot be married to someone or in a relationship with any human being who doesn't like The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. There are several forms of torture that can change a person's mind on these sorts of things. <laughs> Check the Wikipedia. Yeah, uh, if you have to, yeah, do what you have to. Hello, do everyone, you... and hi, Rags. Hi. What's up? How would you rank the characters from Andor, and how would you rate the show out of 10? Also, welcome back, Jay. I rank the characters. Um, how would I rank them? That's really tough. There, there's some that rise to the top, uh, particularly Luthen and mm -hmm. Mon Mothma, I think, are my personal top two. Uh... But you're never upset to see anybody. You never feel like, oh, it's these characters. It's the weak part. Um, there's, a, there's value to be taken from uh, pretty much all of the plots as they come together. Um, and, hmm, what would I rate it out of 10? Hmm, highly, but, hmm. I can't remember if we... Did we give a number? I don't think we did. Um, I don't know. I it's... One. I would probably like, like broadly seven? say, yeah, seven territory seems right. I could probably maybe be pushed yeah. a bit higher. I don't know. I'd have to remember though. I feel like I can be what pushed I higher say, than I can be pushed lower. I also show like that. I forget the name of the character, but whoever Andy Circus played, I really liked him as well. Yeah, he's oh, very yeah, 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 awesome. Kino. Kino, that's it. Kino Loy. Kino. Yeah. Good stuff. Look forward to seeing all three of them back in season two, hopefully. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm yeah, absolutely. I really, I'm. I'm very excited to see more. Yeah. Season two of that show. No, if so that, if that's, that's, if that's give it them for time, if that's it for good Star Wars after season two. Of, you're like, <laughs> all right, I'll take it and leave. I guess. You'll never uh, leave. Well, Can't leave in the sense back. of, uh, of, of like, Ever I get to have invested. it. It's mine now. Uh, right. Can't take the good and or seasons away, away from me. <laughs> Uh, more, this is a weird request, but I'd love to see EFAP react to the Walking With trilogy. It'd be fun to see you guys cover documentaries. I'd be on board with that. I just don't know how it would I would go be, exactly. yeah, I'd be down with that. Yeah, I don't think we've covered a documentary before. We watched, uh, I know we watched uh, Tara oh. the other day. That felt like a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I would totally be down to watch a documentary. Yeah, especially if it was... Uh, you know how sometimes in documentaries, I don't think this would apply to... Uh, walking with like dinosaurs and stuff but you know shows that are like history shows and they try to recreate sort of like scenes for entertainment effect e. and uh, and some of them can be really bad and you can <laughs> tell that they clearly reuse sets or just move everything around in the room so that it's a different room and stuff e. but so, sometimes that's amusing Hate Hank's socialism line, especially when Janet got lost as they tried to stop a USSR nuke in the first movie. Um, I don't, there's this thing though, I, I don't understand it at all. I, it was baffling. I, I, don't I don't get what they're trying to say. Yeah, it's really weird to actually figure out what, what Hank means, and then why would they have Hank of all people say it too? It's just like, okay. I guess, because, I guess yeah. they just made him say it because it's his ands. They're his ands. I think that's the only reason. 
Yeah, usually go, you, go, you try to go further sense. than that when you write character lines, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, they don't, so <laughs> shut up. It really seems to me like the writer is just kind of sympathetic to socialism and wanted to throw in a little thing. That's that's. It didn't seem like it was any more than that to me. It's I guess cringe. it's but it seems pretty awkward to be like, man, those ants have got it figured out, being basically blindly <laughs> subservient to their queen, throwing yeah. themselves into war to die. You know, the world of ants, Kurzgesagt, made some really interesting yeah. videos about how horrific the world of ants really is. Ants are pretty it's, fucked up. Guys, the insect well, realm is a nightmare dimension. In general. Yeah, the insect yes. realm is hell. It's hell on Do earth, think... and it's playing out every day. Do you think Han Hank's super smart ants like had a violent revolution and then overthrew their queen and killed her. Well, they had a French revolution, but for ants. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think they could have. I, mean, I don't. Why? I mean, you got to get the new ants somehow, right? Maybe. Oh, in like a, a bunch of like growth vats for ants. They don't need a queen anymore. Yeah, maybe. Oh, um, pretty smart. But what? We don't see it, but I would imagine the ants overthrew and destroyed all the robots and got rid of Kang. And they're looking around, they're like, well, this place is pretty decent technological wise. I guess we'll move in and sort everything out. And then, and then Tryhard is like, hey, you know, thanks for the help. Uh, we, you know, we'll see you guys around, I guess. Here's our number in case anything happens. And the ants are like, oh, no, we're, we're in charge now. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to need you to sort of find a use uh, because otherwise we'll be getting rid of you pretty quick. Like, uh, you guys are good workers, we I assume. Ants. We all gotta. We all have to. You know, if there's one thing that we as ants have learned is that we all have a part to play. Yeah. And you have a part to play in our world, <laughs> in the world of the ants. And then she's like, "I what if we don't be a part of your world?" And he's like, "That's the only world." So. Oh no. <laughs> That's the only world there is, buddy. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And then she's like, "And and people, please come back, ant man, ant ant." It's like, bye. And the portal closes. <laughs> We, we even mentioned how there's amazing technology in the Quantum Realm. Are you going to tell any of the heroes about this? Probably not. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, will you make a choice? You guys are must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the panels to prevent the apocalypse, or these disasters will continue. No. Sacrifice one of the people the here to prevent thing. the apocalypse. Okay. I mean, I guess so. Sorry, Mel. Sorry, I knew Metal. It. <laughs> Sorry, gonna, Metal. We'll build, and no, you can't. No, you we'll can't build kill yourself. That's against the rules. We will build a statue. It won't be big. We will build many. <laughs> yes, we'll build statues to you. You'll be in the history books. It'll be one of those statues that fits on a little shelf. They'll say that you volunteered <laughs> so that your friends could live. In memory Isn't it crazy? Of Nobody that guy. will ever know what Modok sacrificed for them. Where's uh? No, where's, no one's going to tell anybody about that. No. Yeah. Nobody no, will ever know. A clown. They'll be like, some clown died. That'll be it. He's a big head. Oh, I imagine they double Dude, down that... on the joke in another movie. And I could see they that tell happening. Someone, and they're like, what? Mm -hmm. This freak? It hit a big face? Gross. Yeah, no, I could see that being like a little a meme conversation where uh, Doc yeah. Strange is like, yeah, there was, uh, it was insane. There was this giant, you know, one-eyed creature attacking the city. And then, and then it maybe make, makes reference of how big his head is. And then Ant-Man's like, big head? Believe me, I, you, you won't believe what I saw down there. And he'd be like, ha yeah. he died for you. Just nice and awkward silence. Then we all throw tomatoes at, at Scott. Fuck you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, Scott. Fuck you, Scott. Also, for Muller and Fringy, will you stream the Metroid Prime remaster? Uh, I believe he is very interested in doing so, as am I, but we're both waiting for the physical versions, because oh. I don't want to just have it installed on my Switch. I want to have the little little plastic that proves that I'm a proud owner of such a game. Are they making a uh, physical one? Yeah. Nice. That's good, yeah. I said it on Metal's Forge, and I will say it here. I work good. at the theater, and most people who come out of Ant-Man look dead inside and silent. <laughs> silent. Uh, never have heard dead silence so much in a row. I can attest to that, yes. I was what are you supposed to inside. think, you know? You I got do. better, though. Who has the better design, Modok, Mr. Electric, or Probopass from Pokemon? Probopass? Oh, God. Well, uh... Or Mr. Electric? Mr. Electric is the meme that everyone's spreading around for, uh... From Shockboy and Lava Girl. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> Modok guy. Is... <laughs> from <laughs> Modok guy. Probopass. Yeah. 
Clearly, Provo Pass is the winner. Provo Pass is clearly, yeah. Yeah. It evolves from Nose Pass. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Um, oh. Is Modok woke? He's right. <laughs> no, he's dead. Uh, he's dead. <laughs> I, don't that. Uh, I don't think he's woke. <laughs> he's he's definitely not alive. I don't know if that answers the question or not. Uh, as, yeah, I don't know. That's just funny to think about. Is as a giant head people woke? <laughs> I don't know. Giant head people. Representation matters. Okay. Yes. He's physically disabled. I guess. Well, yeah, I, I guess so. He has his little floaty chair, though, and and he's doing okay until he died. He's very, he's he's empowered, kind of, but I don't know. No, he sleep. When the loss of us is over, will you guys do an EFAP for it, or are the TV minis the plan thus far? Hi, Rags. Hi. Can't imagine us doing I... an EFAP and the minis. Yeah, the minis, because surely when the last episode comes out. We're going to have our sort of retrospective yeah. on the entire uh, journey. And again, depending on how it ends, which is, you know, the concern deal. that a lot of us have, yep. we will see. And if it yep. ends... Do you think there'll be uh, any interesting videos to cover about it? Maybe. Mm, uh, hmm. I don't know. I don't know about videos. Um, yeah, I haven't really watched any I haven't videos seen any of myself. It, I'm just curious. So I'm going into these... Pretty much just the only, I guess the only um, exposure I've got to outside influence is just our own chat, pretty much, but. Uh, <laughs> Plenty of yeah. convos to be had, especially conversations that last there. episode There's... is going to be a big one for chatting, you know? Yeah, just sometimes it's just hard to believe that some people don't think the show's good, but oh well, they can be wrong. Uh, but, but remember how Tony had to build a suit with scraps and so much difficulty and now any rando 18-year-old can make nanotech in her backyard? Ugh. I remember. She, I just saw it. She <laughs> read journals or whatever. And she's pretty, yeah, she's pretty smart. Pretty smart girl. He also could, he also was only able to power it for a couple of minutes before his chess piece ran out. Yeah, well. Because he sucks. No. You better. From scroobs. Told it. <laughs> Hank Pym, first cuck of the MCU. Hank, more like Hank Cuckum Pim Cuckum. Oh, got him. <laughs> Fucking right. Mola, would you consider in your next Unbridled yelling in Welsh as a gag you could use? English is so basic. Welsh is a funny language. I mean, maybe. Very true. Mm. English is so basic. I think it would confuse yeah, everybody know... and they'll be like, you used Elvish? What the fuck? And be like, no, yeah, it's a different thing. Because Fringy has been ending a lot of the streams uh, in Welsh, so mm. I figure that you should be the one to kind of. <laughs> well, should, does that mean I should start doing Australian stuff? Like when I get Absolutely. really angry, I'm like, "This fucking yes. thing makes no sense. This piece of shit. Oh, put it on the barbie." That's what they say. That's that. That is uh, so yeah, immense. That, that was really intensely Australian. I thought Fringy said that for a second there. Take. Yeah, I had to check and make sure yeah. he was still. Uh, Dude, muted, when I was but, saying it, I was like, "Oh fuck!" I don't actually make it sound like Fringy saying this, so I had to stop uh, straight no. away. They knew it would uh, it would be a form of like, you know, putting words in his mouth. I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, I think having OC and AF on might be worth it. Stitch and Adam did all right, but it got real messy toward the end. You guys do really well at pinning them, dude. They want no. that's what they want. They want to go on shows and just be idiots. It's, uh, it's all right. We got stuff to do, <laughs> <laughs> motherfuckers. I'm busy, okay. Every time I'm not breaking down a story, I'm breaking down another story, and then I'm playing a game to set up for when we break down a video game, break down a thing, and then edit a thing, and it's like, not interested in the, like, drama flames. But, hey, more power to Sitch and Adam. They're funny lads, and uh, I've, I've seen plenty of clips. Uh, same for Eric July. It was, it's just, do whatever you fuckers want. It's, it's, it's funny. I will, I will agree with that. Um... I'm getting definitive answers out of them rather than getting bogged down in details. I just don't think I don't think they're dishonest or anything. Just really stupid. Wow, that's generous. <laughs> like especially after the uh, what we saw of OC's coverage of uh, my Doctor Strange video. Um, wish all people involved the best of luck. <laughs> Wonder if I'd need booze to watch this film. I suffered through it today with my nephew, and the answer is yes. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. So I think if you had booze, it's going to make you things even more difficult to understand. But I guess going from like zero to zero plus doesn't really change anything. Yeah, sometimes I, I 
you know, when people say like, oh, you need to be drunk or high to appreciate this because it's bad. It's like, I don't know if that would make it any better. <laughs> I would just make be more scarier. annoyed if I'm drunk <laughs> watching this because I could be enjoying my drunk doing something else. Uh, just now getting here, why are all of you Modoc? We need a reason what? now? Jeez. Racist. What kind of hatred is unacceptable. <laughs> Imagine meeting you here, small world. Oh, small world. Is this... small world. Okay, now. this film is trash, but I'll always hate Endgame the most. Um, I can see why you'd hate Endgame the yeah, most, yeah, but... Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Endgame perhaps had the most potential to be good, comparatively, you know? Like, if they didn't fuck it up, the high would have been a lot better. Like, whereas if they didn't fuck this up, I don't, I'm not even sure what, how this could have been good. If that makes any sense. <laughs> Give us a few years, we might have been able to write something. <laughs> I don't know. I suppose that's true. So, if there's a 50-foot Ape Kang, a Kang Kong, if you will, can I call him a Chunky Monkey? Oh, Tony Stank. <laughs> nice. Deep cut references in there. Also, high rags and cap, I'm ready Hello. for Devs 4. It's coming. Better tighten up. To be tighten coming. up your, your butt. It's coming. Ooh. Tighten up that butt. Every time Ant-Man jumps on a shoulder, it's a downward thrust. Oof. Nice. Also, deep cut reference. Mm. Look at all these references. Yeah, all, the, all the deep cuts. You guys have the Ref best alone. references. Incredible memory. <laughs> You've got the best references. That's like my favorite thing from uh, This Is the End. You guys ever see that movie? Yeah. Yep. Your no. references are just out of control. <laughs> Everybody knows that. You got the best references. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> uh, I like that movie. There's some lines in it that I'm like, that's pretty fucking funny. Not going to lie. That's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, every time- oh wait, yeah. Wong, fortify your minds is my favorite line in phase four. Fortify your minds! Is it the delivery because he looks so weird and intense when he says it? Or is it just the concept that's making you- I don't know, it could be both. Uh, there is this frustrating idea for the MCU that it should continue reflecting our world when the technology, events, and problems within this world should push things farther and farther from that. They're insane at this point. They have to ignore it's not just the advancement of any one technology. They have, like, shit tons in all different, um... Think of, like, a technology tree in Civilization. They've, like, they've hacked into and grabbed the top tier of, like, each of the different trees all at once. It's like, what happens now? It's like, I don't even know. You've, the world you've... is basically the same, except for when the plot needs it to be different. Yeah. Really annoying. Everything's a fucking mess. Holy hell, these profile pics just got here and immediately terrified also high rags. Hi. What what could possibly be terrifying? They it's all, wonderful. They're all friendly and fat. He's a friendly boy. Yeah. Look Don't at him be go. scared. We're not here to hurt you. Imagine Lockheed Martin just casually created subatomic weapons technology and the US government just going, okay, cool, have fun. They used to care. <laughs> there was time where Tony made weapons and the government was like, hey. Hey. That's, no, that's just another thing I, I immediately realized when I rewatched Iron Man 1. It's like, hey, they actually think about the whole uh, flying zone thing when he just flies around the, the world. And Ameri the American Air Force is like, what's this thing? What's the we should probably shoot that down. There's an active war zone out there. I guarantee It's hard to you, believe that this universe even has, like, governments. When they made yeah. it, they were like, you know, if this actually happened, like, if a guy made a suit like this and just started flying around shooting shit, what would, what would happen? Like, yeah. well, it would piss the fuck out of a lot of agencies. They'd be like, what the hell are you doing? And they'd try and shoot him down or contact him, and then there'd be legal issues about property, weaponry. Mm -hmm. there's, there's lots of stuff that would come up, and then, and then the film was like, hey, here's some examples of that. And like, ooh. Oh, shit, nice. Uh, there are infinite MOM versions where Doctor Strange is suddenly left alone standing without Chavez when someone in universe chooses Pepsi instead of 7-Up. I mean, mm. if it's possible, it's going to happen an infinite amount of times in the infinite multiverse. Oh yeah, because so they're talking about how there's, about only, there's only one Chavez, right? So, every time a universe is generated from any kind of choice, it has to be that she's deleted from the duplicate, so to speak. Right? Every time? Or, yeah, I don't even know if... Yeah, that's true. If there's only one of her, then no branching timelines could ever exist that have to do with... How does that work? 
it does. Should know. I even bother? Yeah, I. No, no. Well, you see, Rex, if there that. were multiple of her, it creates way more problems for the script. So it has to be. We we are opting for the lesser of two fuck ups, I guess. I don't even know there if it's the lesser. Be... To be honest with you, because. Yeah, I I don't know. I'd have to think about it, but I don't it think I want to. Starts hitting the brain, doesn't it? It's like, ugh. yeah. Don't think it makes sense. I just don't think it makes sense. Magic pimp articles, pimp wizard as. Oh my god, as wrote the pimp articles, as saved the world. As often saves the world. Very good at it. Pumping pim sounds nasty. Yeah, it does. Pump that pim. It be do. Yo, dog, I heard you like pim particles, so we use pim particles on your pim particles, so now you can grow your stock as you grow your crops. <laughs> just, pim particles are just, they, they've become every other tech. It's just, it's just, they just do whatever you want them to do anymore. Any, yeah. Anyone can do anything whenever, because of pim particles. Whenever they're, you need them, they're around, and they cost, they're not, yeah, so I don't know. They cost less than $8 to make. <laughs> um, Apparently, yeah. And you have infinite amounts of them. Well, they're they're once you learn how to make them, they're eight dollars each. But you're oh, by that Correct. point, you're millions and millions in the hole because of all the R and D that you've had to do over the years. And or know. no, because Hank's just that good. That's true. He's that good. He just the man just want the man's just a pizza lover. Mm -hmm. Pretty smart, Hank. Pretty, Pretty smart, smart, Hank. Hank. Now Hank knows what's up. Which victory would the ants go for in civilization? What would a cultural victory look like for the ants? What would the government would the government be socialism? Hi, Fringy. They'd be a hive uh, mind, hi. wouldn't they? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I feel like any form of government that an ant society creates would be pretty incomparable with anything that a human created because ants aren't people. They're different. Yeah. They don't <laughs> think about like people. They don't care about the things people care about. Ants They're not people. gonna structure the society like people. They're, They're just different, completely different like, creatures. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, it depends on which type of ant society we're talking about, because different species of ants have different governments, <laughs> if you want to call them that, different systems of governance. I just like the idea now of a, a sitcom about, like, a world of ants, and it's just seeing ant society work. And maybe it's, like, the first ant republic. They had their own, like, war of independence or something. And then... And there's no like translation they, to English. It's just yeah. Of course, like you got to do like in the Simpsons when the uh, the ants are in space and they're all talking to each other. We have to protect the queen. I'm the queen. No, you're not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm. Oh God! And uh, we, we need. And I, for one, welcome our insect overlords. I'd like to remind them that I too could be useful in rounding up slaves to toil in their underground sugar caves. <laughs> The fact that, hey, there's a good example of a of a great joke. The fact that they've got fully rendered graphics, like, that they put up on screen of ants whipping humans. <laughs> like, the <laughs> fact that they have that. And then in the next scene with Kent Brockman, he's just got a piece of paper stuck to the wall that says, Hail Ants, like, scrawled on it. <laughs> when he goes to the sugar caves immediately, like, he's familiar enough to know what, what use he can have. And you know what? Yeah, exactly. Smart man. Smart man. Well, no, he wasn't going to go to them. He was going to round people up to toil in their sugar caves. He was doing... what? Well, it was something that was talked about in Silicon Valley. I can't remember what it was called, but Guilfoy was talking about um, artificial intelligence and that there was, <laughs> like, some sort of... um, It was some sort of wager that if... Uh, <laughs> If 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 uh, artificial intelligence eventually took over the world, it might be incentivized to punish those who didn't actively help it come uh, to exist. And so he was going to help create AI so that he would be saved from Judgment Day. <laughs> Makes sense. I don't think it's a. I don't. Well, I don't know if it does. Would an Makes AI really sense. give a shit about punishing people yep. if it didn't help them? We would program it to. Maybe we would. Go after oh, yeah, so when you in chat, it was Roko's Basilisk. That's what it was called. Oh, when you like said Gilfoil, I couldn't help but think of Gilfoil. That's what came to mind. No, his thing. name is Gilfoil, and he is <laughs> Gilfoil? A very... Gilfoil? Nobody here has watched Silicon, Silicon Valley, have they? I have not. I have not. Damn, you're all missing out. That show's really great. It's really, really funny. How many seasons are there of it? Uh, they did six. Um, is it consistently yeah, they... good the whole time? Uh, it, it starts to, it starts to waver towards the end. Um, like the first couple of seasons are really funny, but then the longer it goes on, it starts to get harder and harder for them to, 
figure out like what the central thrust of each season will be because it is it is serialized. And so like as the seasons go on, it kind of gets harder and harder for them to sort of pivot to uh, keep keep the story going. I still think it comes to a satisfying conclusion, but yeah, it uh it's it's really at its best in the first few seasons. Yeah, I'll check it out. Same guy who made King of the Hill, which I need to watch now as an adult to see if I can fully appreciate it now. King of the Hill. It's definitely better as an adult for me. Well, yeah, because as a kid, I was like, oh, that's the show, the propane guy. <laughs> he talks about <laughs> propane. <laughs> Hello, EFAP. I was just wondering, would you ever consider covering anything to do with 40k universe? Be warned, reading through its stories is a mammoth task. I don't think any of us know much of anything um, about it, I'm afraid. All I know yeah, is know that a little bit, it's but... like a, an interesting universe that's very grim and oppressive. But cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess if something big comes out with it, maybe, but... Well, I don't I'd know. watch, like, the thing um, that Henry Cavill's making. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, yeah, yeah, absolutely. For sure. I think the most exposure I have to it is... I think I read one short story from, like, a compilation that I, um... That I bought, like, in a book. And the Flash gets cartoons... <laughs> About about uh about Warhammer. Those are pretty entertaining. Mm -hmm. Warhammer guys versus furries. Uh, Cassie is the cardboard girl from Men in Black. Cardboard girl. Hmm, I don't remember that. I'm afraid it doesn't trigger any memories. What about the first one? Uh. Yeah, can't help you. I don't know if like she's actually in it or not, is what you're saying, or if maybe it's a reference, but uh is May a pretty smart aunt? Uh sure. Sure Hank would say that. <laughs> Definitely. Very friendly about all those aunts. Yo, Mac. What are y'all's thoughts on Mr. Robot? Beep. Um I watched the first three seasons. I didn't watch the last season, and it has been a long time since I watched it. I remember really enjoying it, but I think that's one that I would um in order to make a statement on, I would need to rewatch it in full from beginning to end. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to say anything about it. It I is watched it. It is an interesting show. Like it's a very unique show in terms of the way that it's presented, like cinematography, framing, I, high concept. Well, uh, uh, that's probably not as unique. <laughs> but yeah, I'll have to rewatch it. I have seen the show that the Mr. Robot creators made after it. Uh, the first season of it anyway. It's a show called Homecoming uh, with Julia Roberts. And the first season is very, very good. And apparently the second season sucks. I didn't bother with it. But if you just watch the first season, it's quite good. I highly recommend it. Yeah, Sam Esmail, I think his name is. Yeah. Uh, Homecoming is pretty solid. I liked it a lot. He's uh he's one of those hyper involved like he towards the end of Mr. Robot, he was directing just about every episode of that of that show. Oh wow. Like at the beginning it wasn't so much, but then the longer it went on, he started directing more and more episodes. <clears throat> That's a lot of work. Uh, the yeah, that for most a... people don't do that. Well, it's yeah. the reason why most TV shows have a bunch of different directors rather than yeah. you know, one person directing the whole thing. So I know and that, writing um... it too. That uh, Chernobyl was all directed by uh, what's the, what's the guy's name? He directed Craig all Mazin? the episodes. Yeah, Craig Mazin. Is he? Does yeah. he direct all the episodes of The Last of Us? No, no. Oh, no. Okay. But I think he. I think he's written every episode except for one that was written or co-written by Neil Druckmann. I think. Um, mm, gotcha. Otherwise, he's written it all. The I think. So, the drugster. From what people saw in uh, said in chat, I think I remember it's like it's like activating in my almonds about men in black one isn't it that he's given a target practice and he doesn't shoot an alien he does shoot the little girl and then he's yeah. asked why and he says because the alien was just doing its thing it's got like a handbag or something it's totally chill but the little girl why the hell is she in this environment like he says like it's it's like however at night it's a dangerous street and she's just out here with a teddy bear i don't believe her. he was like i'm pretty sure she's a fucking threat or something like mm. that, <laughs> and I, yeah, again, he gets I like points for it or something yeah it's fun but maybe they're saying that the cardboard girl was uh, modeled after, like, you know, Cassie's actress, but as a little girl. I don't know. Or maybe Dang. that's the the amount of dimensions her character has. Who knows? Oh, got him. Ooh. Ooh. So the quantum realm is like Zen from Half Life, kinda. Just a fucky yucky world with all kinds of crazy, crazy things. But there's no G Man though. There. True. We get Bill Murray instead. 
What a waste of Bill Murray. Just yep. Yeah, he was <laughs> such a nothing burger in this movie. I mean, people were like, oh my god, that's Bill Murray. Like, You can kind of feel that energy in the audience when he came on screen, but then there was nothing especially funny he did. Oh, and she has a book on quantum physics. Yeah, and he's like, what the fuck? Why does she have a book on quantum physics? I remember. Yeah. There you go. Man in Black it, was man. fun. I haven't seen it in ages. Yeah, it is fun. I watched yeah. it recently. It's fun. Vincent Wait. D'Onofrio is like the bug man guy. He's incredible. I remember. Uh, Ant Milk. That is all. Mm. Who'd win? Ant Man or Durant, the Pokemon? Probably Ant Man, because he can do the whole go big thing and go really small and be like what a. What is bullet. it? D U R? Yes. Durant. It's like a mechanical ant. Ant Man's going to fuck it up. It's just showing some basketball player. It's good. <laughs> Kevin Durant, yeah. Durant Pokemon. I mean, Ant Man might be able to control that. And oh, that's true against yeah. his will, unethical. Right. I tell you, surely Ant Man would win. Yeah, I'm Eisenman. reading quantum mechanics with a high school level knowledge of math is like reading Shakespeare without knowing the alphabet. Well, she's a pretty smart girl. Yeah, she was a pretty smart girl. So, I feel like you're not taking this into account. The setup changes the setup right everything. There. What if I know the beta bed? Doctor Strange, you're a jerk for always saving the world instead of just being a normal person. Ant-Man, you're a jerk for being a normal person instead of always saving the world. Confused Jackie Chan face. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Doctor Strange he just kept holding the knife, you know? Meaning he kept making the big decisions. And this is a story you can make out of that, but it ain't what we were given. He didn't do it. Maybe one day they will. Would you rather spend a month working with Shulk or solving a mystery with Velma? Sorry to hear about Aquaman. Uh, that movie's a hilarious fever dream. Oof. Well, neither. Um, Please. How long with Shulk? A month. Wait, what was the time for Velma then? What was that? You have to work with Velma on one mystery or work for a month with Shulk. Yeah, but maybe you could like cheese it. Am I getting Maybe paid the mystery could be like who took the last of the milk. Do I? Am I getting paid? It's probably <laughs> as bad as like, as like like you have to listen to what she says or something, and and maybe you don't get paid. Maybe it's like an internship. Hmm. Gross. Yeah. I can't help but think which of the metas could I like rig in my favor. Not she hulks <laughs> <Hulk's. laughs> Like what kind of favor? What 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 would I have to do to get She Hulk the show to? Give me a good story or a good ending or something. You'd have to get it to like you. Versus what I had to do for Velma. At least with Velma, you could just like kick the shit out of her because she's just a girl or something. You know, <laughs> She-Hulk. She can literally warp time and space to fuck you over. Yeah, but then mm. Velma would get you in like jail or something. Like because it, 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 everything works out for her. You die or something. Yeah. Lose your brain. Yeah, you could also have your brain lost. So. Yeah, well, neither like, sounds off appealing. And no one gives a shit. <laughs> No, they're both pretty painful. I was just going to go with whichever one was shortest, and I feel like as long as I can solve the mystery, that ends my time with Velma, right? It could be as any a, mystery. I don't have to spend it's that much time with one. her. I'll be like, oh, I'll do this job. You go do that job. Bye. Let's split up and search for clues. Yeah. Ah, there you go. There's the hack. Meanwhile, the Shulk one feels a bit more trapped, like actually working with her on a on a case, you know? I don't know because I could I could kill Velma too and maybe get away with it and then become I must say create a mystery to be as solved. A, as a straight white guy, I don't feel safe in either world. No, <laughs> <laughs> your brain's coming out. It's gonna spill across the floor, or you'll be the villain. Maybe you'll do it to yourself. Oh, being the villain could be fun. Who knows? Hmm. Quantum Realm is a cheap copy of Ego's Planet. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of similar designs, similar artwork, hmm. but uh, you know, fuck it, right? Whatever. Fringy, look up. Humanity lost by Callum Diggle. IJ. Oh, humanity they want you to look up humanity. Humanity lost, I guess, the book. Who's the author? Callum Diggle. Great surname. Diggle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that like a. Oh, it's a comic book. Like, uh, okay, interesting. 
It's one of the Recommendo music group, if you haven't heard of them. They're called Two Steps From Hell. There's hundreds of songs, but some good starters are Flight of the Silver Bird, Enchantress, and Fateful Night. Hi, Rags. Hello. What pretty sure I've heard two steps that? from. I think I've heard two steps from hell. Oh, uh, they I look think. like an orchestral sort of thing. All right, fair enough. Well, that's what's showing up when I search for it on YouTube. Isprue was hooked on Velma. <laughs> no. <laughs> the actor that plays Kang is actually really good. He's outdoing what the director tells him. I mean, I can believe that. Maybe, yeah. I just. There's there's a couple of moments in the in the film where I kind of like him. The performance is a lot more subtle and less retarded, but I feel <laughs> like he lost it a bit along the way. And then he got really clowny in that in that post or mid credit scene. It's just hard to line up with these characters. Oh, and he was like hyper clowny in Loki then as well. He was very clowny. He was. I think it was just the way that they wanted him, his character to sort of act was totally off in Loki. Mm. When we talked about it, we had way better ideas. <laughs> kind of feel bad for the Modoc actor having his face memed into oblivion, but goddamn, is it hilarious? He probably thinks <laughs> it's bullshit. The whole thing is funny. I doubt he takes it seriously at all. Yeah. He's like, whatever. I was in also... some bullshit superhero movie where my face <laughs> was on some head guy that ran around doing <laughs> stupid laser shit. I don't know. It's also funny because it doesn't really look like him because of the way they've squished it. Yeah. So I don't think a lot of people would recognize it if they saw him in person. Brago, talk about Kyrgyzak's shrinking video. Uh, I think that was a recent one, but I couldn't. I I don't remember that one so well. Uh, so I couldn't. I couldn't explain it to you. All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, could 250 have a Buffy Angel discussion? That will happen eventually. And dude, the day it oh! finally does happen. Uh... Can I please be there? Please? Oh, if you want it. Well, we, we, we're planning on doing all kinds of things related to Buffy and Angel one day. Not anytime soon, but I'll, I'll one get day. you. Sure. If I'm still alive, I would like to be a part of that. <laughs> That'll be a big was, if uh, at that point. <laughs> I think the Kurz Kazak video that I was talking about was about basically shrinking down into like quantum sp spaces. And like what that might look like. And mm -hmm. I get the impression that Kurz Kazakh would have presented a more plausible and interesting version of that than just a place where you just walk around and there are cities and no you breathe way. oxygen and stuff. Uh, is Whoville also in the quantum realm? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's the subatomica. Ah. Now it all starts to make sense. Hmm. Uh, this movie wasn't hand-holding. It was like being thrown into a wheelchair and wheeled into a McDonald's playroom by a nurse going, Here you go, good boy. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Just for reference, a Class two civilization is one that's capable of enveloping its own star in a Dyson Sphere, and us humans right now won't even hit level one for another two to three hundred years, but ants... Yeah, the yeah but they had and thousands and thousands of years. I, guess, I do love the more, idea right? that there is currently a Dyson Sphere on the fucking sun in the MCU universe and it belongs to those <laughs> nano ants. You're like, what? <laughs> it's like, They've stolen all the power, yeah. Let's go with it. I feel like it could really revolutionize literally everything if what Hank said about no. them is true, but oh... Well, I mean, well. of course it does. It means you basically at that point have as much energy as you could ever need as a society. That's basically what being type 2 is. What's, 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 um, of... what's energy useful for? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. What did you energy know? do it for me? Yeah. What has energy ever me. done for me except <laughs> be me? Like, that I am energy. energy <laughs> <me>. <laughs> um... Who runs Floomp's worse, Ezra Flash or Cassie? Oh, because of the running animation and then the run. Um, that's Ooh. a tough one because it's well, Cassie. The, 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 the run for Flash is like Floompy, but it's like meant to look that way. Whereas like the Cassie run was just a mistake. Just right? yeah, like that was an error. Yeah. Because yeah, Flash runs in a way that's weird, but not in a way that's like, oh, that's some bad visual effects. <laughs> It was so bad, that little run. <laughs> the animation. <laughs> was indeed. And it's like some poor guy who probably had like barely any time to make that happen. To work on that shot. 
Uh, finally, I've caught up and caught a live EFAP. Been watching slash listening to you guys since the 90s. Has been an incredible experience filled with joy, grief, tisms, and appreciation for good storytelling. Stay long. Howdy rags. Hello. Oh. When he said, I've been listening to you since the 90s, I was like, dang, we're, <laughs> we've, been, we've been going a long time. We're really getting on, you know? I didn't remember. Well, uh, yeah, good to hear. It's cool. And glad you, you you found such a such highs and lows and roller coastery rides. We're like a Marvel movie, you know? But better. Oh, I mean, maybe right now, yeah. I'd say comfortably, but <laughs> hopefully that changes. And by that, I mean they get so good... It better than an EFAP episode. Could you believe it? Is it even possible? I guess we'll find out. Uh, shocked and appalled. That's all this says. I assume they're talking about hmm. Modog. I don't know. Mod or <laughs> potentially. Oh yeah, they they followed up metal. with saying, "Dude, I just realized what's happening with the faces. I'm done. Enjoy your madness." <laughs> 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 I don't know if he's upset or not. <laughs> uh, imagine if they made it. Uh, so they were actually at a limit of how small they could get in this realm. Imagine an environment with a character that created unique limitations and challenges to deal with. No, that's boring. Yeah. Why not? Uh, well, for every rule you make, we're going to have to just break it later when we come up with different ideas. So why not just not make any rules? And then just break stuff from other movies. Because we don't care about them. There we go. Pedro Pascal is great as Joel, but what do you think about it if they got Hugh Jackman to do it? Thanks for all the content. I think you could pull it off. Yeah, he's like, a good actor. I really like, like Hugh Jackman, Hugh, so... Hugh Jack off. <laughs> you take that back. Okay. I saw him in the Music Man on Broadway, and he was pretty great. Wait, was he on a Broadway? Or what does that even mean? <laughs> uh, it, was this, it was the broadest way I've ever seen. Ew. He was on it, and he was good on it. Ooh. All right. Muller, if you haven't already, check out the Land Fit for Heroes book series by Richard Morgan. Ringel S. Keith is an extremely well-done gay character who's been shaped by his sexuality, but not defined by it. Okay, fair enough. I'll put it in the to-do list, though books, uh, I'm afraid, they're, they're so much lower down. Movies and TV shows being all smug, like, haha, we get to go first, and books are like, I'll get you <laughs> one day, you bastard. Speaking of AIs, some made one from Hassan's streams. It actually kept using the phrase, the ends justify the beads over and over. <laughs> <laughs> I could believe that. <laughs> <laughs> the second film ends with exploring the quantum. Uh, yeah, I guess so. There's a bit with uh, Hank going down there. I don't know if he's in the void or the subatomica, though. Because he's definitely not in the quantum realm, so to speak. I don't fucking know, whatever. It's quantum time. What if we? What do you have here? Is a failure to Kang communicate. Nice. Uh, yeah. An hour behind, but it seems like Marvel ripped off the 1992 movie "Mom and Dad Save the World." Probably. Mom and Dad save <laughs> the world. What is the Rotten Tomatoes? That's how we know if it's good. Uh, twelve percent. <laughs> so it's pretty good. Good. And then 44% from audiences. There is no saving this off-putting family adventure from its <laughs> mirthless script, although some inspired production design gives it some visual polish. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's not good. Bad. An hour behind, but it seems like... Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah. Uh, what's with Marvel using motherhood to justify insane, terrible acts? They also bashed on Ant-Man for wanting to be a father. Weird. Hi, Rags. Hello. It is really weird, but I think that the implication they were giving was that he wasn't even being a good dad. Because, no. like I said, he, he didn't know anything about what she's been up to recently. He doesn't know anything about his science projects. He doesn't know that she's been in jail. But Hank does. I, yeah, I guess we're led to believe that our our hero, Ant-Man, is just, like, a terrible father or something. But, but what is he doing with his time at that point? I just the film's word with it. Just yeah, book, booking he, it, I guess. He's just doing the books. But he seems to be going out, like, on the street and getting some coffee Smiling and attending at people, meetings. Giving them thumbs yeah, up. But he forgets he doesn't have a, like, he forgets he has a daughter? Or... Know, like, we man. just have to take the word of the movie, and yep. I don't feel like that's conveyed to us accurately at all. Yep, I agree. Hi, Rags. Hello. If things slow down, could you guys do a retrospective on dead game series like Sly Cooper or Jack and Daxter? Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Also, also, Byrax. Uh, goodbye. Um, 
I don't know if that would come up before probably doing like I, I could see us doing EFAPs on like classic films. Maybe picking one each and we do three for a stream or something. I could see that being more common than doing something. The problem is like Sly Cooper and Jack and Daxter, I guess we'd need to all re-familiarize ourselves with the series as a whole, and then I'm not sure what that stream would really look like, but could be that if newer iterations of those come out, we end up talking about their past. We kind of do, you know, like when we covered the Dead Space remake, we talked a lot about Dead Space as an IP. Um, so, you know, stuff like that could happen, but not sure about the viability otherwise. Boo, boo, boo. I come five years from the future. EFAP still covers almost every Marvel movie, despite them getting worse. Masochists, a lot of you. There's no point. <laughs> there is a point. Um, there is a point. We're helping with that drop-off. I'd say so. But it's, <laughs> it's also just fascinating to see what the most commonly listened to and watched stories are in the world. It's super interesting to see. Like, It's almost representative of our culture to some degree. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I saw it in the theater on opening night. It's a packed house when I saw it. I was kind of surprised, honestly. But, you know, people are still going to see these movies. It's worth yeah. talking about them. Mine was not packed. Far from it. Gary's looked empty. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think it DM'd you mutely when I was when I arrived a bit early. There was like three people in there. It filled up a little bit after, but for the first night it was out. I don't know. Then again, maybe I'm a bad, I'm, I'm a probably a bad benchmark because I watched the English version in Germany and it was like a Wednesday night, so mm -hmm. probably not a lot of people coming that's out. Today anyway. people speak the least English over there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Do you think uh, most people would go see the German dub in theaters? Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, really? Interesting. I sometimes I just don't get an English uh, English dub depending on the movie. That's kind of surprising because you know when I was in Germany, most I think most people I interacted with spoke English pretty well. Yeah, I'm surprised they would all go see the German dub of a movie like Ant Man. Oh, I'm I'm not really. <laughs> They they prefer the the German ones. Interesting. Thanks, Janet. You've just unleashed the thirty first century conquering man on every imaginable world, and you decide to tell one person, no one, you coward. Yeah, pretty much. That's possibly mm -hmm. the biggest fuck up in the whole movie. Um, yeah, because it doesn't make any sense. It's, uh, at least. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say it, Cap. At least the, the Deus Ex Machina with the ants and the time dilation. That's just a stretch, okay? It's not a hole. <laughs> it's just a stretch. <laughs> but with yeah, her, it's... yeah, no, that's true. It's only a stretch, it's true. really. It's like, just... It's a big stretch. Tell someone. Tell, tell the Avengers, like, hey, there's like this crazy person in a quantum realm. Yeah. Might and then, I don't it. know, maybe the, the part you can keep secret, a secret is that there's people down there. So everyone thinks, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, he's trapped there, but at least no one is in danger. And then at some point they figure out, hey, wait, there's actually people down there. And then they're like, what the fuck, Janet? Why didn't you tell us? And then you can have a drama about that and put that in the story. For <laughs> so example. It's, a, it's a stretched out hole. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I have holes. Uh, I love holes. Chicken, double bacon, Alfredo base, and barbecue drizzle. I guess that's this person's Yum. preference for uh, That's a pizza. bit too much sauce for a pizza and for my taste, but it sounds good He didn't say how otherwise. much. If we got barbecue and Alfredo sauce, that seems like... Those it are could be very times, minimal. That's not the amount. So That's, that's fair. Uh, you just got pedanted. You're yeah. right. <laughs> Bet you feel embarrassed now. You're gonna I'm delete so your channel. I'm so embarrassed. Probably. Delete your channel. Effect. For the catch-up, friendly neighborhood paleontologist again. Extinct animal of the day, Epikion Hey Denny, aka Rags's badass grandpa. Hmm. Um, Is that a doggo? Epikion, uh, sort of. Uh, Epikion Hey Denny. Looking it up now. There's some... I gotta go into images here. Okay. It looks like a very, very uh, like an ancient uh, canine. Uh, it says it was the largest canine to have ever existed. It lived 6 to 12 million years ago. Wow, that's old. That is pretty old. How's he doing? Oldman bad. Not I'll so give, good, uh, Muller. 
<laughs> not so good. It didn't work not out. Not so good. <laughs> I found this uh, in this very high quality image to show the Ooh. size difference between a Picion Hedeni and uh, a Canis Lupus. So just a, a wolf, essentially. Um, That's pretty big. Big boy. That's a big dog. That is pretty a large dog. Large dog. Pretty large friendly though. Dong. Probably. They look um, nice, yeah. They probably get along. The biggest army of cyborg ants came in about 90% of the resistance is dead. Yeah, it's really stupid that they came in so late when they should have just waited for them to launch the attack. Just them. Yeah. It, it doesn't even, it, like, it, it's actually really annoying. It's like, we have resources. What resources? We have the ant people. It's like, cool. We have the ant army that's advanced so beyond we can't even understand it. It's like, cool. And we have the okay. random pockets of resistance that may come to our aid. It's like, cool. All right, we'll open with Giant Man. All right, and when he's fallen apart, we'll have the pockets of resistance. All right, and then the ants will just win. And it's like, <laughs> oh, why, why don't we just have the ants win? Like, Yeah, hmm. let's have the ants, yeah. Let's just start off. It's, it's the same thing. That It's that trope of why don't we just use our big weapon first and be done with it instead of having that be used as our, you know, all of a sudden... Oh no, they use the big weapon now. We've got to rethink our strategy or we have a low point in the battle cuz the yeah. We need to, we need to bring the ants in when the big bad villain says all you do is talk to ants. It'll be perfect. Oh, direct. Uh Yeah, but I talk to the coolest ants ever. What are you some kind of ant man? Scott's book what reading kind of ant squad was the nicest moment of the whole movie and the only part I truly liked. Paul Rudd really sells the character's sweetness. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's super easy to That's like, fair. Paul Rudd. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, it just, it's just, it's just part of a shitty movie, unfortunately. Have you ever seen his Hot Ones episode? No. It's very fun. He's very. <laughs> there's there's some good memes in that one. Oh, that's the one with the look at us. Here we are. That's the yep. one, right? Who'd have thought? Not me. I think I think I actually never watched that episode. Fun. It's good. It's good. Paul Rudd's fun. Hot Ones is pretty funny in general. That's some good yeah. stuff. And the final super chat of EFAP226, uh, hype for Atomic Heart. Which, yeah. Atomic be, <laughs> Heart. Part. That will be happening it, literally oh. a week from now. We'll be discussing mm. Atomic Heart. Wow. And uh, Fringy and Rags will have completed it by then. Right, guys? Uh, yes, that is correct. Yeah, we'll I'll be uh, starting it tomorrow and uh, going through it. Well, um, pushes this on too, because then I had like four Atomic Heart streams. Sweet. Nickelodeon. Crispy Critters, here we go again. That, that's for oh. 227, actually. <laughs> Good reference. <laughs> hey, Fringy, of these birds, who has your favorite design? Storm Eagle, Overdrive Ostrich, and Blaze Heatniks. They are Mega uh, Man X bosses. Just put them in the chat, we'll come back to it later. Yeah, right. I'll post them, I'll look them up. Hey, you guys played Return of the Obra Dinn. It's pretty cool. Love you guys. I've not, uh, I've not played yeah, it, but I've heard it's really cool. That's all. That's all I ever hear. I think it's from the guy who made Papers, Please. Oh, okay. Return of the Obra Dinn. And oh. ways. Okay. Well, so I've looked at all of them. Ah, uh, hmm. I'm not, I'm not sure, actually. It's kind of a tough one. The HM way. aspects that I like. Um, hmm. You want to post uh, I, pictures here in the, the Discord? Uh, like if you guys want to take a look, yeah. Hold on. Exciting. So that's uh that's the first one there, Storm Eagle. It's it's coming. There you are. Uh so that's pretty bad. <laughs> I I don't think you can just say it that dismissively. Oh, that um, one's just did oof. though. Oh, that's, that's oh, worse. So that's so the, the, it's horrific. it's really awkward for Raz because I find each of them charming. That's awkward I, for Rags. I, I, third one. I don't think third it's very one awkward best. for Rags. Rags is not going to feel awkward as a result of that. I don't think. <laughs> nope, I don't feel awkward at all. No, I think uh, I think the third one easily looks the best. 
I'm not so sure. I think that the ostrich fella, he's pretty funny looking. Oh, he's definitely <laughs> uh, he, funny I like looking. Him. I don't know about <laughs> funny. I also think that the first one is the design that I... I think the first one is the one I like the most, actually. The ostrich is funny looking in the sense that we're laughing at him, I would say. I so, don't know about that. I think so I think he's pretty confident. He knows that I he knows that, but he 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 runs through anyway. Oh, he he's, owns the joke. <laughs> All right, that's fair. I, I mean, get yeah, on his confidence. That's the impression yeah. I got. He's in on the meme. Um, <laughs> yeah, Look at that I, smile. I like, he's in I, on I, that. I meme. like the first one though. I don't know what it is. I think that design strikes me as the most cohesive one. The phoenix, I think, is too obvious. I think that's all I have for it. It's a little too safe. Mm. You think that's safe? Yeah, a little bit. I think it's just cohesive. It's far more cohesive than the rest of them. Nah, I like that first one. A, a well, Fringy amount. must feel pretty awkward about that. Yeah, Fringy, go for it. I don't really feel now. awkward at oh, all. Shit. I, I don't feel very awkward. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I also like this sort of art style, like 90s. 90s uh, art for like I video games can't. was always really cool. Well, someone's got to feel awkward. Uh, I, I can do me. that if you if you want to. Yeah, go metal for feels it. I mean, awkward. I'll, I'll take the bullet. I mean, step up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I already died today, so the universe doesn't doesn't go to shit. So might as well take that one as well. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Yeah, might as well. So we had like. Reasoning for the first one being the best was how cohesive it was, and then the reason for the third one being the best was how cohesive it was. I, yeah, I, no, this is not reconciled. This is unacceptable. It's a dead end. I know. We can't move on until this is settled. Nah, no. that's okay. All right, we have Do to give it to chat. In the then. chat. Yeah, here yeah. We go. Chat, you're gonna have to solve the problem for Rags and Ringy because they can't do it. <laughs> Eagle Ostrich Phoenix. All right, who's gonna win? Ah, well, yeah, Phoenix is probably. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's neck and neck. Interesting. Well, if it's neck and neck, then the second one's going. Uh -oh. It's neck and snack. Mm -hmm. If it's about the necks, then yeah, it is going to go to the second one. He's right. <laughs> That's your eagle. I mean, look, it's way more. It's, yeah, like when you put the votes in the chat, it's a lot more of a mixed bag. I like that because they each have their own, you know, strengths and drawbacks. You got to make Phoenix bigger. Wait, I thought so Chad was like one being. Him. Wait, Chad's not a monolith. I'm no, confused really. now. I think that's not yeah. that, that's that's not. This is an uh, imposter chat. Yeah, the phoenix is still winning, and remember, whatever turns out the winner is the objectively correct answer. That's how it works. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. that's the that's the way of the world. So I think it's safe to say the ostrich is fucking losing. Look at him. <laughs> pathetic. He's still got a good twenty percent of the vote. Yeah, I mean he's pathetic. in on the meme, but still. He's in on the meme, so losing. <laughs> yeah. What a loser. Loser. Being in on the joke only gets you so far. The phoenix is the shadow of the hedgehog to the eagle. Oof. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, there's a bit of that going for it. Oh, I don't know the if that's true. The eagle is certainly a bit less edgy. I don't know, he seems pretty glorious. But is there a goof factor, you know? And who has the most? I guess it's the ostrich. I don't know who has yeah, the ostrich. Yeah, ostrich. But most like, goof. there's a second place and a third place for goof, and and how significant is that? Who knows? The first one doesn't seem goof to me. When should we call no, it? No, I don't 500 think it's goofy. Votes? Is that is that what we should the call expression yeah, on his face? Uh, Five hundred. Come on, guys, get the eagle across the finish line. Oh, he's so Rags, close. Rags, he's trying to he's trying to manipulate the audience. Do something. I'm not trying to manipulate anything. I'm just saying. I think I'll just allow. I think I'll best. just let that stand, and everyone can weigh that up as they wish. I don't think I have to do Metal anything. Across the finish line. Metal's feeling he's pretty so awkward close. right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty awkward, man. Man, I'm so. Oof. Fucking pathetic ostrich, just dying on the vine. Look at him. I will say, I think that uh, the first, the eagle and the phoenix, seem, like the eagle seems like the protagonist and the phoenix seems like the villain, but I like the villain better. Hmm. I mean, the ostrich is pretty cool. <laughs> I like the ostrich. I like them all, really. I just think that the eagle is the best one. Well, we hit 500. And so ends, and the truth is, the phoenix is the best. Sorry, Fringy. Yeah, well, I that's okay. I good thing I don't need your approval to like the the birds that I like. No, no, no the eagle's <laughs> growing on me. Yeah, he's kind of growing on me. 
He's okay. Oh, is he now? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's like a so. he's like a he's 38 percenter, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, he's kind of grown on me. Not quite a 41 percenter. I'm but... warming up to the eagle, <laughs> but I think the phoenix is. It's like the phoenix the most. I just think he's got sort of the best design. He's... We did it. We solved the problem, right? Yeah, we did it. Mm -hmm. we All right. Excellent. Excellent. Nice. Wonderful. Save nice. the universe. Nice. Rags, do you find death and the last wish sexy? Um, sure. Why not? Definitely. The thumbnail for the Oni plays of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is quite funny. <laughs> okay, let's see what that is. You want to post it? In the I'll Chamber of Secrets? Show the people. <laughs> <laughs> That is very funny. <laughs> image. Hold on. Ant-Man on track for the worst second week drop-off for a movie making 100 million plus in the last first weekend behind it would be Deathly Hallows Part 2 and BVS. Well, it broke the do record, not... right? Yeah. Do you want to get to see the thumbnail real quick? I thought, are we going to post in the Discord? or? I got it. Please do, yeah. I'm... I'm... He's now desperate at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like swooshed up against his cheek. <laughs> Some of the other thumbnails are pretty funny for the Harry Potter one as well. There's another one for the Chamber of Secrets that has, uh, like, he's got a scar across his eye. Just like Harry Potter Deutsch. Oh my oh goodness. God. No. <laughs> his wand is all fucked up. <laughs> 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 the faces. Uh, in Mega Man ZX Advent, the villain is Master Albert, and he plans to rule the world with Uroboros. This was two years before RE5, lol. Good old Capcom. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> I guess so. It sounds pretty funny, though. Uh, I can believe that, that. The, the idea that they had a story that that's just stupid and dumb and then they just it wasn't even theirs they had to like take it from some other thing <laughs> like, can't you be can't you do, be crazy on your own you yeah. know the Modoc in the comics has fought and lost to the red and yellow M&M's somehow still better than the one in the movie yeah I'd say so so that is pretty darn funny. Did you see the interview in which the writer of Quantumania said the movie mirrored Frodo's journey from Lord of the Rings? Also high rags. What? Oh, no. You're no. memeing. That's not real. Yeah. You're memeing. You're totally memeing. It's rude to say that, you know? It's, yeah. it's rude to... get it. Why would you insult the Lord of the Rings like that? <laughs> it's so rude. It's like Vin Diesel saying that he understands oh, Tolkien's yeah. he understands struggles. He understands Tolkien's struggle of continuing a saga. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Tolkien's live reaction to that. He'd be like, what? <laughs> what? Just get Tolkien in the cinema and make him watch all the Fast and Furious movies. Uh, that would be Vin kind of Diesel though. is so delusional. It's hilarious. It's just like... Man, what do you think? And Tolkien's just like, it's about family. It's oh, about family. <laughs> what's, so, what's so terrible about it? And everyone's like, oh my god. Vin Diesel said that. Yeah, go Google it. It's real. It shouldn't be, but it is. <laughs> it shouldn't be. <laughs> do any of you like the band Oasis? I like one um, song by them. Uh, what, what, what I know of theirs. Their most famous song is Wonderwall. But they have a couple other songs. Well, they don't. Like Champagne Supernova. I like that song. Yeah. Um, uh, and others, I'm sure. And others. Don't look don't yeah. look back in anger. Is that Oasis? I have no idea. I no don't look back to anymore. Oasis. Yes, it is. Yes, don't look it back is. in anger. Uh I just don't I, know enough. I I know Wonderwall. Um I hate Wonderwall. I think oh. I'm, I'm not too keen on it. I think it's way overrated. One of the worst vocal performances in a popular song I've ever heard. Little by little. Um, now we get some savage mu uh, music takes here as well on EFAB. We're just expanding. No, the, yeah, the vocals in Wonderwall are pretty. Not great. <gasps> I so mean, I maybe that's where a lot of the appeal song, comes from. I just don't care about 
Oasis. I'm sorry. There's no more yeah. thing. <laughs> okay. uh, Blur is better than Oasis. I there know that was a that was like a competition back in the day. I like Red the Feud. Red, yeah. Red. You had a collar. Red. red. Out of pretty. it. Uh, oh, they said bread. Oh, all right. Well. Modoc, morbidly obese diet only of cake. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Cake if you eat cake, cake, that's what you'll look like. Um. Oh, this is interesting. I despise the daughter in the whale, and she gets a free pass IMO, and she's nothing but vitriol nonstop. Um. um I get. I. Free pass is complicated. Uh, her mother is seemingly pretty abusive, at least verbally. Yeah, and, and you know, her father did, you know, leave him. And I think the idea well, is that I, don't in, know. I think the I think the criticism is, or I would assume the criticism is that in the end, when uh, Brendan Fraser says, "I think she was trying to do the right thing by telling that guy's parents what he did," it's like I don't I don't know if you can assume that. Oh, but yeah, but that's just, that's his character. He he believes in her through and through, and it, it all comes down to that essay, even. Because... Yeah, I just i i think I think that he's wrong to assume that, and I think a lot of people assume that that's what the movie is saying. Whether I that's think right or wrong, the movie pretty much comes through and says he was onto something, and that he cracks through to her at the end. Yeah, but I don't think she told that guy's parents in the hope, like knowing that that would somehow help. Um, I'd be more inclined to believe she did it to hurt him. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that's too. the thing. So when he says that, oh, she wasn't trying to hurt him, she was trying to help him, it's like, is he wrong or is he right? He might, well, that's, but that's the problem, isn't it? Like, uh, it's my assumption of the thing she does because up to that point, she pretty much only does things to hurt people in the movie. But mm. like, is it possible she did it uh, in the hopes of, yeah, like the idea, so if you remember, she's kind of in a similar position in that she clearly wanted to get back to her father. She uh, the mummy mm -hmm. said she always loved you, like she yeah. always wanted to be back with him. And so the idea that he's separated from his parents and she she could have some level of insight, quote unquote, into the idea of like guarantee they take you back the second that they know you want to be there, uh, which isn't the case for my family. Uh it's uh, that's possible. I just don't think that's the likeliest or the interpretation that makes the most sense. There's some. There's probably more to dig into there, but I can understand. I mean, yeah. a lot of people. I don't hate her character. I I think I her character is the most interesting part of the movie for me. Um, and I don't think she's all bad by any means. But I think the part where Brendan Fraser says in the movie seems to agree that oh, she wasn't actually trying to hurt him. She was trying to help him. I just don't know if I buy that. I'm not. I, I'm not sure. I go as far as seeing the movies saying that's that's the truth. I really just get the impression that he thinks it's true. That's yep. fair. That's I think I think a lot answer. of I think that's uh I think some people will get confused about that, you know, but I think you're right that that's something he would believe whether it's true or not. It's just sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between what our protagonist says or what the good guy says in a movie versus what the movie is saying, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I can understand. If they're able to go into the quantum realm, does that mean they can get the infinity stones? They said they were atomized but not fully destroyed. Yeah, you have to pick uh, yeah. them all up. <laughs> like, all the <laughs> fucking pieces. Gonna be a lot of pieces, though. Oh, God. I don't even want to think about it. Leave me alone. <laughs> 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 Make everything worse. Leave me some fucking villain that collects all the pieces of an Infinity Stone in the fucking Quantum Realm. They could make that a plot line. I would hate it so much. I can much. believe. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that. Yeah. I could imagine it being terrible, but I could imagine them doing it. Yeah. Bring it as Modoc, please say, and then oh, they've got they've got got a whole line. Here, I get. Do you, is there even a Modoc voice, or is it what just going to be what is the Modoc voice? It's just a it's know. just a loser <laughs> voice, I guess. You know, uh, fuck. <laughs> All right, let's try again. <laughs> Were you gonna do it like what? a Gilbert Godfrey? <laughs> you no, know, I wasn't. Scott. You I know, wasn't. Scott. <laughs> Right. I'm just because he's still got the same voice as the you know when he says I'm going to disintegrate you, which is kind of like, hmm. You know, Scott, my head isn't the only thing that grew. That grew. Pick, All right, let's pick it up, Scott. Let's, pick it up. let's get and another then, take of that. You can do it. I believe in you. You're almost there. Right. 
So do you want like an actual serious delivery of this line? Then? No, I think he's just uh, saying yeah. part of it cut out as well, or at least on my end. Oh, I did it? Well, because I was laughing. So the line is, you know, Scott, my head isn't the only thing that grew. Pick it up, Scott. <laughs> Pick. <laughs> Pick it up. There you go. You got yeah, it? Yeah, happy? that's a good take. <laughs> Check the gate. Let's move on. Also, hi. Is that I can't even remember how he sounds. Neither can I. <laughs> what, like, mo I from the actual movie itself? Like, you can't even remember? He's, he's just a yeah, normal like, guy voice, his... except when he got the I know, that's on. the thing. Kind of I can't... Except when he yells, it's kind of a bit funny. Well, he, he has, How like, about... the, the helmet creates, like, the, you know, robot -y voice, but, uh... But I'm assuming... Another take for me, but we did it. it no, we got 10 it. ten seconds, but we did it. It's <laughs> done. done. <laughs> no, that no, last take was good. We have to do it again good. and again, and again and again and again. Well, I'm, I'm glad you liked it, Capital. I'm, I appreciate <laughs> it. I worked real hard on that one. I had to get really in the mind of that character. Yeah, <laughs> you have to draw from a dark place. His enormous, bulbous <laughs> head with his brilliant, bulging brain. You need. Oh, wow! Yeah. I didn't even intend to alliterate that. Good job, me. Good job. Okay. Sucking myself off with my brilliant <laughs> words. My brilliant words. Also, high rags and cap, not metal. Fine. Oh, well. Yeah. Ouch. Hi. Ouch, that's, or that's just, fine. you know, fine. that bad. You know what? I can, I can take it. That's fine. I can take it. Yeah. If they're attacking you, that means they're not attacking someone who couldn't handle it. Yeah. Hi, Massives. Ever heard of a game called Little Nightmares? It's a horror side scrollish platformer. I recently played it and its sequel. Uh, I've never played it. I know of it, but that's, that's never played it myself. I think I've no. heard of it, but no, never played it. It's nice and creepy. It is also unique because the story is told through the environment. I highly recommend it. Also, when EFAP 220 catch up, they are all coming out weekly, so it will be out at some point. Uh oh, so environmental storytelling would be very cool. It's the thing that video games have a unique advantage yes, in true. utilizing. I hate stories in video games. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been playing them? <laughs> uh, was it 30 years? Is that how long it's been? Uh, sometimes so, I can't even remember it's been so long. They also want you to say that, Fringy, as Modoc. Okay. Uh... What's that last word there? Is that just kilograms? I, would, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe? Uh, why? <laughs> why do you want these lines? I don't know. You, you know what you can say you don't want to. It's up to you. I just, I guess I'm trying to figure out like what your motivation is. Into the broad arc of the, of the character, yeah. That's what, without that, I'm not sure what, yeah. Like, I feel like I tried my hardest with that first line, but that second line, I, I don't know. I, I yeah, think, I I think the that. thing that's missing is that that first line has kind of got room for interpretation. That second line, not so much. You know what? <laughs> nah, fuck that. All right, next week, <laughs> chat. All right. Wow. A shilling. If you want to read the line, go for it, Rags. You can do it if you want. Well, they really wanted you. Okay, well then, that's not happening then. <laughs> Damn. Well, Rags, you could okay. do as Fringy doing Modoc or something. Oh my god. As Fringy. Uh, let's see. I gotta get in my Fringy mode, my Australian No, you need to do the Modoc voice. voice. That's the I don't, thing. That's no, the thing. I, li I literally do not remember the Modoc voice. It's you too need, normal. You need to play well, an Australian yeah, doing just, the Modoc voice. It can't just be Vodoc. Yeah, he has to do Fringy as Modoc. That's what he has to do. Alright, well, give it, give it a try, dude. Hmm. We gotta go. We gotta go deeper because you got a deeper voice than me. Mine is mine is sprightly and alive, and yours is a bit more uh, dead. <laughs> yours is more more. Uh, well, it, it's certainly not uh, as excited as mine because he won't even he won't even do the line. Um, let's see, Fringy. He doesn't have that typical Australian voice, you know. He sort of stands out. I don't think <laughs> you know. So um. Hmm. So it's the second line here. Now experience the power. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's the one. All right. This is gonna. This is gonna sound exactly like Fringy. Okay. Keep an eye on the screen so you can see where the, the little rings are. So you know who's talking. Yeah. Just so that you know, this isn't some trick of editing or anything like that. Uh, now 
experience the power of my massive organ capable of coming kilograms. See, now now I feel compelled to almost give you a different read of the line to just show, like, how off yours was. That's the thing, because here's the thing, I'm not doing I it can't do psychology. To, yeah, you can't lose it's that, right? really reverse psychology. Yeah. It's more so like, uh, I don't know. That regular psychology. <laughs> well, it's regular psychology is... in the sense that I'm just figuring out, like, it's almost like the power it's, it's, of really my massive organ capable <laughs> of coming kilograms. So my notes in like terms so... of trying to actually <laughs> capture the tone of Murdoch is you need to go more high-pitched and squealy. He's, uh... I'm not doing Murdoch. More high -pitched. He's doing you as you. Modoc. Yeah, it was you. You as Modoc. Yeah, but, and yet you were still trying That's to That's like layers. The... Yeah. I know it's like layers, it's like onions. Ogres have layers. Let's yep. just say, I know and who the Oscars should be going to this year. Sorry, right, Brendan Frazier, move Tell over him. for rags. <laughs> Tell him how he needs to do it, Fringy. Like I said, I think the main thing with Modoc and I guess the character that he played in the other movie was that he's got like a very sort of high pitched because you know like the I'm gonna disintegrate you. The like that, yeah, that's right. The other guy, Cross. Yeah, whatever, the other guy. Yeah, he's got a very sort of high pitched squelchy voice, not like a I'm d d rags trying to impersonate Fringy. I'm sound. I sound like Bosch. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, because Fringy doing rags doing Fringy do doing Modoc. Yeah. <laughs> rags doing Fringy doing Modoc. Doing Darren. Yeah, that's right. Darren, who was Modoc in another life, but now he's now he's just Modoc. No more. Let's hear it, Fringy. Come on. What of that line? Like, if I did my own interpretation. Yes, that, of that line. line. Yeah, it'd be like, uh, is he? Do we think he's mad or do we think he's happy? Why Give us both? your interpretation. I'm not doing both. <laughs> I gotta pick one. <laughs> you can do both. Why not? I could, but I'm trying to figure out. Like, show us again, your range. Yeah, the line was the the line was as Rag said it, and it's like, well, hmm. How about you start that... happy and end angry? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you give that a try. Now experience the power of my massive organ, capable of coming kilograms. I like it's the kilograms voice. part. The know. kilograms has something. Yeah. Yeah. That's, just... That's right. Well, now you've got your it. pick of everything that you could ever want for you, whatever <laughs> meme that you're making. You can put that into your AI generator machine and then just churn out <laughs> Modoc scripts forever. I have to say, though, well played, Rags. Well played. That was Thank some 40 you. chess on Rags' part. Thank I you. don't like how much you're taking away my own capacity to make my own fucking choices. <laughs> you, well, he got you, you to say the line, didn't he? I was Remember, just appreciating some of their you. choices. Yeah, this opened with you not wanting to do the thing, so... Yeah, I didn't want to do it, but then you did your line and I wasn't satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that was 4D chess. You ever think about that? I don't think yeah. that was 4D chess. I think Rags was like, this is my moment. This is my moment. My moment. Uh, it, it, was, to be fair, it was his moment. He really, best. he, uh, you know, he pulled off a lot there. I'm impressed. Yeah, I want Rags to do a Mahler impression. Ooh, make, Mahler's make really difficult. Impression. Yeah, both you and Fring, all of you are. You, there's nothing like you're all. You have unique voices, but there's nothing in the voices. Yeah, I think mine's the same way. There's not like that thing you could latch onto. I think that you can always can sort of. Well, so what I would say for you, Rags, is I think the thing to latch onto is your inflections. Yes, I was about to say that. I think you, is you're the best a bit up and down, which I'm not. I'm not saying it. It's, it's dynamic, is what I would say. It's a very yeah. dynamic sort of tone. But the voice is not probably dead. Much more, I would say. Well, I guess it's that the. I get what you mean in terms of because I think you're right. I don't think my accent is very is is very typical quintessential australian accent it's not no i think that Something before no, definitely not if people were to guess where you were from i don't think really many people would guess australia i don't know why anybody would guess britain though i don't, I don't get that one i still don't understand why someone would think that rather than australia i'm obviously australian um you know that you're obviously australian <laughs> But I think a lot of people, they just wouldn't, they just wouldn't, because in their mind, remember, in their mind, Australian means a very particular kind of accent that you um, just don't seem to fall under the, the known I umbrella I get what you of. mean, because I guess the thing is, is that in America, you've got a few more varieties of accent that, that seem distinct, whereas in Australia, it's, it, they're a lot more, uh, they're a lot more blurred. There are different 
types of accents here, but they're not like the same as compared to, you know, I guess your quintessential standard American accent compared to, I guess, like certain areas of the South. And then there's even variations in the South or like your Boston accent or uh, the Midwest, Cali Valley yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, Midwest. It's uh, it's it's in Australia, it's a bit more blurry. Basically, the only difference is how much uh, how how much do you like slur or how much do you sort of uh, expand those vowels, I think is like basically what distinguishes accents here. How prominent are the vowels? How many words do you shorten? Because that's a common Australian thing. It's just shortening every word. It's not university. It's uni. It's not football. It's footy. You say roo instead of kangaroo? Not typically, no. But people will sometimes say... You say, say wally instead of wallaby? No. In fact, a lot of animals <laughs> don't get their names Rags shortened at all. Rags is destroying his whole culture right now. <laughs> you, say, you, say, you say Barbie instead of barbecue. As we all know. Uh, man, I feel like I don't often see people say Barbie instead of barbecue, actually. Oh, well, they definitely it'd, do. It'd be like chuck a snag on the Barbie, right? And I'd be like, yeah. Ooh, what's common. a snag? These are useless. Oh, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that that was a, yeah. uh, I didn't know that was a thing. A snag. Yeah. A sausage well, we don't, snag. We don't okay. put prawns on them. We don't call them shrimp. Um, it's usually going to be, yeah, sausage or snag. In America, we don't shorten as many words, but we often uh, we 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 change the vowel sounds to make them easier to say with less effort, like the minimal amount of effort possible. Like for instance, I'm from the state of Maryland, not Maryland. You know, everything is just like Mar everything I thought it was tall. Maryland, or is it actually meant to be said Maryland? I thought everybody said Maryland. Everyone says yeah, Maryland. But, yeah. Yeah, it's Maryland, but I mean... If you say Maryland, people will think of, like, <laughs> M-E-R-R-Y -E space L-A-N-D. Yeah, like they like won't think of the yeah. state. Yeah. Yeah, like Merry Men or the... That's just sort <laughs> of the, the, yeah. the typical way Americans sort of make all tall and, like, open vowels, short vowels, and stuff like that. Just because it requires less effort to say. Because it's well, like the name, is... Marilyn. No one says Mary Lynn. Yeah, you know yeah, something I'm thinking about is in terms of the expanding the vowels. I think the common thing that we have in Australia is just adding in letters that aren't part of the words, <laughs> which obviously that's been observed with the pronunciation of no. But some people say no, like they kind of do like an R on it as well for some reason. Mahler has some intrusive R's sometimes. I've heard it. What? You got some intrusive R's sometimes. I got all I've kinds of things them. going on. My accent doesn't exist. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And it's of a course, figment like of calling, my imagination. Pulling a knife and knife, you know, it's like you're what? adding a couple of vowels there that don't. Well, that's how, because yeah, someone's saying, oh, Australians like Crocodile Dundee, because it's like, that's a knife, like that kind of shit. I'm nice. not even very good at doing like a more exaggerated Australian accent, honestly. It's one now of my weaknesses. That's knife. That, I try again. Knife. Nah, you got a knife. That's what I said, knife. Knife. You gotta you gotta emphasize it more. Knife. Barbie. Yeah, Barbie. Yeah, <laughs> put it on Roo. Barbie. I've seen a Roo over the Barbie. There. You're Molly, you gotta Roo. So Roo. Crossing the road. <laughs> Luke. Oh, Hit him with my car. Luke. <laughs> I... <laughs> with my Subaru. <laughs> I I think you'll find rags. Not many people drive Subarus in Australia. Yeah, because they'd have to say it like that every time. Yeah, too embarrassing. Yeah, hey, Subaru. No, not many people drive Subarus. It's mainly like Toyotas. Toyotas. Um, uh, there's still plenty of Holdens <laughs> around, I guess. I think it's like uh, Toyotas, like so quickly. It's like Toyotas. It's like it's like. Oh, yeah. no, no, what a feeling, Toyota. Toyotas. No, it'd be like Toyota. That's yeah. There you go. Toyota. Oh yeah. 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 Well, because yeah. yeah. <laughs> Baby, yeah. stop saying yeah. Uh, Nobody fucking says yeah. yeah. It's like you drive on the left <laughs> side of the road or the right side of the road. Damn. Oof. Left or right? You Which mean everyone one? doesn't drive a Ute? Uh, it's lots of, lots of four-wheel drives now. Lots of people know they live in the city. It's really stupid. They use a lot yeah. of petrol. They take up a lot of space. Boida. Parallel parking? <laughs> Side of the road? Uh, you, you sound a bit more like a New Zealander there. Me yeah. green cube. Green Gotta cube. Gotta go to Bendigo to get me green cube. 
I like how I could do like Michael Cusack's impersonation of Rick Australian accent better than just the standard one. Gotta go to Bendigo, Morty. Oh, Rick Bendigo, isn't that like <laughs> ten hours away? Hey, Morty, check it out. I did some science to me portal gun. Now it's also a real gun. No, I do love I you, real but gun, Morty. sometimes it feels like you're an action figure, and I can just press a button. <laughs> Yeah, just I runs know. a bunch of catchphrases. So it's like, yeah, I, I do. I got, yeah. Why are you pointing at my head, Rick? Morty. Are we gonna get? Are we gonna get a? So are we gonna get a Rick and Morty you. catchphrase or a Simpsons you catchphrase? And you, never know. you really get on my nerves, Morty. <laughs> Tickle me, Fringy. Oh, that'd be cute. We need that. That next well, round of plushies need to have little little boxes <laughs> in a voice box. <laughs> yeah, but is that? Would you be able to put? It would, in, like, dude, it'd be great if you other... squeeze the frigo. He just goes no, no, <laughs> no. It's no. a variety of different configurations. Of they the need word, to do no. it. Why haven't they? That sounds like an obvious thing um, to do. That's you know what. That's, I I know should, business better than them now. I you know a, what? Maybe I'm they're working business. on it. I don't know. Hopefully. Anyway. Anyway, I hope you, you got your money's worth there, buddy. That was like 20 minutes of memes. Again, rags. 40 chess. 5D chess. I don't like it when you diminish. Look at the big brain <laughs> on rags. Six choices here. 70 chess at this point. A shilling for the quantum meter. Why, thank you. Uh, movie recommendation. Harry Potter and the Deadly Weapon. Harry <laughs> Potter and the Deadly Weapon? <laughs> Which one? Well, uh, Harry Potter like, learns gun safety. Yeah, it's just like the audience have grown up with him. I think there's one called Harry Potter and Taxes. And it's like, it's very educational. <laughs> it's not very entertaining. <laughs> I can't even imagine how just like taxes is done in the wizarding world with all the spells and shit. I feel like there's just a way to spell your way out of anything. There's a spell for making income just disappear or... <laughs> It just, just seems what? like a crazy upside down world where everything oh, happens all the time. Is there a spell in the Harry Potter world that allows you to make money? Because if so, imagine trying to do fiscal policy in that world where other people. Are I'm sure their own money. many of the spells allow Dude, you to make. Imagine that, like, like, oh, you mean like the... conjure money, like to create it? Yeah, like actually conjure money, and it's not even counterfeit because it's magic. So it's like the real deal. Like it'd be like if someone had an actual um... machine that printed like legitimate cash, like U.S. dollars. Like, could you imagine if, if, like, fiscal policy in a world like that, uh, where just yeah, any random time. dude could just insert, like, a gajillion dollars into the economy? They got the, uh, the three curses they go over about how they, you know, you can't torture someone, you can't control someone, and you can't kill someone. You also can't do generatio dollarino, and it's just, like, a dollar in the air, and she's, like, destroys it straight away, and she's like, I wish to demonstrate it just to see the awesome power, but this is also forbidden. Don't generate money for yourself, okay? We're trusting you guys. <laughs> like, she's just gonna uh, go out of control. <laughs> she's no like the other teachers are like, do you really think it was wise to not only teach them about it but to show them how to do it? And she's like, I trust them. Yeah, it's like, so like oh, exactly okay. to introduce <laughs> it to them. <laughs> I just, I just feel like we, they might, they might just, you know, they might just use it. I'm just like, nah, I'll be fine. Um. Lord Longbong of Mewshington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fab? Peter Jackson's Long Kong. When is less going on? It'd be a movie fab for the ages. P.S. Hello, Ragsy's scritches for the good boy. Oh dear, he's not here. Quick metal, say thank you or something. Uh, thanks. There you go. Same, same, same sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel the, like... I thought like you were tailing on a burp, so I was surprised. Kong Long could fab happen at some point point. Hong Kong, long, long, fun, fun. That's what I'd say. One that strikes my memory, and I think I've talked about this before, is that I remember seeing it in the cinema and being like, holy fuck, this, this movie's intense and crazy when they get to Skull Island and they all nearly die straight away. You remember that? Like, mm -hmm. they're yeah. about to be sacrificed. Don't, don't some of them actually get killed by like the more tribally people? And like, I think it's, they're about to kill like one of the main characters and then they get stopped by Kong going, Rrr. something like Rrr. that. Gonna have to see it again. The microverse makes much more sense in the comics when they have perfectly good source material and they do nothing but look at the pictures. Uh, Gary told me, or at least he's mentioned on streams that I've been on, uh, that they don't have the rights to the microverse. That's the theory. That's why they call everything the quantum realm. Oh, the microverse is like okay. a thing in the comics, I guess. Oh, hmm. I do not know. I know Cannot say. Do not know. 
The MCU writers really, really need to learn what infinity means. They treat it exactly the same way most people treat literally. I don't think they care. They just, they struggle to care. They're just looking at them dollars, you know. But one day, those dollars will dry up. Suddenly, they'll be like, wait, writing matters? No! <laughs> Horrifying. Dad, you're a loser for staying with me instead of saving the world. Also, Cassie. No, Dad, don't leave me again. I guess she wants him to be alive, too. She's so demanding. It's ridiculous. Ugh. Pretty selfish, not gonna lie. Yeah, I agree with that. Keep up the amazing content, gents. I'm excited about the new Flash movie because Michael Keaton and the sexiest Batmobile ever is in it. Cheers. Oh. Yeah, I mean... Uh, keep your hopes at a strong four, I'd say. <laughs> and you should be all right. You'll probably get some stuff you like. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> like it's, uh... How much does it matter to you that the director is the guy who directed it and also the second one? I mean, you know. I liked them. I th well, I liked the first one. Right, I was, that's what I was wondering. Well, just that's that's one of them, like, who knows what we're in for? Mm. Yeah, thank you. Um, retcon scene in Thor where he explains the realms and Midgard, but then goes on to describe the Void and the Subatomica and the giant person who's underneath that. There's just so much stuff in every direction in the MCU at this point. Yeah. Impossible how fucking fat the universe is, or dense, I should say. Stuff happening everywhere. Your, your avatars are cute. No homo doc. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, they're neat. They're neat Maybe too. a little homo doc. They are neat. We'll put a little bit of the homo doc in it. Who is y'all's favorite villain of all time? Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Damn, that's Jeez. tough. <sighs> that's a really tough question. I feel like I need to narrow it down. I can't answer that right now. I need to think about that a lot. <laughs> uh, I think death would be a pretty strong answer, actually, because it kind of covers many interpretations, right? It almost feels unfair <laughs> to use that one. <clears throat> a little bit. Mm. Um, Hannibal Lecter in chat. It's a good suggestion. Uh, Vader. Yeah. Good one, yeah. Vader be popping up. Galactus. Vader, if you exclude the prequels, yeah. What if what if what if someone told you that enhances Vader? Uh, I'd say that they're wrong. You'd say they need to go home, wouldn't you? Go home. <laughs> We're drunk. <laughs> go Don't drunk, drive home. home. Don't drink all. Modok is a good it. suggestion. McDonald's wants you to be all you can be. Disney, yeah, a pretty good villain. <laughs> Jack Horna. <laughs> <laughs> Mootle, hey. <laughs> Joel. Joel. <laughs> he, he is responsible for all of the deaths. He's responsible for this stream. But I'm already home and drunk. <laughs> well, then you've won. Well, then you are lost. Um. Well, you know what? A uh, lot of Hans Gruber, I'm saying. I feel right. like there's so many that aren't going to be mentioned just because this is a tough thing to just ask. It's just such a broad question, yeah. but yeah. There's a lot of great villains. I'm surprised I haven't seen many Jokers showing up, though. They will now. Oh, you said that. <laughs> now that's been put forth, yeah. Kathleen Kennedy, okay, yeah. <laughs> Tita. <laughs> Frodo. Uh, uh, oh, look, Joker. Joker. Grandpa Joe from Willy Wonka. <laughs> Silco has been mentioned. Silco is cool. Jonker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Angel when he's evil. Don't know what you mean. Don't know what you're referring Angelus, to. Angelus. What I mean. are you talking about? You mustn't be mentioning anything from anything. I don't know what you mean. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he's just like, what? No, you don't need to be sorry. I just have no idea what you're talking about. Now apologize. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Bambi's One day mom, I would be like, oh, villain. I heard that once on EFAB two years ago. Now I know what it means. <laughs> yeah. I'd be Shrek like, God damn it. TLG. <laughs> I wish Cap didn't spoil it for me two years ago. Yeah, that's why Shrek? I killed him in the alley back in the streets. I Whoa. mean, what? 
in the streets. The Kardashians. <laughs> Well, at this point, you got loads of great suggestions from chat that I, th I think we could never even compare to. With Fred Brimley. <laughs> Wasn't a villain. Great man. He was a champion uh, of humanity. And on that note, we'll probably uh, wrap there and catch ah, the word. rest of these on a catch-up. Uh, release them to the world at some point. But oh, before right. we go, uh, Capital Opinions... O-O Opinions, sorry, I forgot shouldn't want to mess up the name because you know it's the you're, you're one of our most prestigious guests i would not want you oh to my feel uh, you know insulted awkward. yeah i bet you feel fucking awkward now. especially with this intro you better you better have something amazing to sell to people about what you're up here because I, I just i, I do just you the i do have something ever. to share all right what do you share and share it so yesterday I had a stream on the channel with some of the people in the chat right now in chat talking <laughs> Sorry, not in the chat. In the call. I'm tired, okay? <laughs> they were probably there too, some of them. Yeah, some of them were there. We, we talked about Elvis, Tar, and the Banshees of Inishirin in the first of what will be several streams talking about all 10 of the Best Picture nominations from this year. Yay. It is on the channel. You can go watch it. Fringy, Mahler, Rags, and John Graham, also known as John uh, C.J.G. So, <laughs> we're all there and we talked about the movies there were some very interesting conversations you should go watch that right now go, go do it now go go run that's, that's, run. that's what that's what i have for you and also tune in on wednesday when metal and maybe another guest who was yet to confirm with me whether they'll be there that's and me. we'll be talking no you'll definitely be there <laughs> I, I said i said that's that's me Oh, okay. I thought you were... Never, never mind. We'll be talking about Top Gun Maverick and All Quiet on the Western Front, so go check it out. It's going to be fun. Be there. The boring she's of Iba Schleepen. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Go home. You're also drunk. <laughs> Drunk's okay. You're allowed. They made it legal, like, last year or whatever. So anyway, uh, Metal, what are you up to, you little fleem? Hey, I'm a big fleam. Thank you very much. I worked very hard with my fleamness. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't appreciate that. I'm, uh, I'm, I've been, I've been playing through Atomic Heart. I finished it yesterday. Uh, oh my goodness! In an eight and a half hour marathon stream that I didn't expect to do, but I needed to finish it because I'm doing a forge on it tomorrow. Whoa. Oh wow! With uh, so with Mark it took eight and a half hours to beat. No, that that was the fourth, uh, the fourth stream. Um, oh okay. But because I had uh, Mom Commander over today, and today the EFAPs, I didn't really have time to play more today. So I, I went nutty to mm. to finish it. So we're gonna have a little talksy about that tomorrow. It's gonna be interesting because I actually haven't talked to Mark about the game at all yet. Uh, Just so I have sort of a gauge. How long did it take you <laughs> to beat it? Uh, I did all the side stuff as well. It was about twenty hours. Okay, about that space then. Yeah, if you go straight for the story, I think you can. Probably knock it down to like 12-ish, 10, 12-ish. Okay. I guess depending on the difficulty. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just, just Forge is coming up and I'm working on other stuff that you'll see at some point. Wait. Well, right. um, Rags, Fringy, anything you guys wanted to mention before we settle down for the night with some hot chocolate and cheese? Peace. Um... Normally, I don't like things to get in the way of my hot chocolate and cheese as I sit in front of the fire, put my legs up, uh, and enjoy my hot chocolate and cheese as I you sort of, as you stir in the cheese to get it just, you know, how you like it. It's like coffee. Some people mm -hmm. like a lot. Some people don't like a lot. Um, some people like it dangerously cheesy. Um... But I think I've decided what I'm going to do next in terms of main channel stuff. And I think a lot of the people particularly um, in here will uh, like it. So um, that's all I'll say for now, though. But I think I've settled on what I'm going to have my next project be. Going to talk about devs. I knew it. I think it's going to be on cheese, guys. I don't want to talk about devs. Bring it about your cheese. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> your cheese. I'm just in the dungeon. I'm just walking. <laughs> That's all I got. Do you have like kangaroo cheese or wallaby cheese? No. Because over here we have like goat cheese and of course, you know, the typical, you know, 
account. Yeah, we got those stuff. two, but yeah, that's nothing, it. Nothing, nothing exotic. Well, I mean, cheese. Do, 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 do America? Do people have like deer cheese or something? I don't think so. Or like grizzly bear cheese. <laughs> I don't think. Well, grizzly yeah. bears would be tough because I don't know how you could, you know, have that happen. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think you could well, really. To be fair, there's no reason bears. you can't farm grizzly bears. Uh, human human beings will find grizzly. a way, Rags. We will find a way. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you got the Last of Us uh, new episode Sunday comes out. I mean, the episode of us covering it probably be the following Wednesday. Rather than the one coming right after it. And then uh, I think I'm going to try and put out the the catch-ups uh, uh, one by one on Fridays or Thursdays. I'm not actually sure. I'll, I'll figure it out it's, and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, next week we're going to cover Atomic Heart. And uh, we got Resident Evil 4 Remake is coming. It's, he's, he's on his way. But in the meantime, we'll have Mando starting up. And, um, well, some other bits and bobs. Like... You know, you've been hearing about it. You know, the Flash movie is on its way. The 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 um the Guardians movie will be on its way. There's there's other video games that are going to potentially be covered. Who knows? It's a wild time to be interested in media. They've released films and games now, and even TV shows on top of that. It's insane. Whoa, what? Yeah, honestly, I just don't know how they're doing it. It's uh, it's uh, so intense. In any case, thank you all for hanging out with us for the kind messages and donations and we shall see you for the next episode of whatever it may be in the efap universe until then toodles yeah goodbye uh, everybody. Goodbye. See you later goodbye <laughs> oh that's welsh again Ooh, welsh <laughs>